Hello. <laughs> Fuck. My music isn't playing. There. Oh, yeah. Dude, I have been jamming to some Ash Nico. Holy fuck. <laughs> How's it going? Holy shit. Let me catch up on the chatterino here. I gotta refinagle my UI here. I put my stream to explicit mode, uh, to explicit mode, so now I can say fuck really loud. Um. I don't, I don't know. We, we swear enough on this stream that I was fine putting it too explicit. <laughs> All right, let me check up. Skerva, what up? Showered in fresh shirts. Where is the candle? Oh, fuck. Um, I have a candle nearby right now. I kind of have walled myself in a, in a corner here. So we'll, uh, we'll maybe g grab one when it gets darker. I'm getting warm. Woo! Getting hot! Maybe I don't need my fuzzy slippers on. Maybe maybe that's uh, the problem. Um, hey, Desu, how's it going today? Ping! A PC load letter from Sirius Sergio. Oh, yeah, we'll be loading some letters today. Metaconstruct, thank you so much for 12 months, one whole year. Oh, man. Uh, guys, have one of you tried to emulate a kernel module in an emulator similar to what Gamozo developed on stream? Uh, I don't know. You're asking chat. Chat is the real responsible uh, monolith here. <laughs> is this meme stream? Oh yeah, only memes. This is uh, this is only memes here. Um, cute stream, hell yeah. Oh man, classic H top aesthetic. Oh yeah, let me get the let me get the. Here we go. There we go. All right, <laughs> get that H top aesthetic. <laughs> Uh, we should make an age top CPU usage s starting s ah, stream starting soon. Yeah, I need to do some like channel points things. So, uh, remind me when I catch up on chat. I got I got something I have to announce or something like that. Um, let's get rude at printer. What printer are we hacking? Uh, well, chat's gonna decide. Isn't that fun? Chat gets control. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when Gamozo is today's bug jam. <laughs> Not all bald people are the same, okay? <laughs> uh, oh, come on. Here, I was wanting to go to sleep. Yeah, no sleep for you. Um, I like the screen with... <laughs> I like the screen with a view of all the screens. Oh, yeah. Isn't that, isn't that a good a good thing? It, it's, it's recursive. Eventually, the pixels just run out. Historic Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, today's the Super Bowl. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Can't wait to tune into that one. It's sports. I, I hope they put the ball into the net. It's going to be good. Um, <laughs> uh, Zerotic was taken. Thank you so much for the four months of support. Hell, yeah. Still no music? Oh yeah, you can't hear the music. Although technically, technically, I think Twitch has made it a little bit easier to stream music, where you stream the music but you don't record it or put it to the VODs. I need to figure that out at some point in time. Hey Dev Angels, how's it going? <laughs> Who's this old man? <laughs> Is that R1 pre-stream? Oh no, we're rank three in the US right now. I don't know, the, the rank one and two spots are pretty, pretty, uh, you know, uh, they're, they're a couple sigma out, so it's going to be hard to catch them. I think I can, but it's going to be hard. Like, they're, they're just playing in much different raids, and healing, ultimately, you can't heal people who aren't taking damage, so sometimes the strategies and the way that certain groups play uh, makes it easier to, to get better healing, so... Whatever. Um, those headphones sound really nice. Great choice. Yeah, these are fantastic. If you want a nice, comfy pair of headphones that you can wear all day and are light and they're open ear, open ear's bad because other people can hear what you're hearing, um, but they're good if you don't listen to things super loud and you want to be able to actually hear what's going around, uh, around you, like if you want to hear if someone's knocking or something like that. So, all right. Serial Photo G, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. I just sent an employer a rejection letter. 
Dear employer, fuck you. <laughs> or sorry, dear prospective employer, fuck you. <laughs> no, I, I love uh, turning down offers, to be honest. I, I mean, I don't know if you're turning down an offer or like rejecting them for some other thing. Um, but I, I hope it was uh, I hope it was good and healthy for you. Um, let's see. Do you agree that Windows 10 sucks? I mean, I I personally really like the NT kernel. I think it's a fantastic kernel, and I think it's beautiful, and I think it's really well written, and some of the best code in the world. I don't know if I like the Windows user land. Um, <laughs> it can it can be spotty. Um, are you not interested in the big sports event? I don't give two shits. To be honest, socially, I love watching football. Like, uh, and not football, but football, American football. Uh, I think it's really fun to just, it's an excuse to get drunk. R let's be honest, like all holidays and all social events, it's an excuse to get drunk or do whatever you like to do when you're social, if that's, you know, just get together with friends and hang out and make food and eat a bunch of dessert and whatever the fuck you do, or who cares? Um, it's an excuse to hang out, and, and after a year of COVID, I literally would do anything for an excuse to fucking hang out. I don't care if it's something I don't like doing, I would do it. Um, hell yeah. Um, we'll be, will we be going off a firmware so we at home can play along? So, ask that when I catch up on chat again. Um, Jackhead Shell, oh yeah, we need to have like a Twitch, Twitch plays command injection. <laughs> Dance W Park, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime, hell yeah. Strawberry Hacker, thank you so much for the five months of support. Pogarino. OBS has an option for Twitch VOD audio now. I'm curious if that is an OBS thing or a Twitch thing, because I don't see anything like that, but I'm also on Linux, which means I might get features like that a bit later. Um, but I will maybe figure that out. That would be absolute pog, because internally, I record my microphone my desktop audio, and my voice chat. So I kind of have a mixer here and I have a couple audio sources. I actually have like in-game audio, desktop everything else, uh, music, and like voice chat, uh, as well as my microphone. And then, uh, yeah, like all of these things, I basically have stored as different audio streams in the recorded file. So in post, I can add and remove something. So things that you have never heard on stream, like my desktop audio, are still being recorded if I do want to, for some reason, add them back in in post uh, in a video or a VOD or something like that. Um, so uh, I do that locally, but I haven't seen an option for sending that upstream. I, I don't know. I haven't really looked around too much. So we need more screen clickbait. Oh, hell yeah. Um, hi, there was... Uh, hi there, already exposed your task for today? Yeah, we're gonna be hacking a printer, and we'll go into that a little bit more as I catch up on chat that keeps, that keeps posting messages so I never catch up. Um, thank you so much, Zerotic was taken for the 500 biddies. Just throw 500 biddies. Anyone get that reference? I've been binge watching that, that streamer as well. <laughs> um, sometimes the, the, uh, Stratus to scream get damaged on ID in my stats. Fuck me, fuck you. Hey, Moose Mounted Mage, how are you doing today? Hope hope your day is wonderful. Glad to glad to see you yesterday and, and pwn some noobs, you know? That was pretty good. Um, do you plan new fuzzing streams? Uh, maybe similar to 10 years Android end day. Firmware old kernel would be neat. That's kind of what we're doing today. Well, not necessarily fuzzing, but but hacking. Um, honestly, I've been I've been thinking a little bit about it. Uh, I think I might try to do more, uh, like, short-term hacking things on stream than long-term dev projects. I would really like to do Fuzz OS on stream, but there are some days where I just 
don't feel like streaming, but I also still need Fuzz OS, and I'm in this really hard predicament where I want to develop it to add features that I need, but I want to do it when I stream, and sometimes the time when I need the features does not line up with when I can stream or when I feel like streaming. Um, so I might try to do more just random things where the entire project is disjoint from anything that I would potentially bottleneck on in real life. Um, that's kind of a plan. I think also they just engage more people. They're just more fun. Like this printer hacking shit is, oh God, it might not be fun. Uh, it should be fun. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's going to be a fucking blast. Taru, oh, thank you so much for the three months of support. And Zerotic was taken. Thank you so much for gifting a tier one Subarino. Um, hell yeah. Good cheers. Dropped you a bunch of interesting links on Discord. Check out the last monster, 6502. I feel like I've heard of that. I feel like I've heard of that. Um... I will have to check that. Oh, yes, I have seen this. It's where they meet. Yeah, um, unless this is a completely new or recent thing, this is like a 6502 that's implemented with discrete logic on a board, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, they like literally just put all the transistors on a fucking PCB. Yeah, this thing is so cool. It's just a bunch of MOSFETs on a board. If people haven't seen, here is the Link Arena. Um, let's see. Uh, I, from Microsoft, think the kernel is great. Please, Papa Satya, send me more money. <laughs> um, how did you learn to do programming? I just kind of did random projects that I thought were fun. Uh, obviously, I had a couple good mentors growing up, um, but... I just always found it interesting. I actually started off with 3D modeling first, which kind of just got me on the computer a lot. And then from there, uh, learning just like basic was a pretty natural progression. How does one see the NT kernel with a, with a big enough microscope? Uh, are there any plans uh, when, you can, when you will continue Fuzz OS? I, I don't know. I kind of hit on that a second ago. Um, I'm not 100% sure. Um, wasn't an offer. They gave me a code test. Their framework was C++ in Java style. Uh, everything was virtual object orientation uh, with at least four files of coupling. Mmm. Mmm. My favorite. Why are you using Gentoo? Because it builds everything from source, which means I have a little bit more control over the system, which I really like. From OBS Studio 21.6. Uh, I don't know what version of OBS I have, to be honest. OBS version. I have 26.1. Yeah, 26.1. Okay, maybe it's, maybe it's been in there a while. Shower stream when? Uh, Moose Mounted Mage, you're going to have to subscribe to my OnlyFans for that content. Um, OBS settings, output, Twitch, VOD track. Oh, yeah, I do see that. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, that actually will be really easy for me to set up. So I will look into doing that. I don't know what the restrictions are for streaming. I don't know if I have to use like the Twitch uh, music program thing. I think that is Windows only. But yeah, I should be able to split that up. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's something I can do. How did you learn how to hack? I just was really interested in in breaking things. I learned a lot of like low-level programming, assembly in C pretty early. Um, and it was a pretty natural progression from there. But I never I never learned how to hack. I learned how computers work, and then I kind of derived how to hack from that, uh, which is not normal. I would say it's pretty common for a lot of the very skilled hackers. Um, but for like the new wave of hackers kind of getting into things, there's just so many resources on how to do it now that you can kind of learn in a more traditional sense. Uh, although I don't necessarily encourage that because hacking is, in my opinion, uh, maybe not web hacking. I can't really speak to that too much. Uh, but at least for low level hacking, uh, like binary security stuff that I do, Hacking is literally just about adopting, and adopting is typically about understanding how things fundamentally work such that you don't have to read a guide or read a tutorial on something how something works. You just can infer how something works by understanding how the underlying thing works, right? If, like, we've looked at other architectures on stream that I have never written assembly for, but I can still read the assembly because I just know how 
processors are designed and what features they have. Obviously, there are certain aspects that I would have to look up in a reference, uh, but I can, for the most part, understand what's going on, even when I come across weird instructions, because I know that some architectures have these weird instructions, like different fences or uh, like relaxed orderings that lead to weird instructions or suffixes, and I can typically infer what those things are. So I would say hacking, it's really important about kind of figuring that out. Um, I might have given you the bad language. I don't know where I got my potty mouth from, but it, I've had it since I was in elementary school. And my parents did not really swear. Uh, my dad would, like, get mad and swear at, like, football games. But, like, there was not that much swearing. I didn't really swear on my parents until I moved out. Um, <laughs> way more fun than the Super Bowl. I, like, everyone has their, everyone has their way. Onlycode.com. <laughs> is that a real thing? Let me see. Oh, no, it's not a thing. Name not resolved? Does that mean it's up for grabs or just no one is hosting anything on it? Started learning Rust. I'm using the Rust book in rustlang.org. Is it a good start? It's a fantastic start. That's actually the only reference I've ever read for the Rust language. I've never read anything else on how to write Rust. Um... Plenty of non-copyrighted music, too, if you want some background tunes. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. Uh, the tunes are not copyrighted, which means streamers and YouTubers and people use them as part of their videos or streams. And then those videos get copywritten because they're content that's being produced. And then the songs end up getting picked up as copywritten, even though the songs are not. Um, it's just such a fuzzy system that it's, I don't care if it's non-copyright or not. I'm okay with streaming music because there's a lot more, like, wishy-washy gray area there. Uh, but in terms of things getting recorded, I'm just still way too skeptical. Um, domain name that's not up for grabs. Aw, registered by Alibaba. Aren't printers crap anyways? Hi, yeah, fair, fairies. Um... How to post a link? Oh yeah, I actually turned off link posting. Only only mods can post links. Uh, that's just kind of a uh, heightened security. Like we we've had people posting hack links before in the past, and um, while we have a pretty smart audience here, uh, there's still a non-zero risk, right? So I just you know it reduces clutter, and I actually lock down a couple things on Twitch. There are things that you might notice, like the mature viewing stuff that I I kind of went through and I selected things that I'm like. It, do most chatters need this? If the answer is no, I turned a lot of things off. So, um, hell yeah. I'm not super picky about links, um, but it's just not necessary for most comms, in my opinion. Um... <laughs> Have you worked on uh, Rust-C before or plan to do so in the future? Not really. Um, I just suck at working with groups. I, I suck at working on group projects, and I suck at working on team things, and I just, at this point, kind of avoid it because it's just not... It's not something that I often enjoy, unfortunately. Like, I just... I like the ability to have mood swings and just fucking disappear from society for a month like I kind of did in, like, the last month. Um, and sometimes it's really hard to work on teams when you want to just be able to disappear like that. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, still remember this lame malware sent by some skitty several months ago. Yeah, that was actually a great moment. <laughs> that was so fucking fun. All right, chat. I think I am all caught up on chat. Sorry if I missed any uh, donations or subs or anything. Actually, let me make sure I can see donations because I don't have that open. It's on my stream labs. Um, let me do this. Log in with Twitch. Um, I always miss donations, and I feel bad, but, uh, you know, eh. Chad, Chad has learned to deal with the uh, neglect. It looks like I have caught everything. Although some of the... Weird. Okay. Yeah. Huh. All right. Anyways, uh, we should be good there. I was technically a ghost for six or seven months doing mostly... Doing nothing mostly. Yeah. Yeah. 
I know that feel. Sometimes, sometimes it just feels good. Ah. All right. Announcement time. Oh, fuck. I mean, I was going to try and keep this thing a secret, but I can't, I can't, I can't keep secrets when chat is just twisting my arm. But about like 20 minutes before stream, I YOLO bought a camera. So we're hopefully going to get a better camera quality going on the stream, uh, which is going to be really fun. So uh, not only is it just going to be a nicer camera, uh, so this camera is more for taking photos, uh, which means the HDMI output is more for like hooking it up to a TV so you can like look at photos with like a group of people but not actually get any quality. So the Basically, the, the software side of this camera is pretty ass, like the back end to the HDMI. It's just, like, I think it, yeah, I think it only can do 1080p 30fps. Uh, the, the encoding is dog shit. The, like, bit rate that I can get out of that HDMI is really bad. Um, so unfortunately, the camera quality that you see, obviously on stream, it's a worse quality than what I see. But, like, even recorded locally with lossless storage... The quality is so much worse than what the camera actually is capable of doing. Unfortunately, it's just, this is not meant to stream live HDMI feeds. So I bought a, um, I bought an A7S Mark III, uh, which is pretty much the best non-ridiculous camera that you can possibly get for video. <laughs> like, obviously people are gonna be like, no, no, that's not true, this is blah, blah, blah. It, it has unbelievable video quality and low light quality. And I paired it with a very low light friendly lens. I got a, I got a fixed, uh, whatever the, f I got a fixed lens, uh, f 1.4. So it should have remarkably good, uh, like low light, uh, quality, which means that at night when we do night streams, which is pretty much only, um, I can probably turn off the lights in here and we can get like a pretty good video quality with kind of a night, you know, screen glow aesthetic, which I can't do with this camera because things just get too washed out. Um, I also will be able to use an autofocus on that camera where this autofocus uh, pulsates way too much that I have it off and I'm, you're on a fixed focus right now, which kind of sucks if I want to do more dynamic things uh, with the camera. So, um... Yeah, basically that the camera that I'm getting can do 4K 120 FPS. Uh, obviously, to my computer, it's only going to be 1080p 60. Uh, but it is first of all a mirrorless camera, which is kind of a negative for photos, but it is a positive in my opinion for uh, video because it means the photo and the video and the processing and the HDMI are all coming from the same place, right? It, like. I know that's kind of weird, but sometimes these the mirrored cameras have like a a lower quality when you are you know using this live view mode, right? When I'm not actually um, I don't know, it's it's fucky, but it's gonna be a, a big Im improvement. F 1.4, you'll be able to see Martians from here if you aim it right. I mean, uh, I don't know if you're memeing, but it doesn't deal with the zoom. <laughs> it's just the it's just the aperture. Basically, f1.4 means that the aperture opens more. So you'll you'll basically find that the um, you'll find that on cameras, the fixed uh, lenses, lenses where you can't zoom, you can't change the the zoom like I can on this one, which you can barely see that I'm doing it. But basically, the extra mechanicals that you need typically make more bulky area around the camera, which means the aperture cannot open as wide, right? Or you can't have as big of an aperture. Um, and basically, the bigger the aperture, the more light gets let in. It also means the blurrier the image is, because if you think about it, if you have a pinhole aperture, like this tiny, tiny, just a speck, the only light that can really come in is light that is coming in almost directly at the camera. So if you think as photons, as just random rays, it basically has to come head on to go through uh, that aperture, which means at a smaller aperture, 
you get a better, like, depth of field because you are getting a more, like, consistent image, if that makes sense. It's kind of weird, but basically with a larger aperture, you can get more fucking photons hitting the sensor, which means you can get better lower right light uh, recording. It's a really, like, I'm not a camera person, but that's uh, basically what it is. So the, the new lens that I have will not be able to zoom, which means that I will just have to physically move the camera if I want to get closer or further away. Uh, but it means that the camera has less moving internals uh, and just less internals in general, which means you typically end up with a little bit crisper and better of an image, right? It's basically, you know... A master of one, jack of none, <laughs> sort of thing. So I'm super excited about that. But. All right. Have a good stream. I expect to see a VOD. It's a little late here. Work early tomorrow. We got to catch up sometime. I did a stream with 5K concurrent viewers. Holy shit. That is amazing. Hell yeah. I hope that felt fantastic, and I hope you do more of those in the future. So yeah, have some good sleep. Thank you for the 100 biddies, and I will talk to you soon. Um, feels like the difference in crispiness is uh, pretty low nowadays. Yeah, really the main reason I want it is just that low light condition. The uh, A7S Mark III just has really good low light in general. Like It is a great low light sensor. Uh, which means I really wanted to emphasize one of the biggest qualities of this camera by getting a lens that also had really good low light conditions. Obviously, I'll just get more lenses as I need them, uh, but at least for streaming, where I'm not really zooming or moving the camera at all, um, I think it's uh, better to get a fixed lens in this case. Um, you're basically talking about the lens, lens irregularities adding up to a decreased image quality. Yeah, exactly. It's it doesn't matter too much. But yeah, the, the biggest quality improvement is not actually going to be anything related to sensor or lens or the camera. It's literally just the HDMI output is designed to output to HDMI, right? It is designed for that camera that you output HDMI to an external capture device. And that's how you do like your serious movie filming. Like when you're filming a shot for a movie, you output the video over HDMI and record it on an external device. And that means that, unlike this camera where HDMI is kind of an afterthought, so you can like view things on a bigger screen when you're like doing preliminary like deletion and, and checking of images, this HDMI is literally like, it is better than the camera. The HDMI actually outputs a better quality than what the camera can internally uh, record, because over HDMI, it can do raw streaming, where it basically streams the raw sensor data. Um, so I'm not actually going to be able to record that because uh, I'm not getting a, an external recorder. I will maybe eventually. Um, and the capture card in my computer and my stream are only 1080p, so I'll turn it down to 1080p 60 anyways. Uh, but yeah. Serious so movies use HDMI? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um... Yeah, like the A7S uh, Mark III will commonly be used as like a B-roll camera on real movies and as an A-roll camera on like not the biggest fucking movies, but big movies, right? <laughs> like, um, and like serious, serious like YouTube videos. It, it is a really, really good um, camera. It, it is basically the, the best camera that you can get without going to like red, black, magic, uh, level uh, quality. So, um, all right. Let's see here. If you want to burn money, yeah, I would say the the camera that I got, the A7S Mark III, is probably um, it's probably about as close as you can get to, um extremely good quality without getting that like it is already on the exponential curve right like you can get a really good 4k 60 like on a youtube video indistinguishable quality from a like five thousand dollar camera you can get that for like one or two thousand dollars so i have gone a little bit above and beyond to a camera that is 
a little bit better than uh, probably what is really discernible in a camera, but there are just some nice features, um, mainly like the low light conditions that are really nice. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm already in the, uh, I'm already in the like exponential curve, so. What else? But yeah, that's the new, the new news. Uh, no, no, hey, I'm gonna, also gonna go sleep. Yeah, get some good sleeps. Thank you for stopping by. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the A7S III can record uh, 750 megabit uh, bit rate locally. So it can, it can do something called intra-frame uh, like video. And basically intra-frame video, unlike most video formats that use some of the fact that most frames are uh, pretty comparable, and thus do you have differential compression between the frames, right? Like right now, this background right here, when it's getting encoded to you, this is probably not actually being re-encoded except for keyframes. Uh, but intra-frame basically means that each frame is compressed independently. Uh, and it basically means that every frame is a keyframe. And I... You'll find that when I have an option to get something that has precision and something that doesn't have precision, I will always pay into the exponential curve to get precision because it's just fun. It's fascinating to me. So yeah. Uh, photography is 90% lighting though. Uh, you should think about that a bit. That's the one reason why I wanted the, this low light camera because it will allow me to have a more natural setup where I will be able to record things a little bit more how they appear in reality without setting up very heavy fake studio lighting um, because I like, I like that organic natural feel. Of course, I know how to make good video. I know how to set up lighting and Ultimately, for streaming, I prefer the more realistic uh, thing. I also don't like having lights fucking blasting in my eyes um, to get a good video. Yeah, the A7S Mark III is like 3,500 bucks. And then the lens is like 15. It was like five grand for the lens and the camera. Um, so... Which is pretty expensive. Like it, it is. It is a serious camera, um, but I also appreciate things like that. So, yeah. The the next tier for like a bigger improvement are like eight K cameras and shit, where you're pushing the like twenty K plus uh, to like fifty K boundary. So, is the new camera just for Twitch? Nah, it's not. Um. What was your first camera? Well, this is a, a D5300, which is like my first real DSLR style camera. Uh, I mean, I had like a handheld like pocket camera in, I don't know, middle school or high school or something. Kind of before you had cameras on phones where you just needed like a, a little pocket camera. It's just like a $100, $200 Sony camera or something. Um, yeah, red camera for streaming. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not a camera person. I, I want to make that very clear. I'm not a camera person. This camera is way out of my league of skill, although I haven't been too intimidated by the skill required to use cameras. I'm, I'm not saying photography is easy because that requires having a good eye for situations and things that deserve photos and picking the right lenses. But in terms of mechanically, like getting a good image out of a camera, uh, like basically playing with all the mechanicals, like regardless of the the beautifulness of what you're doing or the color correction or things like that, like the post-processing to make good images and videos, just the raw, get it, capturing how it looks in real life better, I've really never had a problem with that. Um, but yeah. All right, chat. Um, I think it is time, I think it is time to uh, clean up my desk. Haha, <laughs> chat, you ready? You ready to clean, oh fuck. I might have to, uh... I don't know what I'm gonna do about my microphone here. 
I can either go get a lapel mic, or I can turn up the gain for this, and we might have a little bit shittier mic quality. Um, because I need to do work over there, which you can't... over there. Um, which is like three feet over there, but, uh, I'm not gonna be able to stick the mic in my face. So, um, yeah. I didn't even think about that. Well, um, yeah, sucks to suck, chat. Sorry. All right, chat. So you have to make a decision now. Um, so the decision that chat has to make right now, I got to make sure I don't have anything too revealing on my other desk, and I do not. So chat, 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 more specifically mods. Uh, I think I do have mods here. Um, we're going to make a poll here. Um, do we want to hack the, this, a Canon MX, a Canon, a, a Canon, Pixma MX492. That is option number one. Option number one. Or do you want to hack? And the microphone's gonna be fucky, I'm sorry. We can also hack a uh uh, this is an, uh, looks like an Epson something home XP440. Oh, there, an expression. This is an expression home XP440. Is your other option? <laughs> the Epson looks shittier? I think these are all pretty much comparable price. Or, fuck, I almost tripped. <laughs> or, a, a brother, motherfucking code, JW, J485DW. So those are the, the three options that we can, that we can hack. Um, I've never actually written an exploit or hacked any of these devices, uh, but I have disassembled them uh, as I was showing a friend, like, basically how to, like, take apart uh, devices and stuff. Um, but I don't think that's really going to spoil anything here because the, the second we actually do stuff... Oh, yeah, I didn't... Yeah, uh, we're taking these apart to get the firmware. We're not gonna, um, we're not gonna actually download the firmware. Uh, we're gonna desolder the chips and read the firmware. Um, not because we necessarily have to, uh, but because we can. It's more interesting, it's more fun, uh, and fuck you. Um, yeah, so we're gonna actually be taking these apart and then desoldering the, we're gonna identify whatever is storing the firmware, we're gonna desolder them, and then we're gonna dump the firmware as it is on the flash. Uh, which means that we will actually be looking at the firmware for the device that we have. Not a specific version or some shit online. I'm not going to update these. I'm just going to fucking get the firmware that's literally on them. So even if, they're, even if they got backdoored when they got shipped to me, uh, we'll have the implant. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um... All right, uh, yeah, current poll. It looks like we do have a poll. Sweet, thank you. So yeah, everyone vote in the poll. There is some amount of time left. Looks like maybe two minutes or something. No JTAG? I actually have never done JTAG in my life. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we will not be doing a JTAG. Um, I don't have a JTAG reader. I mean, maybe we'll do JTAG if we buy a JTAG reader and continue the series, but we will not be doing that today. Um, but what will basically be on the menu today will be uh, desolder the, the chip, basically show how that's done, uh, read the firmware off the chip, show how that's done, 
and then uh, probably decrypt or do whatever we need to do to actually view the firmware, which will require some reverse engineering, which we'll do in Ghidra. Um, and then once we have the decrypted firmware, or probably more specifically, not decrypted, but decompressed, uh, the firmware is very likely decompressed on all of these devices. So we will decompress it um, such that we can like see strings and we can view code. Once we have done that, we're gonna uh, basically do what I consider finding an oracle, uh, which is typically connecting to some random network service on these devices and finding a unique string, whether it's like a version string or like, you know, brother printer service 4.0 is like a, a message that you get when you netcat into a different, uh, into a specific port. Um, and what we will do is look for that oracle in the code and we'll basically try to find, once we have dumped the firmware, we're gonna try to find a correlation between things that we do to these devices and the code itself. Basically, we're gonna try to find where the code is that is responsible for handling certain commands. Once we have done that, we'll maybe try and find an exploit. Um, if we cannot trivially find an exploit, then we'll probably take them apart again, implant them, basically by figuring out the compression and decompression, uh, and basically decompress it, implant it by maybe removing a length check or literally by injecting code that gives us arbitrary code execution, putting the chip back in and then using that implant to image the running device such that we can then fuzz it. And while that is cheating to get code execution, it's not cheating if you used it as a research tool. In the same way, I would do that to an iPhone. If I can take apart an iPhone and implant it physically using a, a tweezers and a, and a soldering iron, and that allows me to then get access to arbitrary code execution that lets me look better, like look deeper uh, for real bugs, that's a totally valid strategy. And that's the strategy that I use for most devices. Um, I will basically always try to get code execution on a device in one or two days. And basically I will look for an exploit for maybe eight hours. And if I can trivially get code execution in one of these devices, then I will just use an exploit. Uh, but if an exploit is going to take a couple days to find, then I will just implant it using literally everything that I have at my hands because I don't care. Um, it, is a, it is a totally uh, valid way of going about doing things. Do you expect an exploit in less than 12 hours? Honestly, hard to say. Um, from my experience, some printers just have very little attack surface. Um, they'll pretty much, they're always gonna have like printing attack surface, which is normally like PostScript or, or some complex file format. And unfortunately, those are usually relatively hard to find bugs in because they are massive. It's like finding a bug in Adobe Reader by just opening it up. Even though it's riddled with bugs, it doesn't mean that it's easy to find a bug because there is so much fucking code. Um, but sometimes these devices will have shitty services that just are custom services for like random network interactions. And sometimes those are really easy to find bugs in. We could also maybe try and find USB bugs in these where we can plug in a USB, uh, we can plug into the USB port on them and we can look for a USB exploitable bug, maybe a USB stack bug, which are typically a lot easier to find than network bugs because network things, I think we will find that all of these devices probably use a commercial off the shelf, probably closed source, um, printing engine, right? You know, one of these companies will go and they'll purchase a, an embedded web server that's designed for printers and they will use that. And while those often are shittily written, it also means that there is some level of standardization which often leads to these bugs getting fixed relatively quickly. Um, just because it's the servers that are used in these, like the software components of these, are pretty universal. And the more universal something is, the harder it is to find low-hanging fruit, because typically, if you find a bug in a brother printer and a Canon printer, and they both use the same web server, it doesn't matter which one you start looking at, you will find the same bugs, and thus, you'll get reports from either of the companies, if that makes sense. Poll result, Canon 52, brother 35, Epson 8. All right, we'll be doing the Canon, which I think is the uh, most expensive, the largest and most complex out of the bunch. 
So I'm all down for that. It's not cheating if you can later exploit devices that you uh, don't physically alter. Yes, absolutely. Um, physically altering devices is really important. I, I think it's something that is pretty underutilized uh, for a lot of hackers. So, all right. Let's fucking go. I guess we're going to do the cannon printer. Um, all right. Uh, I have to set up my desk and... Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn up the gain from my microphone, and I'm going to put the microphone kind of just in this area. Um, it's going to probably be worse quality, and if it's really bad, we can switch to a lapel mic, which I can switch over to pretty easily. I just have to go grab it wherever it is. Um, but I would like more freedom here, so. I think you need to refill your whiskey. Yes, I do. All right, so. Test, 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 test. How is that? So that, okay, that, uh, that was better than I expected. So. Um, I don't think I'm clipping anymore, although I am probably louder than I was before, actually. Although I'm going to be facing this way, so I can't actually look at my gain without talking in the microphone, but I think that's pretty good. Um, it's gonna be a lot more echoey, right? Is the gain too high? Like, am I clipping if I get too loud? Just let me know. It's remarkably good. Yeah, the, the, it's pretty far away. Like, so this is basically where I'll be sitting. So I actually can't look at the game, so you have to tell me right now. Um, this is basically pick going, picking up like echoes, um, but this will allow me to just like not look at my screen. So hopefully this works. Is that fine? It's fine, okay. Um, is it fuzzy or shitty quality? Because if it is, then I can go to a lapel mic, which will get pops when I move my shirt. So this is like better in some ways and worse in others, if that makes sense. Uh, the mic is in the way. That's fine. The camera's in a temporary spot. Uh, okay, so I'm going to pull up Twitch on my phone such that I can see Twitch on uh, chat and interact with you fucks. Um, where is Twitch? Twitch, Twitch, Twitch. So this will allow me to interact with the stream because I interact a lot. In fact, when I'm not at my computer, I'm probably going to interact more with chat uh, this is gonna be kind of funny. Oh man, Code Nico just started streaming. Hell yeah. Um, okay, my own stream, and then dash, stream manager, and then welcome to the chat room. Okay, I need the first person to post something in chat. Okay, light mode Twitch. Hell yeah. Okay, um, so the first thing that we need to do is basically set up our hardware environment, and I'm gonna keep looking at the camera in a weird way, and I'm gonna fix that. So, I also don't know if you hear me when I'm over here, I'm just gonna say stuff, but I'm gonna assume it's something like shit. Um, so sorry, sucks to suck. Um, yeah. And then that HDMI cable is very short. Yikes. That HDMI cable is very short, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, yeah. Hmm. So I can either, I'm just going to move my computer closer, you know? That is a viable strategy. And then I can get this a little further. I actually just ordered a couple, like, extra long... Uh, HDMI things, cables. Okay. I actually don't have my camera hooked up to the battery backup. All right, so I think that's gonna be okay-ish. Um, I can actually just move the desk closer if I need to. All right. <sighs> Okay, so, um, I 
can hear you over there. Oh, hell yeah. Alright, so, uh, first thing we're gonna do is just move all of these phones. <laughs> um... Okay. Those Birkenstocks? Hell yeah, they are. Fuck. <laughs> I like walled myself off. Um, is that all the fun? Oh, I missed one. Rip. Okay. Uh, what else do I not need here? Now that all these phones are gone, I can move all of these charging cables. Um, let's see. Uh, we won't need that. Uh, we won't need this. And we'll just move pretty much everything else here. It's just a bunch of random electronics components and a lot of dust. And over to the corner. Okay. All right. Oh, there is a lot of dust. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. Remember, chat, always clean your work surfaces. You want to get that nice, clean... Mmm, look at that. That is a productive work environment. And then we move all of this shit back over, which also brings over all the dust again. And then we clean this up. Oh, look at this. Cleaning, cleaning screen when? I don't know what just rolled off the table, but it was probably important. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Ah, that's good enough. Clean. Clean. That is straight gorgeous. Huh, what do we get? Oh, is that a 470 farad cap? Yes, it is. Micro farad, not actual farad. That would be ridiculous. Um... Yeah. How's lighting? Lighting looks acceptable. I really wish I had a longer HDMI cable, but I actually don't think I have one. That might be my longest HDMI cable. Fuck! How do I mitigate this problem? How do I mitigate this problem? Um... Okay, so I can move my computer, but I can only move my computer if all the other cables plugged into my computer can move, which that... There is something that is tight. It's just some USB cable. I don't know. That might be important. That was probably... Oh, yeah, that was my mouse. Um... Okay, let's tighten now. Ooh. Damn it. I need a longer cable. Shit. All right, uh, we just move the desk. That is the solution. There we go. There we go. Just move the desk. Okay. All right, chats. Um... I think we did a great job there. I think we're golden. Now, we can take apart a printer. <laughs> Woo! Uh, chat. Were you fuzzing the phones? Oh yeah, I've done a lot of phone research. 
Can it turn into a house organizing stream? Hey, I'm all for it. Uh, I gotta find time to do it sometime, you know? Okay, hello, hello YouTubers. Today we are going to be, we are, uh, today we are going to be uh, unboxing a Canon Pix, Pixma MX492. This printer came out, retails at about 700,000 US dollars. This is one of, the, one of the top printers that you can actually find out on the market right now. This is going to basically be our basis uh, for our printer calibration and testing. So we're going to unbox this right now, and we're going to we're going to see what's in the box here. Um, uh, yeah, there uh, you can get this mobile app. You see this? If you scan that QR code, you can get a mobile app, and it's too blurry for you to scan. Fuck you. Sucks. Sucks to be you. All right. So um, oh my god. Oh. Oh, the oh my god, the packaging is so good. That is one of my favorite things about Canon Pixma MX492 printers. They just they just have the best boxing support. They just look at this packaging design. There were some packaging engineers who got paid the big bucks. So right in here we have we have a cable. Oh my god, is that a two? They include a two wire. US outlet cable. This is, um, yeah, I think that's a gold plated, a uh, chromium nickel uh, metal hydride cable. Um, these are known in the industry to basically reduce the amount of noise and pixelation that you get in your printers. Uh, these cables are just unbelievable so once again uh, really impressed that Canon has included one of these uh, one of the best cables that you can actually find on the market um, so it, it, when we look in the box we'll find that there is uh, this black plastic thing I think that is the printer but I'm not 100% sure um, yeah we're just gonna pull that out Oh, oh my God. Oh, that's the, oh, it's the Pixma I've been waiting for. This is just, oh man. I, I can't believe it's finally here. Oh, just unbelievable. Oh, wow. Wow. And look at that package. Oh, you can see the Canon logo. Oh my God. Oh man. Um, all right, so inside the styrofoam, once again, a, a fantastic styrofoam job here. Um, maybe too good. Um, yeah, so this styrofoam, yeah, I think this is the really expensive styrofoam. Uh, basically, instead of having airs in these, uh, in these cells, they actually just put gold in them. So these are, these are, oh, oh yeah, they're really heavy. Oh man, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, these are heavy. Woo! Dog. Um, okay, so yeah, once again, no expense spared in the packing materials on these. Oh. Oh, son. Um, wow. Wow. Whew. Whew. I, I can't, I can't believe it's finally here. The Sony Pixma. Let's let's take a let's take a look at all the features that we get on here. Let me see if this is uh, in focus. Oh yeah, you're in focus now. Uh, so we got featuring on this printer. It looks like we have a numeric keyboard. Look at that. Yeah, uh, let, let's let's see let's see. Um, uh, let's type hi Twitch chat. H I I don't know where space is. We'll just say pound is a space. And then we'll just say T W I T C H. Hi Twitch, there you go. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. So we got we got a fantastic interface here. Uh, very tactile buttons. These feel like <laughs> these feel like the best buttons I've ever used on a device. They oh. It, these are basically Cherry MX Blues, the, 
the tactile feedback on here, like on some of these keys, it, it is, oh, it, it's just the best feedback. And then on the number nine key, they used a special technology. It's called the, the, the Canon uh, silent button. This one just feels like you're kind of squishing your finger into some wet noodles. Um, that, oh, really good uh, uh, interface there, really good. We got a, we got a start, uh, a something, and a stop button, probably for faxing or something. I, I, I don't know. Like, honestly, this is a really high-end device. Uh, I'm, I'm new to this sort of thing. We got a display here, uh, which uh, definitely will not be hacked to display obscenities. Uh, that will maybe come in handy in the future. And then just a couple buttons on here. Oh yeah. <laughs> what else we got on here? We we've got a a thing. Oh, it looks like it looks like we have a scanner. So in here we have a scanner that looks good. Um, and then on top of the scanner we have a a a, a printer flap. Uh, basically, when your printer is done, it typically flaps at you a couple times and say like, "Hello, I am done." Um, so that is a really common thing uh, for these high end printers. Uh, we got another printer flap here. Uh, I think this one, I, I can't remember what this one's used for, uh, but some, some greeting of a different type. Uh, looks like that's where ink would be if we actually had uh, ink in there, which we probably do, but it just didn't come out. Because um, we don't have it plugged in. What else? We have something on here, which I don't know what it does. Uh, maybe that's for a higher end model that we don't have. Um, honestly, and there's like some stuff in here where you can, you just, there's stuff, uh, and like a spring. Uh, so that's really cool. So we got that feature. Um, looks like we have, uh, looks like we have a Cat5 cable, uh, port as well as a, a phone port, uh, for faxing. So that looks really good. And also a USB port. So basically... Um, yeah, looks like our tax surfaces are going to be USB, uh, phone, and, uh, line in, and there's also Wi-Fi on this device, so, I don't know if there's Bluetooth, but if there's Bluetooth, uh, we can just send it over to Jiska, and she'll, uh, solve all of our problems for us. Big power button on the front, but yeah, that's what we got here. <laughs> all right. Oh, you put, oh, you put your burger... Do the burgers go in here or in here? Wait, where do you put the burgers? You put the burgers up here? Well, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I, I reckon you could fit four burgers on there. Oh, this is the grease trap. You know, the <laughs> printers just get, are more and more impressive every year. Oh, man. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to start taking this apart. Uh, alright, so to take this apart, we're gonna, um, look for screws. So I see one screw in here, and that looks good. We've got another screw up here. Uh, so I see two screws so far. Um, we've got uh, a screw in the back. Uh, two screws in the back. Uh, a bunch of screws on the bottom. Um, and it looks like these screws on the bottom, looks like they're holding in this, this, you know, bottom kind of assembly. I don't think that's gonna get us to what we want. I think we want the screws on the top, maybe the ones on the back here. So we're gonna start off by, uh, uh, we're gonna turn it on to make sure it works. <laughs> that way we know that we broke it uh, when it doesn't work anymore when we plug it in. Okay. So. Uh, oh, I need an extension cable. Good thing I have one. Right here. Oh yeah. Honestly, I'm going to extension cable into a power strip such that I can get various power for various things as various things need various power. Uh, and then we'll plug this into a UPS so that we can get, uh, so when we lose power, uh, we'll still have power. All right. There we go. Woo! Ah. Um, 
Um, here comes the magic smoke. There will be no magic smoke today. All right, let's see. Plug it in. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, man. Oh, it's just making all the printer. Oh, I just want to hug it. Oh, it's, oh, what a good printer. What a good printer. 100% letter. Hell yeah. I don't know what that means, but 100% letter. I don't, I actually have no idea what that means. Uh, all right. So it seems to work just fine. Uh, we don't need to test anything beyond that. That looks pretty good to me. We'll turn it off. One hundred percent leather. <laughs> oh, come on. It's hailing. Cool. All right. Um, so uh, we're going to take this printer part to do that. Should be pretty easy. I'm going to go for uh, these two screws first. So I'm assuming that this will come up at this seam. Seems like a good guess to me, and hopefully the screwdriver's gonna have enough torque for what we need here. If it doesn't, then we'll uh, figure something out. So, we start off here with a little self-tapper. Just a silvery self-tapping screw. And, uh, yeah, I'm curious if this will just pop off now. That might, that might be a bit, honestly, I feel like there's a chance that that is the only thing holding it in. I see two more screws back here. We're gonna we're gonna pound out these screws quick, uh, and that looks like a that eh, looks like the same threading. So I think these three screws are the same, which is a good sign. All self tappers in plastic, standard. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh that feels good. Um. So, I would hazard that this will pop out. Well, that, that was more than I expected. All right, then this screw is uh, next. <laughs> yeah, woo! <laughs> I wasn't expecting that much that fast. Um, <laughs> whoop, spring and thing. Okay, cool. So we have a spring and something that popped out of the spring. That's great. Uh, so we'll figure out how those go back in there. Oh, I love when springs pop out of stuff. And then in here, uh, we've got actually another screw that was retained under this, um, which we can now get at, because I think one of those screws maybe released that. Or maybe this always could open up. But uh, once again, same thing, silver self-tapper into a uh, plastic. And that screw, so far they all look the same. Okay. Okay. It's looking, it's looking pretty good. Uh, not seeing any screws in there. That's looking good. Um, we're stuck on something on this side. But we're getting, we're getting some pretty good... Okay, maybe we're not. Nice! Um, okay. And I just pulled out all of these cables at the same time. Uh, they should be easy to find where they go. Alright, that uh, looks good. So... Obviously, this is the board. Um, this, let me see if I can get you a, an action shot here. Um, doot, 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 doot. Okay, and then let me guide you in for a focusing shot. Oh, look at that. Okay, so this is clearly the uh, 
brains of everything. There's, there's nothing else in here that looks like electronics that are not, um, uh, like, uh, physical things. And that is obviously right there. I can already see where the flash is. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take this board entirely out, I think. Let me see here. I think we're going to take this board fully out. And should be easy to find where all these connectors go. They're pretty straightforward. Even though they have similar connectors, they're, they seem to be colored uh, differently, which is really nice for telling uh, where they're supposed to go. And that one, that wire was wrapped around. And this is held on, okay. And what else? I'm trying to take this out without uh, interfering with his, with interfering with as few wires as I can. So this is like a little retention board. There's like a little uh, magnet in there. Um, yeah, and I think we can just rip everything out and get to the board. So let's do that. Bink, 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 bink. That looks pretty good. All right, record time. Here we go. Got uh, that. These are now machine screws for the first time. These are not self-tappers. Those are actually machine screws. And it looks like we have four of them, one in each corner. And uh, yeah. There we go. Okay. <laughs> well, that was easy. Um. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that was a lot easier than I expected. Well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow, <laughs> that was a lot easier than I thought. Okay, so uh, here we have the dev board. We're gonna we're gonna go on an adventure, but we're gonna go on a we're gonna go on a special adventure here, chat. So uh, just hold on with me, uh, chat. Tell me your favorite pasta noodle in chat. And then by the time you're done figuring that out, uh, we'll have some cool stuff. Do, do, do. Have you figured out your favorite pasta yet, chat? Cause that is what you're supposed to be figuring out right now. That is your duty.
Hmm. Hmm. Uh-oh. Why is that being dumb? Um... Shit. How do I lie to this? I don't know how I lie to this. There's gotta be a way for it to not care. Um. Hmm. Let me see here. Um. Probably because it's on auto mode. Yeah, there we go. It was on auto. That was the problem. That ISO cranked. Is it that? No. What? Oh, I know. Yeah, nice. Okay. So let's, uh, since we're in manual mode, let's see if we can go. Doesn't seem like it matters. Okay. All right. All right. So, that, and let's get some more light in there. The more light, the better. Um, that was good. Okay. So, what I need to do is calibrate my focus. So, what I need to do is uh, basically get the focus identical for myself and for you, because currently we have different focus. So, I'm picking something to focus on. Right now is that. I'm gonna zoom in a bit more just so I, just so focusing is a bit more obvious for me. Okay, so that looks really focused. Although I have my 10 by 20s in there. Um, so I might not be able to focus this camera. Huh? Let me make sure we have the same frame of view. We definitely don't. I'm gonna find my 10 by 10s. Uh, I have different eyepieces on here that do not reflect uh, what you see in the camera. And it looks like you have a tighter field of view than what I have. Bear back. Um. I've got a 20 by 10. That actually might be what I wanted. Uh, yeah, I had 10 by 20s and these are 20 by 10s. Now let's see what this looks like. Okay, that looks, I just barely see the hole and the J and yeah. I think these are pretty comparable now. It's not 
perfect, I see a little bit different of an image. So basically, one corner of that piece is just in. Oh, they're off by a, a schmidge. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, so these are plenty close. So uh, what I can do is refocus that. Which I will do there. Oh yeah, you like chromatic aberration? Me too. Um. Huh. I'm trying to basically focus it on the top of that connector. And I think that's pretty good. Um. Like, that seems to be kind of the most in focus. Uh, obviously, there's some, there's some chromatic aberration here. The, the uh, lens quality is not fantastic on the... Um, I actually see a much better image through the eyepiece than what you see. So, what we can do is flip to something else on the board. Um, let's look at, I guess... Um, Wow, that's like much less readable. Uh, let me let me see if I can get some shaders on there. Oh yeah, look at that! Just by changing the angle of the light. Oh, fucking gorgeous. Oh, I'm a focusing champ. Okay, so that's like really good in my eyes, and then in your eyes, it looks very chromatically aberrated. And I'm just trying to focus that as much as I can. Basically, I'm trying to get my eyepiece in sync with the camera eyepiece. And I think that's about as focused as you're going to get. So, yeah. Unfortunately, I see a much better image. I don't know why this lens sucks so much. Um... It doesn't look... Dirty, like it's a it's a little dirty, but it's not bad. Um, I think it's just a bad lens, to be honest, and I think that's why there's so much uh, aberration. And then what I'm gonna do is try to get it so uh, <clears throat> I want to get it so you have the same orientation that I have, uh, which is this, right? I am basically seeing it in the correct orientation, uh, and you're not. Well. What did I just do there? Oh, I moved this and bumped the lights. Okay, um, shit. Hmm. <laughs> Unfortunately, due to like the, the lengths of all these cables and shit, and where the cameras, where the cables come out of the camera, I can't really give you, sorry, I'm gonna bump the camera here. Um. I can't give you the best perspective of what I see. I'm trying. I'm, like, strangling myself in cables now. Um, so what I want is basically I am reading that where basically it is uh, in, like, normal human orientation. And for you, it's a little bit sideways. I guess that's, if that's upside down, then this is right side up. Aha! Uh -huh. There we go. And then the camera's twisting because the cords are pulling on it too much. God damn it. Why? I think that's like a fine adjust. Okay, sweet. <laughs> All right. Um, God damn it, dude. Why is it just rotating? Like, the cable is not pulling on it that much. Oh, that's so fucking tilting. Well, sucks to suck, chat. You're gonna, you're gonna see things a little bit sideways. Um, all right. Too bad, chat. All right, so this... 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 <laughs> 
uh, seems to be the main processor of this board. So, uh, basically, uh, I see a, like, 814-008 something something. Um, oh yeah, I unplugged my mouse. Let me, uh, plug my mouse back in so I can use my mouse to do mouse things. Um... Oh god. Uh... Hey, we have a mouse. All right. Yeah, I, you know what I should, do I have tape? I could probably just tape the camera in this orientation. It wouldn't take that much, I'll be right back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some tape and crawl under all these wires. gotta crawl under my desk to get here. All right, so I'm going to align this such that it is as square as I can make it. That looks pretty damn square to me. And then we will orient the camera to be equivalently square using a very expensive piece of tape. Please be strong enough. Oh God, that's like, ah, ah, <laughs> yeah, eat shit, physics, gravity, suck a dick. Easy, easy. That's in there pretty decent. It's not, it's not the firmest, it's not the best taping job I've done in my life. Um. But that ain't bad. All right. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to turn this upside down. And now it's upside down. Is that upside down to you, chat? Because it's upside down to me. Yay! We did it, chat! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right, and then this one is going to be like center of the screen ish. Yeah? We're on slightly different rotations, but that is, that's, that's flat for me. I could readjust the tape, but you know, I just, oh, we did it. Oh, the tape is sticking in the most glorious tape position. Woo. All right. All right. Now we can go on an adventure. Let's go on an adventure. So this is going to be. Uh, let's see how much I can zoom out. I can't zoom out any more than that, and I also have a 0.5x here. So I'm actually, like, pretty zoomed out. If I take this lens off... If I take this lens off... That is going to zoom us in, and obviously you're gonna fuck up the, um, focus. In fact, that is going to be really out of focus now, and I will have to do major adjustments. So we'll just put this lens back on. But I have a, a 0.5x lens on here. That just basically the goal of this lens is that I can focus from further away. And when I can focus from further away, then I am able to um, I'm able to uh, get more shit under here, like a soldering iron and stuff. How is that focus? Is it good? Honestly, the camera quality is not terrible on here. The camera quality is ultimately limited by the chromatic aberration of the lens that I have the camera plugged into for the microscope. Um, but yeah, so we can go on a small little adventure around the board. So this is the top. Uh, actually, here's the, here's the text on here. So we have a a uh, couple codes on here, it looks like. And we have uh, access, ca uh, c cassette. Uh, so these are, this is like access, this cassette. These are like different plugins. 
um, head. So this must be what I guess controls the head of the printer. PE. I don't know what PE would potentially be. Um, yeah, uh, power. Okay, clearly power, and it also makes sense because it's a little beefier. Um, LF line feed. Oh, is that character turn and line feed? No fucking way! Look at that. We got we got power. We got line feed, and we got carriage return. And I'm not memeing. That actually makes sense. That, like, actually totally makes sense. <laughs> I was not expecting CRLF in here, but that makes total fucking sense. Alright, we have a, a D51 a QR code in here. Anyone want to scan this QR code? Let me, uh... Okay. Trying to get the best contrast for y'all. How's that look? Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. It's not QR. Eh, it's good enough. <laughs> Has to be proprietary in-house indexing. Doesn't scan anything. RIP! Fucking RIP, dude. RIP. The dream, dude. The dream. Okay. So then we got the ADF. I don't know what that is. We got the SysFB. And we got the panel. So this is probably the, like, control, uh, like... This is probably the actual, like... Hmm. Hmm. ADF. This is FB. Line, is this a line feed encoder? Is that like for indexing uh, where the heads are? We got an NCU, an eject, mm, don't know what that's for, and a WLAN. So the wireless LAN here, interesting, that is a uh, eight pin job. I wonder what that is talking over. I wonder if that's uh, like an SDIO interface that they use there. All right. So um, looking in it vertically, it doesn't really work too well, but there, this is a uh, USB-B port. So it's a Foxconn component here. We've got a USB uh, type B connector. We've got a crystal oscillator there. That's gonna be running the whole system and I guess I actually don't know how to read crystals. Two four uh, JF two four M one seven E. Is that a twenty four point one seven? Or oh no, this is a twenty four megahertz crystal, isn't it? Yeah. So what's fun about this is we should be able to like look. Yeah, you can see how that was etched in there. Isn't that, isn't that cool? You can kind of see how the. Um, how it was punched in there. You can see all the little dots of like the dot matrix like punch printing of that onto the metal case in that, that kind of fun. Pew pew indeed. Okay, uh, looking at other things. So those are all the connectors. This right here, um, this is very obviously uh, a serial based, um, this is a serial based uh, flash chip. So we've got a Winbond uh, 250128FVSC1713. So 1713 is probably the date code. Uh, I don't know if that's the 13th week of 2017 or the 17th week of 2013, but it's probably the 13th week of 2017. And I'm going to see if I can clean that off with a little bit of slobber. Um, there we go. There we go. And that'll dry up. Um, okay, so we have, sometimes it's easier to read these when you actually zoom out more. And let me change the angles here. Um, there's actually a chip on the chip. So, yeah, two, uh, 250-128FV. I'm guessing this is a 128 megabit uh, flash chip right here. So this is going to be an 8-pin serial. Uh, looks like my friend did the soldering on that one. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> wow. 
Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, uh, wow, that is hanging in there by a fucking thread. It's already been desoldered. This one has, yeah. I did this as like a soldering chip practice thing with a friend. Um, oof. 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 Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Not, not a big deal. Okay, so basically, if you've never done this stuff before, so this is actually the chip that is going to contain the firmware. And the only reason that we know this, if we look at all of the chips, so before we do anything else, if we look at all of the chips on here, we have this, which is a, a Micron uh, SEM17D9RZH. Um, this, just due to the form factor, right, it, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, but due to the form factor, this is a very obvious RAM. This is obviously like DRAM or, or some form of RAM. Um, if we flip this over, we can kind of see... Um, yeah, so here are going to be the vias to that. Um, so I don't know how many pins are actually in use on here. I also don't know if this is a multi-layer board. I'm going to assume this board is not multi-layer, but it's hard to say. Anyways, this is obviously the DRAM. So that's one of the chips on the board. And there's this big chip. And basically the, the squarest most chip is always the processor. Uh, that's not actually the case. Um, but but uh, this is definitely the processor on here. So I don't know if there's any information on here. I don't see any branding. Um, so I'm guessing that they have branded, they probably purchased this chip and then they brand it off of someone. If anyone wants to look up these codes uh, to try to find uh, what this is. So I have the data sheet for the flash, uh, W25Q128FV. Uh, yeah, that probably is. Let me just make sure. Uh, 128FVS0. Uh, oh, is it SC? Uh, FV, oh yeah. So basically, you in that data sheet, and we can pull up that data sheet in a second, that the, uh, SC or S0 uh, or whatever that is, that's probably a, a designation about the speed Probably S0 is like speed zero. Um, now these like numbers are, are sometimes pretty random, but the data sheet will likely reference uh, specifically how to read these codes. Um, and that's a cool thing about data sheets. Then the main processor, we have the DRAM on here. And then we have one more chip here, um, an A4102 uh, TI731. I don't know what a TI731 is. I don't actually know if that's a Texas Instruments, um, but, I'm going to assume that this is probably a chip that just magically handles... Uh, you know what? This is right next to the uh, CIS FB in the panel. And some of those... Are some of those wires going to the panel? I'm trying to trace those out really quickly. I would imagine that this is probably an LCD controller. That would be my guess. So... It's hard to say, um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know if anyone can find information on that, uh, TI-731. And then this right here is just a felt pad. There's uh, actually, um, there's actually nothing under here. So this is like probably for a, you know, different model. They use the same board. So you can see there's a lot of unpopulated stuff around here. Um, and this is just a felt pad. It, it literally is, is nothing. Um, Got some power supply things here. So basically the power comes in here, right here, PWR. Uh, and then we have a couple, uh, you know, more standard components. These are probably just gonna be dividing down voltages uh, to different voltages that we need. But everything else on here, there are very few discrete components on here. Just a couple like filtering caps and pull up, pull down resistors. And other than that, it's literally the, the flash chip, the CPU, the DRAM chip, uh, this which is probably an LCD controller or something of that type, if someone can find info. Um, and, uh, of course, we have a an oscillator on here. There is nothing on the other side of the board at all, so I'm not even going to show you that, other than some passives. Um, but, yeah, that's it. And the reason why it's so obvious that this is the CPU is because it's the biggest thing. This is DRAM, just do the shape, and it's Micron. And this is the flash because it is a, an 8-pin small little thing, uh, which is... Uh, flash chips are typically like that and the 128 is a designation of the storage size Which is something that you can often infer from uh, chips like that. 
So yeah, that's basically what we have there. Um, there's really nothing else on this board. It's actually really boring. So, TI-731 8-bit LED binary counter. Huh. So, yeah, I would imagine that is actually being used for the uh, display then. Um, that's, that's my guess, at least. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to desolder this chip. So we're just going to lift this chip off uh, really fucking easily. Uh, we're just going to use a heat gun, which I will, if you remind me, I will show you after we get off the microscope view. Um, but we're going to finish this up on the microscope. Uh, I fucked up that tape because I jerked the camera. And I fucked it up more. Sucks to suck. Okay. Do do do. Getting stuff on my desk that should have been on it before. Do 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 Moving it to a spot so I don't fuck things up as bad. Do, 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 do. I'm moving these so I don't lose the screws. Do, 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 do. Plugging this in. Do, 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 do. Okay. So, um, as I crawl through everything again. All right. Let's see if that tape re-sticks. Oh, it did. Oh, glorious. All right, so I am going to turn on my hot air gun. And, uh... I like how that's making all of my lights kind of flicker in here. That's sketch. Okay, um... So, we're going to use a hot air gun to remove this chip which will allow us to melt kind of all the solder. Uh, we just want to avoid uh, melting this connector. That's really the only thing that we are concerned about is melting that one connector there. So all we're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna go find a pliers, which I have on my desk, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I've got a small little pair of pliers. The tweezers would make more sense here, but I actually don't own a good pair of tweezers. So I'm just gonna use um, pliers here. So, and these are probably not the pliers that you're expecting to come in here, uh, but those look pretty good. So, all that matters is that I can get a decent amount of grab on here, and I just want to grab it lightly, such that I can hold the board up, and hopefully, when I melt that solder, the chip will just fall off. So, I'm waiting for my uh, hot air gun to warm up a bit more. But basically the goal is to just use the weight of the board itself, which is like an ounce, uh, and use that to just drop the chip off once that melts. So I'm not actually really squeezing these pliers. I'm just trying to grab it uh, a little bit here. Okay, um, at least that feels pretty hot. I don't know if it is at full temperature yet. Uh, we're going to come in here. I'm actually going to turn down the airflow we're gonna go to like six liters per minute of air through here okay and there okay it looks like we are able to melt solder so it's hard to say if that one side has already been melted it might be hard to get both sides at the same time here uh, i don't know if that's fully melting on on that side and unfortunately, I have to actually bring the gun a really long way. Come on. I think it lifted off that side. And there we go. And the chip is off. Okay. Beautiful. We can uh, turn off that. And uh, there's no collateral, no collateral damage on the board. So that's it. So now we have this chip. And so that is the actual flash chip here. And we're going to uh, read the firmware off of this. <laughs> yeah. 
That's it. Fucking hacker, man. Putting it on is the hard part. <laughs> uh, uh, putting it on is definitely the fucking hard part. Um, I actually just have really shitty flux. Uh, and if you've ever done soldering with shitty flux, uh, you'll know that, uh, yeah, makes things fucking hard. Okay, so, uh, what we're gonna do is bink, 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 bink. Bink, bink, bink. Going for an adventure today, chat. And then eventually, once I have more cameras, sorry for bumping the microphone. Uh, yeah, this was kind of the this was the setup that you didn't really get to see. Um, we had kind of a micros microscope set up here, and uh, you were down here, and that chip hasn't moved, so the chip is down here. Um, but yeah, I had the, the bright lights on, and then the hot air gun, which you can't really see. I have a Heiko uh, hot air gun here, and so this is the wand that you saw poking in there, and it just basically blows hot air, um, onto whatever you want. Hot enough to melt solder or whatever. I had that on heat setting 5. It's a little bit hot, um, but I was trying to just do it quick. I wasn't too worried about damaging anything. Uh, it's not the most delicate piece of technology. So, now that all of that's there, what we need to do is actually dump the, um, we need to dump the uh, firmware off of this. And to dump the firmware off of this, and I move the camera and fuck everything up, uh, we are going to, um, we're gonna grab a rear that I have. So, In here, I have a bunch of miscellaneous things, but uh, let's not lose that chip. Let's just put it somewhere safe, like there. Um, so I have a bunch of different readers. So basically, you can buy these off eBay. They're fucking, like, I don't know, 100 bucks. This is a X, XGECU programmer, a TL8662+. Plus. If you just go onto eBay and you buy the, like, most fully featured fucking set of components. I actually have two of them. Um, that's basically what I have here. So that's all I have. And it comes with, if you buy, you can buy just the programmer. Uh, but if you don't buy the programmer, you'll get a bunch of things. Well, if you buy the programmer with other things, you'll get a bunch of these adapters, which are used uh, to basically hold various chips. So the one that we're most interested in is very likely going to be this one because it is an eight pin uh, connector and it's really hard without having, it's really hard to focus this, sorry chat. Um, but basically it's got like eight little pins in there and we should be able to just socket the chip. So we'll see what we can do and hopefully I will try to get a better way to focus. But uh, all we're gonna do is grab that chip we are going to align pin zero uh, with the correct position, which honestly, this is gonna be pretty hard to show on stream just because these are just such small pieces. Um, line up the chip and drop it in here. And then it's really important, really important to make sure that the pins actually are being grabbed by the little grabby boys and make sure there's decent contact. If there's not good contact, then you'll have a problem. But basically, what I have done is I have socketed that chip in there, so now the chip is kind of grabbed in there. So those are like spring-loaded pins, and when you push down on this, um, basically the pins kind of retract, and you put it in there, and then the pins go back in. And on the back side, there's just this standard like uh, dip-style packaging, so... Yeah, let me uh, let me get my autofocus kind of working better here. Um, let's see. Oh yeah. Okay. So all we're gonna do is just whack this in the programmer, which is kind of the same same process. Um, we're gonna, well, we're just putting. Oops. Put the uh, we just put that other like daughter board in there and socket it in this programmer, and at this point. 
Uh, as long as all of the pins are touching and we don't have like a piece of a solder that's causing one of the pins to not connect up correctly or like push it off of the pads, uh, we should be good. So we're just gonna go find a USB-B uh, cable for this and we'll uh, go over to the computer. So where would I have a USB-B cable? <laughs> um, oh man. I've got USB 3B cables. Uh, printers might come with a cable. Yeah, printers don't come with shit anymore. Uh, luckily, it looks like I have one in this box. Ha <laughs> ha! It probably came with the program, to be honest. Um, okay. So now, what we can do is we can go back to the uh, computer and, um, uh, blimp, blimp, blimp. Boop. Sorry for touching the microphone. Um, how the fuck? How? How? How did I? How did I have that in there? There we go. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Okay. So now what we have to do is we have to find the um software that we have to run for this. And uh, let me point the camera up. Not that up. Uh, that looks like a good amount of up. That looks like the pretty, that looks like the normal camera position. Not too bad. And then we'll just get my focusing a flute. Fuck. It's really hard to, there we go. Should be focused now. All right. So what we can do is take a look at, uh, let's get this program working. Um, so to do this, we're going to go get a Windows 7 VM running. And the reason we're going to get Windows 7 VMs running is because with basically all USB peripherals, the software always works better on Windows 7. Um, all right, let me, I'm going to temporarily do this. It's just a black screen that's intended. Um, okay. Mm. Okay. My phone. There it is. Do do do. Do 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 do. Come on. Come on. All right. So. We're going to grab a Windows 7 here. Um, I actually probably at one point had a Windows 7 VM, but not right now. <laughs> okay. Windows 7. Let's go. Windows 7 with Service Pack 1. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh, yeah. Windows 7 Professional. Yeah, that looks good. Holy shit. Why is that such a slow download? Six minutes? That is a scam. That is a scam. Eight, t oh my God, five minutes? Oh my God, come on. Oh, it's speeding up, it's speeding up. The TCP window is adopting. <laughs> All right, chat, we're gonna, have to, uh, we're gonna have to make bets on whether or not um, whether or not this firmware is going to be compressed or encrypted or whatever. Basically, if we run strings on this binary, 
Will it have information in it? Okay. Compressed, plain text, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Or an XLM, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime, hell yeah. Seven seconds left. Four, three. There we go. Uh, two cores is fine. 40 gigs is fine. Internet access is fine. Honestly, maybe I don't want internet access on this. Ah, we don't have any other <laughs> we don't have any other cards set up. Whatever. Whee! Let's uh let's go. Let's go. We'll get vert IO drivers here too. We're gonna get this all nice and fancy. Um, okay. All right, let me see if I missed anything. A bunch of follows. Thank you so much for all of those follows, everyone. Hell yeah. Oh, what's our prediction? Oh, compressed versus uncompressed. Oh, some big bets. Some big bets. Um, I'm going to search for the firmware on here. So we're going to look, uh, or not the firmware, for this fucking uh, XL866. Uh, two plus. Yeah, there is actually a website on here. Um, www.xgcu.com. Yes. <laughs> That's about what I expected. Oh, wait. Oh, fuck yeah. Okay. Ooh, they have a new one? So this is what we have. We have the, we have the XL8662+. And it can do all of these things. Look at all these things it can do. Uh, let's see if the English site works. Um, yeah. Pin detection, 1.8 volts, NAND flash, MCU support, NOR flash, multi-programming, bunch of different things. Status looks like in production. So this, this is basically still the, the thing that you get. So we want to get the uh, TL, the, just the programmer. Uh, the software here, and we'll just download this onto Linux, and then we'll copy it into the VM. So let's get, uh, is this the latest version? I'm just going to imagine it, it wait, 7.5, 2021, 128. This was updated literally like fucking a week ago. Hell yeah. Um... Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Oh. No. It doesn't look like we're making progress. Oh, we did it! <laughs> Woo! Oh, yeah. Okay, sweet. Um, uh, win seven. Okay. Easy, chat. Easy. Oh, I'm not sharing the screen. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha. XD. XD. Ha ha. Ha ha. Got you, chat. Ha ha. Ha. Pranked you. Ha ha. All right. It's fine. Yeah, we we literally navigated a site in Chinese. Uh, but we we did it. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll shut down this VM. Okay, now that we shut down this VM, we're gonna switch over this 
to a this, and we'll boot this. Okay, in before full secure boot chain. Uh huh. Uh huh. Let's get an X to doubt in chat. Uh, oh, we have to be Windows 8 or higher? Oh. What about this one? We can use this one, though. <laughs> oh, no. I don't think the software works on Windows 10. To, to, to be honest... Uh, oops, uh, 122.1. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then we'll just need 7-zip or something. Let's just bing it. Just fucking bing it. Um, a lot of these websites aren't going to work anymore, but, uh, usually the MSIs are a little bit more reliable here. Let's see. A lot of HTTPS doesn't work anymore on old Internet Explorer just because of, uh, like, deprecation of certain algorithms. But it looks like we're good here. Why did that, why does that default to D? That's ridiculous. Okay, oh yeah, oh yeah, we trust that. Yes, we do, let's go. All right, um, okay, so we should now be able to uh, plug in this device. <clears throat> plug this into my monitor. <laughs> Couple lights came on there. Did that really redirect directly into there without me telling it to? Okay, sick, nice. Um. Yeah, you know what? Let's pick a little bit res better resolution here. Uh, I like 1440 by 900 for VMs, to be honest. Yeah, and you know what? Let's just, we'll just restart. <laughs> if it tells us to restart in Windows 7, we're going to just trust it. <laughs> All right. Um, a redirect USB device. Um, looks like that is good. Let's just run this as admin <laughs> to be safe. Please reflash firmware. Oh, I probably should have read that. I'm guessing the firmware for this device is out of date. So let's, uh, main menu tools, reflash. Reflash firmware. Oh, cool. Uh, current firmware version is this. Okay. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> reflashing. Okay, hey, successful. <laughs> That's usually not what I'm used to. Um, okay, I'm just gonna restart the program just to see if we get the same pop-up. And we do not, it looks like, yeah, th it's not there. System self-check, remove. Let's just do a self-check quick. So remove it from the zip, zero insertion for it socket. And this is just testing. Okay, everything looks good. All right. Um, these devices actually work really well, to be honest. Even though they look a little sketchy, they actually work really well. Um, all right, so what we need to do is, it's probably not gonna automatically detect this device, but maybe we can see if it can. Uh, flash detect? Yeah, eight pin detect. Unknown device. Okay, cool. Uh, that's fine. So, this was a win bond. Uh, did someone type down the chip? 250M something. So, let's just pick the. Uh, so we have a wind bond. Basically, in here, you just have to go through and pick the device. It was like a two, two five. Maybe it wasn't a two hundred fifty. Maybe it was a two five Q. Two five Q one twenty eight. Uh, let's just see if this 
a whole string works here. Uh, W25Q128FV. Um, and then the S0 stuff won't matter. This is an SOIC8, which is uh, the 8-pin format. Um, and it is the FV version, so it looks like we have a pretty much perfect match here. So we should be able to, in theory, um, hopefully just read this. Uh, auto read ID. Let's just read. Read range, flash, everything. Uh, read it. Ooh, uh, pin error. Okay, um, there's actually a... Let's see, view adapter. So that is the adapter I'm supposed to use. So everything should be fine there. And this is pretty common that basically the pins just aren't making the right contact. I'm just gonna recycle those pins a couple. I put the fucking chip in upside down. Ha! <laughs> Not upside down, but uh, the wrong way around. Okay. But these things are pretty, wow, I just threw that in perfectly. All right. Um read. Okay, here we go. So we are reading that flash. Read ID that's standardized. Need a list of IDs to chips, then it should work. Oh. But we, we already knew this chip, so we should be good here. Uncompress 100%. So this is 128 megabit, right? So we should have... Uh, it should be exactly 16 megabytes, should be this, uh, firmware. Aren't these things slick? Isn't this fucking cool? Aren't these things awesome? It's just, you sock it, you can put in pretty exotic stuff in here. Okay, uh, here we go. Oh, clack. A46008. Oh, it's not looking good for the, oh. You know what? Yeah, I think this is compressed. This looks compressed. And there's the end of, of Flash. So, uh, what we should be able to do... What is? What do you think Verify is? Do you think Verify is just going to read it and check that it's identical? <laughs> I'm just doing it. I don't know what it is. <clears throat> so... All right. Not using writing. Oh, after writing. I'm guessing what it's gonna do is just verify that the contents in here match what are on the what's on the chip. Hey, verify finished. Was it succeeded? Nice. Okay. Um cool. I think that's basically just double check, but yeah, we exactly have 16 megs, which is what we'd expect. And then we should be able to save this. We'll just call this, uh, what is this? Canon uh, Pixma MX492.flashbin, right? So this is basically the uh, direct flash off of there. And then that we have that saved, we can now brick this. We can do whatever the fuck we want to this uh, because we have this saved. So let me go grab Python quick. Hopefully Python isn't EOL yet. Uh, Python. It probably is EOL on, on uh, Win 10. Ooh, wow. That's not good. Um, Yep, this is what I was talking about with like Internet Explorer doesn't work half the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we could see if the let's um, fuck, <laughs> fuck. Um, yeah, we'll just we'll just download some host, whatever. Downloads. Um, Chrome does not work on Windows Seven. Let's grab uh, Python 2.7, whatever the latest 2.7, 2.718, good enough. Uh, Windows MSI, here we go. So this is actually why I downloaded the other link on the host. For that exact reason. Hopefully this works on uh, Windows 7. Bam. Yep. 
Okay, uh, looks good. Uh, okay, um, that we get Okay, and uh, Canon Pixma MX492 flash bin dot bin. Fuck. Uh, MX492 flash bin. I typoed something. Pixma. I feel like I didn't typo anything. That looks pretty good to me. Um, are there like two? Oh. oh, you can't do the CMD trick. Oh, okay, I see. Um, huh. I guess you can't. That's kind of weird. You can do that in uh, modern Windows, but yeah. Okay, sweet. Um... Uh... All right, that looks good, and we can now uh, shut down. <clears throat> cool, we did it. I'm proud of us, chat. I'm proud of us. That was uh, that was really impressive work we did. All right, so, um, so I made a new folder called Canon, uh, and in firmware dumps, I have the original firmware dump. Um, okay, um, uh, checksums. I'll say check some. Okay, so basically we, we stored the uh, checksum. We'll actually do a couple more in there. Why not? Uh, okay, so basically we have the, the different checksums for that, which is good. Um... I, I like to make sure that I just have that shit fucking locked down uh, because we can now reflash that um, if we need to. So uh, this one we don't need. Uh, get and it dot get status get add firmware dumps get status get commits m commit uh, flash dumps. Okay, and then uh, what was that chip? Okay, um, from our dumps uh, chip info.txt. The flash is six, uh, 128 megabits from a flash chip uh, from an 8 pin flash chip, this. Right? So I like to record information like that, uh, and I'm going to stylize that with capital S. Um, and then we're gonna go grab the uh, spec for this. The data sheet, sorry. Wind bond W25Q128FV. And basically the data sheet that I'm looking at is this. And this should specify all the information, basically how to read and write the chip, uh, the pinouts, right? Chip select, all that sort of stuff. Uh, you can see that there is indeed a 16-pin variant, but we actually have this 8-pin variant. Um, and if we actually try to look, oh, diagrams of kind of the sectors and all that sort of stuff. But we don't care about that because the programmer just knows all of that and can just read all of that for us, and it has. It's basically just read everything all the way. Uh, w means it's wind bond. 25Q means it is uh, this... 4K sector dual quad IO. 128F is the 128 meg flash. The V uh, specifies the voltage. 
um, 2.7 to 3.6. The next digit, uh, the S, specifies that it is an 8-pin SOIC. Uh, so a, basically this is the, basically the, the physical, uh, chip, um, that is being used. And then the, uh, there is no I, but I guess that might be optional. And then maybe there's a Q at the end. Maybe it was the green package. I don't know. But yeah, so that's basically, there's almost always information on how to actually read the numbers. So once you find the first couple digits, like you'll find that when you're, when you're looking at these chips, usually like the, it's the first couple digits that will get you to the data sheet. And then in this case, right, basically at, everything after like the 128F is actually just more information about the, the chip that's actually covered in the same uh, document. Um, so we're going to, uh, w get that, uh, hardware info, uh, flash, uh, w get this, okay, and then, uh, firmware dumps chip info to here, okay, so now we basically have stored off that PDF, as well as the uh, chip information. So I, I really like doing this sort of thing. Whenever you're like reading these numbers, sometimes they're really hard to read and you're squinting or you have them under a microscope. So just always uh, make a copy of these things and, and kind of store them if you can. Um, get add hardware info, get status. Uh, and uh, firmware dumps and then chip info.txt. Was that not in there already? Hmm. Oh, maybe we added the chip info afterwards. I, I don't remember. Git commit am added a uh, flash data sheet and chip info. Okay. Um, and now we can make a GitHub quick. Okay, new repository, and this will be uh, Canon Pixma MX492. Uh, yeah, uh, reverse engineering project on stream. Okay. Bink. And... Okay. Okay, and that looks good. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that's good. <laughs> there we go. Um. All right. We got the chip info, all that sort of shit. Okay, um, do, 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 <laughs> now run strings, uh, yeah, there's no way there are going to be a lot of strings on here, it's going to be compressed, it, it looks pretty compressed, um, yeah, it's compressed. Okay, uh, not a huge surprise there, right? So there are a couple things that look like it's like it's not compressed, but it is compressed. And the reason you can tell it's compressed is because a lot of these things cut off. Um, it's just a really shitty compression algorithm. Basically, they're going to be using a compression algorithm that's going to be really easy for them to implement in like assembly and a stage zero bootloader, right? Um, so the reason why it looks like it's not compressed is actually just because the compression algorithm is just that fucking bad. Um, but yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, Binwalk will probably not find anything on this. It's going to be a proprietary thing. Uh, yeah, that looks, uh, 
Yeah, it, it's not Zlib. It, basically, it's it's uh, proprietary compression. Be right back. Okay, um, Benwalk dash M. I mean, it's it's just not it's not gonna it's not gonna work. Entropy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's it's compressed, chat. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry, chat, but it's compressed. Um, yeah, and it's it's definitely not uh, gzip. It's gonna be their own custom thing that whatever bootloader they fucking bought this off of. Um, okay. So, um, let's see what we can do here. Uh, do do do. Points? Yeah, I, th I think they I think they should go out, right? Most firmware are compressed. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so what we need to do is basically figure out the layout of stuff in memory. Um, and I think I think my favorite part of this firmware was I definitely saw my Wi-Fi password in there. So I I, I did I did just change my Wi-Fi password. Because <laughs> I totally just uploaded my Wi-Fi password. Sick! That's okay. I treat my Wi-Fi network as compromised, anyways. Um, <laughs> fucking, fucking rip. Yeah, it literally doesn't fucking matter. Um, that is why I have an offline network. Okay. Um, so basically, what I want to do is I want to look for where this is going to get loaded, and we're gonna actually find that hopefully with XXD. Uh, so we're going to look for something uh, that looks like a loading address. Um, so this looks kind of addressy. This looks like a big Indian address, but uh, it's hard to say if it's actually going to be a big Indian or not. Um, this actually looks like the loading address. Like, I, I've already seen two things that kind of start with the uh, 8, so I'm, like, starting to suss that it's loaded at 8. Um, and since this is such a clean address, this is, like, the only thing that's a super clean address, um, I would hazard that, like, maybe this is the size and this is the address. Because basically, something's gonna have to tell the decompression algorithm like where where things are loaded or decompressed. Although uh, th this chip is probably just wired into a specific spot, so we'll figure it out. Um, I'm gonna assume that it is. Let's actually see if we can find anything that resembles ARM assembly here. Leaks Wi-Fi password. <laughs> One's copy pasta my work password. Yeah, let's see here. Um, basically, I'm, I'm hoping that their compression algorithm is bad enough uh, that I can tell if it's big or little Indian, and this looks like it's a uh, little Indian arm. Um, and the reason why I'm saying that is because basically everything in here ends with an E um, as, like, the top nibble, and if you've ever looked at arm before... Uh, you'll find that the, the top part is basically specifying the uh, condition code. So I'm going to hazard that this is a 32-bit ARM, probably like an ARM v5. We could actually just look for ARM and see if we see it anywhere in here. Uh, but we probably won't be able to get great information about it. Let's try this. Strings, uh, grep ARM. But yeah, we're basically trying to figure out what the processor is right now. Uh, once we figure out what the processor is and where things are loaded, we can uh, disassemble it better with Ghidra. So we're going to go and grab uh, Ghidra 9.2.2. Uh, let me do this quickly. 
Um, okay, let's make a new project, non-shared project, and we'll put this in Canon Ghidra select uh, Canon Pixma MX492. Finish. Okay. So, uh, what we should be able to do is go and grab Canon firmware dumps Pixma. Okay, so this, we're gonna just say it's probably like ARM, probably ARM v5, uh, little Indian. It didn't look like thumb mode. Uh, we could maybe, we could just go to v7. V8's a bit aggro, but V7 should be like a little bit more inclusive. Um, and then we'll say the loading address, the base address, we're just gonna say is this, and we'll just say this is flash. Um, and we're just gonna see where this goes, right? So, um, yeah, let's just see what it can do. Uh, but it's probably not gonna find much, right? Be right back. Forgot that desk. Has chat had any questions? I think we've been we've been blasting through some stuff. It's been relatively straightforward, but I know a lot of people have probably never done like hardware stuff before, so. Alright. Um God, I do not know how to fix this window layout. Um Fuck. What? Oh. Hey, there we go. Did it find code? Mm, yes. Um, this is not coincidental. This is definitely not coincidental. Um, this is definitely real. And it looks like our load address is probably actually at C0. Um, th this is definitely real code. We, we got the architecture right. It might not be ARM v7, but that doesn't matter too much. Um, it actually looks like it's in thumb mode. Uh, it's actually thumb v2. So we have thumb v2 here. It's definitely little endian. So maybe we just got lucky. I did see a lot of the E0 prefixes, which I just assumed was uh, going to be uh, little endian arm. Oh. What is thumb mode? Thumb mode is basically where you use two bit or two bytes. Uh, per uh, instruction rather than four. 
It's basically a, a reduced instruction encoding format that cuts down on the size of code. That's it. Um, and then thumb v2 adds support for four byte variants, where you'll see a couple instructions in here will actually be four bytes long. All right. Can you decrease the video? Um, sure. Um, really cheap ARM processor will only support thumb. Yeah. And there's a chance this is only thumb. Not 100% sure. Um, but, um, I'm basically looking to see where we're loaded at. I'm going to guess we're actually loaded at C0 and not 8. Um, it's hard to say. There are some Fs in here, but there's definitely more Cs. I'd imagine that F is uh, probably some device space. Um, um, this alignment doesn't make much sense, to be honest. Um, oops. Stop. Stop. Uh, clear those. Um, 5B doesn't make much sense. 0, 3. Are these instructions... Um, like, is this the reset vector? I don't think so. Hmm. Um, I would imagine they would directly map in I would expect to see, like, reset vectors. That's kind of what I'm looking for. Definitely a lot of C references. And the, the way that we... It's actually really easy on ARM because these C references are coming from data in this function. So this is basically doing a relative addressing mode um, where it's, like, looking up these addresses and reading uh, off of those. And the ranges here look a lot wider than a device range. Uh, this actually looks like we, hmm, yeah, all right, uh, I think we're definitely loaded at C0, but that might be where we get decompressed to, it's, it's hard to say, so we're gonna rebase this if we can, uh, I think we can, um, <clears throat> is there a good way to do that, it's gotta be, there's gotta be a way, right, yeah, um, let's see. Okay, done. Um, and then we'll rerun this analysis. It might pick up more stuff now. Hmm. I don't know where the entry point is. God, on what? Like... Like, that looks like a big Indian address, but I don't know. I, I think it's safe to say it's little Indian. There's just, those functions were, were too good. All right. Um... Basically, what we're trying to do is we are trying to find, um, we are trying to find where the decompression occurs, and um, this looks like it could be decompression. Ah. Uh, Oh man. Um No. 
Ooh. Look at that switch. I think we... I think we are loaded at eight, eight, 800. I think we are loaded at 8. We're loaded at 8, and RAM is at C0. That is going to be my final answer. Um, we're going to move us back to 8, I think. Um... And then we're going to mark the flash as non-writable. And then I bet RAM... I bet the RAM is at uh, C0. Hmm. And what's going on here? Switches. Um. Oh, are we loaded at zero? Yes, we're loaded at zero, dude. Now, we might be aliased, um, actually. So we might actually be present in multiple locations. But here is my theory. This is going to be an address to a function. Um, this is an address to the reset vector function. And this will basically be the entry point of the program. And then it would make a lot more sense. Actually... Yeah, let's see here. Um, let's make this a pointer. Ooh. Uh, that would make sense on Little Indian. Fuck. Um. Let's, uh. Okay. Let's imagine this is only thumb. We're going to load it at zero. And we're going to say it is arm, uh, arm little V5T. So only thumb and little ending. And load it at zero. Here we go. So I don't really understand arm, but sometimes their instructions... Um... Sometimes they're instructions and sometimes they're addresses, and I, I don't really understand when which is which. <laughs> um, hmm. They look like instructions because these are all knops, and it looks like basically a fall through. Um, and then eventually we'll probably get, hmm, I don't know. That doesn't look 100% right. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, and that looks like garbage. It's not Big Endian, is it? I don't know. These functions are just too, too good. Thumb also it can be hard to look at, but like... Hmm. Well, this is that. Uh, P of R4. Uh, let's uh, mark that. Um, we're writing things to that. I don't know. It, it's like... A... This just, this looks too real. Where else is their code? Let's, uh, let's see what it found for functions. I need to basically find that, uh, these. Mmm. Yeah, I mean, these look right. It does look like thumb. Like... I just don't understand where the reset vectors are. Now, the reset vectors might be coded to a different location, to be honest. 
Um, something like 20% of the U32 space is valid arm. That sounds about right. Um, I would like to know kind of where the entry point is. Uh, um, unless they have like a, a custom loader and there's an address in here. If they're high vectors, software sets them up typically, yeah. Yeah, that's why I'd expect the low vectors to kind of exist. I mean, let's just, let's consider this an address. Ah, it's not, though. Um, hmm. These being knobs, like, make sense. Huh. Um. If there's a boot ROM, it could be mapped or the vectors. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm curious about. Um. So, like, this is a very interesting address to me, right? Let's go to F813. Okay, there's nothing there. Um... Uh, I wouldn't expect C. Hmm. Hmm. I just don't know where the entry point is. Let's imagine uh, 26FB. Yeah, that's not even data anyway, so it's definitely not... I mean, like... That's just garbage. Um, ah, fuck, dude. Like... Unless it literally does a software interrupt. What is this? No. Hmm. I don't think it's big ending. But like this is, I think this is just garbage, but it still looks reasonable-ish. Even though I'm pretty sure that's just garbage. Um, hmm. Four six F F O three. Let's go to four six F F O two. Is it Big Endian? Let's fucking try it, chat. Sometimes you just gotta try things. We're gonna say, since Gager seems to be honestly pretty good about uh, Endianness, or sorry, about Thumbness, we'll just say it's Big Endian Arm V7. And I also am pretty convinced that it's actually loaded at 8, at least for the flash. Okay. Because then that. These might be aliased, maybe. Uh, it's hard to say. Ooh, did that find, like, fucking nothing? Mm. 
Yeah, but I found nothing. Um, disassemble. Uh, okay, let's try this thumb. Let's, uh, one last try, we're gonna try it as a uh, big Indian thumb. But I do, it looks more little Indian, to be honest. Uh, V5T big. Let's go. Okay, this looks good. This looks very good. Uh, yes, sirree, Bob, we did it. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. And it's gonna fall through. Um, this looks so much better. And we said thumb only. We said software interrupt. Does it just start executing right here? Yeah, this is just code. Um, this is an v 5 t Big Indian arm v 5 t Um, let's see. Is this is this a decompression function? <clears throat> Ooh, I don't like that, Blix. I don't like that, Blix. Ah, I don't know, man. Like, these ands look pretty good for an entry, but... Let's take a look at this. No, that wouldn't make sense. And the same as me with Little Indian? Really? A seven E, yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, maybe there's more Little Indian. The reset vectors look better, Big Indian, but uh, I think there's less actually going on. Uh, you said ARM V4T? I'm going to do V5T. Didn't we do this before, though? I don't think V4 and V5 are really any different for thumb. Yeah, it's the BLPL. And that's just, that just makes no sense. 265B. And that makes no sense either. It, it shouldn't really matter. The, the, like, the ARM version just really shouldn't matter. Like, we'll try it, but. I don't think I've ever seen a situation where that really fucking matters. Um, let's try V4, we'll try V4T big. Okay. Oh. Well, I guess it's a bit different. Uh, it's pretty much the same. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. Yeah, it's it's the same. Yeah, that's what I would expect. Like, there's just seriously, there's just like really no difference between um the versions of ARM until like ARM V8. Um,
man, it's like fucking tough, dude. Like, all those knobs kind of make sense to me, in my opinion, uh, but it falls through to nothing. So that's very confusing. Not really a reset vector, not an address. This one looks like an address, but uh, 46 ff 3 uh, I mean, um... I just know, dude. Like, what the fuck? Let's take a let's uh, XXD it a bit more. Um, like this definitely looks like a big Indian address. So does this. Could be a flag, though. Um, Unless this is like a special region. Uh, zero dot flash. Um, is this where the code starts? Because this is where there are strings referencing compression. Maybe this is where the code is actually, where the code actually starts. And everything before here is just like flash. Is there any reference to that? What is that like 20,000 20, hex? A bunch of stuff not used, and then, bam, it starts being used on a clean address line. Uh, 20,000 hex. I could see that being where shit is programmed or loaded or set up. Because this looks a lot more like code. Some strings. And then nothing. And then this is probably going to be high entropy compressed data. Yeah, this is probably the com maybe the compressed data. And then this is the decompressor. Oh, YOLO. Say, uh, I'm gonna assume it's thumb for now, but we might get punished for that. Okay. Oh. Are those big Indian arm instructions? Are those big Indian arm instructions? Um, yeah, those look like big Indian arm instructions. We're just, we're gonna YOLO it. They look like big Indian arm instructions. I don't know if they are. We're just making a guess.
Let's fucking go. I'm about to hit a D. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I meant little Indian actually. I didn't mean big Indian. I'm totally wrong. I mean little Indian. It, it, like actually, uh, I just literally fucking read it wrong. Um, little Indian arm V7. Let's go. This is gonna be, this is the one right here. It's pretty fucking obvious that this is the one. Here we go, yup. There we go. Little Indian arm, it's all of the E's and then I just literally read the Indian this wrong. A branch and link to here, this is setting up the coprocessor stuff, initializing coprocessor. This is a branch and link, so this is like setting up some temporary shit, maybe initializing hardware. Uh, so somewhere in here, it's gonna go... Yep, here we go, this is gonna branch to an- this is an indirect branch to this? Uh, and maybe that's where, like, shit gets loaded. Maybe things get loaded at that address, um, by that point, so that's probably, like, the exit point, um... So, my guess, basically, this is probably setting up the processor, setting up the modes. This is... Um, I'm not convinced that this would be compression. There are a bunch of shifts, but it, if else, I'm looking for something where it basically does a lot of bit arithmetic. This like maybe could be compression or decompression, but I'm not feeling it. Setting up more processor stuff, so I don't think it's decompression. More processor initialization. Uh, and then this is a mem copy. This is just f fucking straight up mem copy. Um, with fixed addresses. Okay, so this is like some maybe relocating stuff into RAM. Um, and my guess is that this is like where it's gonna be decompressed to. Like one of the, one of these. Wh where's it reading from? It's reading from P of R one here, which is this, which is this address. Um, and that's kind of slightly after uh, two oh seven F zero. Okay, not 100% sure yet what that's doing. That's fine. We're just cursory. Looking for something obvious right now. Um, nothing too crazy there. Not a big deal. Not too worried about it yet. Let's go look at this. More processor initialization. And this is branching uh, to whatever this reference is, which is here. It stores a value in R1 and then branches to here. I think things have been copied at this point. And that's a, um, that's an absolute jump. Right? Yeah, that's an absolute jump. I think we are loaded at zero here. Huh. So we definitely have like a copy going on. Oh, what? Wait, 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 wait. What is that? This is like, let's just start naming shit. Uh, initialize coproc. We're not gonna name these things too thoroughly because we're probably gonna have to make a new IDB when we figure out how things are actually oriented in memory. Um, Uh, C0, this is storing stuff to RAM. So this could maybe be decompression here. This is doing the most operations with memory. Uh, not 100% sure yet. Okay, so those are the same things twice. This is more like more coproc shit. Um, and that's pretty straightforward. And then this one is like... 
IDK probably mem copy. Let's see. What is it doing? It's getting a. Uh, uh, let's uh, fix this up a bunch. Let's say non writable. There we go. Okay, so. We are doing a copy from 3A. And we got a clean reference there. We're doing a copy from 3A to 3A374. And we're copying from this F area. Reading that. Storing to P of R2. Why are we reading from RAM? Is this like a hot reboot? Or something? Ass to ass to ass to butt. Yeah, that was my Wi-Fi password. <laughs> it's been my Wi-Fi password for like a decade. Why don't you set highlight on click? I don't think there's an option for it. Is there? I just manually uh, mark things when I need to, right? Um, so I've never found that option because there should be an option for it because it's fucking unusable without that. It's like one of the biggest problems in uh, Ghidra, in my opinion. Um, Puvar three, reading from that. Unless we're loaded at F, maybe maybe the flash is at F. And then we're loading from flash. We're going to put ourselves at F, chat. Oh, fuck. We can just relocate it, to be honest. Relocations in Ghidra work pretty well. I often don't trust tools to do relocations quite well, but uh, Ghidra does them okay. Let's put ourselves at F. Can we get an F in chat? Um, okay. So here we go. Uh, oops. F O O. Uh, one less O. There we go. Um, everything look better now. Okay, that's still initializing coprocessor. This is. This is storing stuff to C zero, which we have determined is likely RAM. So, oh, you know what? Is this doing like DRAM timing? Maybe. I don't know, probably not. There's probably not DRAM timing on this, to be honest. Uh, then it's like reinitialize coprocessor stuff, more coprocessor shit, and then a mem copy style thing. And this is now, in the way that we put it now, it is reading from uh, this, this 27F0 and beyond. And it is copying that into 3A. See, that makes no sense, because we think RAM is at C. Maybe RAM is at zero, in which case this would be copying stuff to RAM. We jump to this F0 shit, more coprocessor. Uh, bad data, is this conditional? No, that's a little sus. Um, whoa, that's jumping to 3A. Yeah, I think we are at F. I think this branch to 3A02F, that is the entry point to the actual, the real code. Is it just mem copied? Uh, edit, tool options, listing fields, uh, cursor text highlights, um, mouse button to left. Thank God, that's so good. Oh, oh, Ghidra is usable now. Yay. I still have these bound to my mouse, which is really nice. The like other highlight. So you can highlight multiple things and they get different colors. It's kind of nice. Even though some of the colors are too similar. I don't know. This looks like a mem copy. This looks like a branch. And then this looks like we're. Why does that show up differently sometimes? All bad data. Pomp PC. Oh, 
Like, oh, maybe that's Ram. Okay. Um, pretty sure it's in the documentation for Ghidra, and as I say, it's been in development for a long time. Ghidra has. Do wild true. Oh, fuck off. You're being stupid, uh, Ghidra. Um. C0 definitely MMIO regs. Well, let's see. Um, it's hard to say. Do while. Why does it think it's unconditional? Loading F. R2. I, I feel like Geeter should not think this is, uh, whatever. We'll just, uh, we'll do this. Oh, he put that at the wrong address. No, he just didn't make it big enough. Um, shit. Um, yeah, let's just make that bigger. Delete, yes. Okay, vault will read right. Um, yeah, yeah, it's definitely MMIO due to that, right? Because it's, it's looping without writing to something. Um, nice. That looks pretty good. We, we just marked the whole C range as, uh, volatile and, yeah, and now it's very happy about that. So that makes sense. Um, it's basically looping. The other value is constant, which makes sense because we say the flash is constant, which is not necessarily true, but it's likely true. Um, and it's just waiting for that thing to be less than something. Okay. So that looks really good. And then this makes sense. Yeah, maybe this is programming uh, DRAM timings, like actually. That would make sense to me. Okay, initialize coprocessor here. Here we have some like setting up. I'm just gonna call this DRAM timing, even though it's probably not DRAM timing. I'm calling it that so I don't look at it again. More coprocessor shit, and then this we're going to go to IDK probably mem copy, where this does like a mem copy like thing. Um, oh, this is um, this is probably clearing i caches. Yeah, that's probably clearing iCaches. Because it copied code. That that would be my guess. Um, I don't know what's going on here though. We say thumb v70. What processor did we say here? I'm curious if these are valid instructions just in a different mode. Um, because otherwise we're just going to crash when we get there. So I'm very confused so far. Be any Bixler. But yeah, I'm guessing that's clearing iCaches. Oh. So, okay. What the fuck? So if I click on this... 
if I click on that, it's branched to this location, which this, it, it makes sense uh, for decompression, in my opinion. Why do I go to a different address when I click on this? Where do I fucking go? 3A302E. And then when I jump here, 207AC. It, ah, fuck. Is it due to the relocation shit? Because we, we literally go to a different address in each. Piece of shit. Dude, I don't, I don't know which one is true, but this one looks accurate. The, it looks like it probably decompresses a payload, and then it branches to an, this address, right? Branches indirect to this address, and it does that with a, a BX, uh, not a link. So this is the fucking end of this program. So uh, let's, uh, let's do this. Okay. Um, you'll find that I like creating new databases a lot. Um, because often it just works out better. We're going to say this is a V5T little endian. We're going to say that this is loaded at F. We're going to say that this is flash. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make all of our memory regions. We're not going to analyze it. That is really important that we don't analyze it. We're going to go to memory map. We're going to say that that is not writable. We're going to say that uh, MMIO space. We're going to put this at C for 1, one 2, 3, 4, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. And we're going to say this is volatile read writes. And now we, were, we will um, F this and D. And now we'll analyze. OK. Coprocessor shit, and then it makes sense that this is the end, right? We're, we're copying into RAM. Uh, this is then going to flush instruction caches because we just created new code, and then this is going to branch to it. So that is what we need to do. Um, let's see. What is this? Um, I want to do this one more time. I, well, I, if I can figure out. Uh, how much RAM there is on this? If I can figure out how much RAM there is, then I can make a RAM region as well, and then we're and then we're fucking booking it. Okay, um, let's go to uh, Micron Seven EM One Seven. Um. Seven EM one seven. Good sheets. Okay, maybe it's the next line. Probably not. D nine R D nine R Z H. That doesn't seem right. Ooh. Ooh, is the MT. Is the MT implied? Um, MT7 EM1, uh, MT7 EM17. Fuck. Come on, dude. This is close. 7H. I I just need to know how big this fucking chip is. 7EM17D9RZH. Is it it's definitely a micron chip.
Is it this? I mean, that's just so weird. Um, where is the decoder thingy? Um, am I missing it? Ooh, pretty. Decoder. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. What? What? Because there's one more code on here, but it's at a weird angle. Oh, I see. Uh, FVGA code. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. D9RZH. And then the part number, I guess. Okay, nice. Wow. I think we had it, didn't we? Very close. Yeah. Cool. I didn't know they had to look up for that. But yeah, we did actually had the right data sheet. Fucking sick. Easy, dude. Okay, um, DRAM. Okay, so we have saved that, and it is one gigabit. Um, how the fuck do I know which one it is? It's this one. Just say this. Um, DRAM info.txt and uh, uh, DRAM model is this. Okay, and I'm just saving that. Get status, get add uh, hardware info, get status. All right, so now that has been added. Um, Eight megs times 16 times eight banks. So eight times 16 times eight is 1024. Um, and so this is uh, a gigabit. Is that, is that 1,048,000? Is that what that is? I'd imagine so. I would imagine so, right? Is this exactly 131.072, well, I guess times 1024. Is this, uh, is this 128 megabytes, Me mebibytes, to be explicit, because that fucking matters. I would imagine so. Like, literally exactly 128 M I B, not M B, but M I B. There's a big fucking difference. But given it is all binary stuff and banked, uh, it'll definitely be M I B. Okay, so we're gonna kill this. Kill this. Okay, here we go. This is the one. Uh, what are we doing? Arm V. What are we doing? Thumb. What are we doing? Thumb. I can't remember. We're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna say it's thumb. I think so. Uh, we're gonna say this is uh, flash loaded at F. Okay, here we go. Here we go, chat. This is the last time that we open this up in, in Ghidra. We don't analyze it. And then we are going to say memory map, non-writable flash. We're gonna say that we have RAM located at zero and the length is 8001234. That's 128 megabytes. 
read writable and executable, bam, uninitialized. And then we have uh, MMIO. We don't know the size of this. It is at C. One, one, two, three, four. We're going to say read write and volatile. OK, save. So, uh, whoops. This disassemble. Um, we said thumb, didn't we? We said thumb, and this is. I mean, it seems to be fine, but I don't know if we want to say thumb. I guess maybe Giedert is both, to be honest. Not 100% sure. But anyways, we should have uh, we should have RAM and all, all of that shit. So we should be good now. So I don't know how we get here. I don't know how we jump to this location. Uh, but I don't give a shit. Uh, so we're going to make this into a function. Um, this branches to there. But this also branches. Oh, nice. It has... Yeah, so that branch is there. Okay, so this looks good. Analyze. Oh, yeah, and it's definitely using thumb. So we said V5T, I think. It's finding a lot of stuff, which is good. Good, 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 good fucking job, chat. Okay, um... This is probably going to be our official database now. I am pretty comfortable. We have everything. So we're going to say initialize uh, coproc. Uh, this we're going to say, like, I don't know, uh, maybe a DRAM timing programming. Um, then this one is uh, more coproc. Coproc stuff. Once again, setting up the processor. When you see a lot of coprocessor stuff, you know that you're probably in like an entry point or uh, like an interrupt handler. Load a thing into R0, MSR that, and then, oh, we'd load the stack. So this is the, is this the address of the stack? Hmm. MSR, subtract four, and move that as the stack. Um, so this needs to be a valid address, and it's not. Um. Hmm. And that starts using the stack. So this is all written in assembly. You can tell it's written in assembly because there's no no use of the stack. Um So this loads like an early stack at this E range. And then we load another stack. I'm curious. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck this would be. Might be mirrors. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Well, so basically, we we are going to copy. We're gonna copy this and beyond to a three A address in RAM. Um, and this is just a mem copy. We're not copying that much, to be honest. But we are copying those. This is probably, uh, pr this is like probably flushing cache, right? Because we're about to jump into uh, a 3A302F. And if we look, is that in the range of what we just copied? Yes. Uh, 3A302F, it's inside of here. So we're, we're, Clearly copying uh, data from flash into RAM, right? 
and then we branch into it. And I would imagine that's where the decompression happens. So I don't know why we do a copy first, but basically we set that up. Or in the, in, or in the code processor, MMU turns on. I highly doubt they have an MMU, but may, may, maybe. I can't say I care too much. All I care about is the, the main places where data is stored. Obviously, this is copying to RAM or some, some form of writable memory that's also executable. So, um, yup. Um, okay. So what we're gonna do is, um, we're gonna we're gonna do this mem copy, right? Um, and to do this mem copy, we're gonna go into canon uh, firmware dumps. DDIF is canon this. OF is uh, RAM first copy dot bin. Uh, block size is one. Count is equal to, uh, I guess the subtraction of these two addresses. So let me see. Python hex that minus, I'm just doing it on another screen, x3a1234. This is 1,464 bytes. And then, uh, what is it, skip? Um, do I want to use skip or offset? I always fucking forget. ox207f0, uh, 133.104. Okay, so this, Oops. So this should basically be, um, that should be the data that we see at 3A, sorry, uh, at here, F0, 0, 0, D, 2D, E9, blah, blah, blah. And then it's copied all the way down to here where it's 3A74. Yeah, 3A74 is the size of the copy. And then what we're going to do is we are going to load that into memory. So to do that, we are going to split this region. Um, we're going to say that the new block starts at... Um, let's get that open here. Uh, split this. And we'll say 3A1234. So this is where it's going to be copied. So this is like first copy. Bam. Um, and then we're going to split this. And we'll say that the start address of this is at 3A, 3A74. Right? So, more RAM. Okay. Now, um... Okay, so we should be able to now just delete that region. And so we should have basically RAM to 39FFF, which is good. And then 3 or 374, we have more RAM, which is RWX. And then what we're going to do is add uh, file bytes. Okay, we'll just um, add the program, RAM first copy, raw binary. And then we will say this is at 3A1234. Uh, and this is the uh, first copy. I, I, I don't know what this is yet, but fuck it. Uh, and then we'll say it's RWX, just so it doesn't get mad. And then we should, hopefully, be able to reanalyze and pick that up. So we can now see what we're copying to is actually initialized, which is fine. And then this is now going to branch to here, uh, which this is technically code now, disassembled, blah. Fuck. Hmm. Hmm. Van Struction. Huh. Um, okay, what? 
Um, FO, FO 2D9 is obviously doing a mem copy. P of R2, or into P of R2, which is what we emulated. Load this. Is this an address? No. <laughs> this project is not accurate. Um, what the fuck? That's so fucking confusing. Um, I guess clearly just doing a mem copy to that. Nothing else that not, nothing else that is happening. Let me branch. This, which loads that into PC. I don't, I don't understand that. Like, hmm, that's really weird. I, like, I don't know what else it would possibly be doing. What the fuck? Um, makes no sense unless it's, unless it's a like more recent processor. The ever loving fuck. So let's just try. Let's load this as ARM V8. Give it all the all the whiz bang features. We're gonna load this to uh, 3A, one, two, three, four. Here we go. There's definitely code in there. Um, okay, and it wants to jump to this address. Yeah. Is it just my fucking processor mode? You son of a bitch. Can I change that in post? I don't know if I trust it, to be honest. Um... Just say V8 little. Uh, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Uh, just get the get out of here. All right. Um. It's definitely not ARM V8, but we're just fucking saying it is. Uh, loaded at F flash. I told you the last time was not the last time we'd do this. We'd come back for this again. And I was right, once again. No surprise there that I was right. Um, Non-writable. Then we are going to... Sweet. Import this. Oops. Um, add this to... 
3A, 1, 2, 1, 2. Mm, some copy this. Okay, bam. Memory map. Ah, yeah, it's technically writable. And then we will add something from RAM. Uh, length is 3A, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, read writable and executable. We're gonna add something that starts at 3a, 3a74, and the length is, um, I guess, 800, 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 3a, 3a74. Uh, hex that. This read write execute. Uh, more RAM. Okay, and then that's going until the end of RAM, start and end. Those look good, permissions look fine, and then we have to add MMIO. Whoops. Uh, we'll say C. Uh, I'll just say volatile. Okay, those look pretty good. Bam. Bam, 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 here we go. Disassemble this. Uh, and then let's start doing some analysis. Let's fucking go, mate. Maybe you're just not in thumb mode. I mean, I checked the thumb mode on the other database, but Whatever. All right. So this is the co uh, whoops. This is the copy, and then we branch. Oh, oh, baby, this is different. Oh, it just oh, it just resolves that we branch to there, because it's a smart cookie. That branches to here. Okay. Yep, it just it just basically slurped it all up. So here we are. Now this is in RAM. Uh, assume T mode is one. Yep, that looks good. Uh, T mode is one. And then this is oh my god, this is what we were looking at before, and we said this looks like decompression. Um, is this gonna be their decompression? This is this is advanced. Oh boy. Oh yeah, this looks like decompression for sure. Yep, here's a reference to a string. Unknown compression method. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yep, definitely compression. Okay, and this takes arguments. What are the arguments here? Um setting uh passing something to the stack that set up parameters. It's probably like a mem zero or something. Yo, it's a B zero, baby. That, my friends, is a B zero, and this is gonna be the what is this? This is the size. This is the size of shit, maybe. It's gonna B zero out this. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, oh my, oh my God, no. Is that on the stack? Oh baby. Oh fuck. <laughs> Wow, look at that stack! Holy shit! Woof da, dude! Oh my lanta! Yeah, that's definitely fucking this is a this is this is B zero, right? <laughs> Hell yeah. Fucking easy B zero. I fucking called it. It's just so obvious when you have when you have a pointer length passed to a function that early in a function, you just know it's B zero. And yep, uh, it's pretty obvious that it was. It's definitely zeroing it out with different. This is an optimized B zero too. This is this is hot. Oh look at this. Yep, 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 yep. Easiest function I've ever fucking seen in my life. You ready for this chat? Uh, bam! 
Look at that. Oh, it's writing to that. Oh, wow, it's checking if n, and then it's doing things in batches. Wow, it's b0. Yay, we did it. Okay. All right. Um... Oh, what is this? Is this gonna is this gonna be memset? No, it's not memset. The fuck, the fuck is this? Is this Malik? This is this Malik? I think this is Malik. Oh my God, is this a heap? Oh baby, that's a heap. This is this is Malik with one byte alignment requirements. Maybe? No, this is uh like re this is kind of like a a, a calic. So this is the size of a yeah 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 yeah. Uh this is a uh, early Alec, right? And this is the heap. Um, and uh, we're gonna say this is a uh, sorry. Uh, why is that not retyping it? Oh, whoops. Uh, void star star. Then this is going to be element size. And this is a number of elements. There we go. So this is a, um, this is a 16 bytes aligned allocator with a custom heap. Yay, look at that. Isn't that cool? So we take the heap, we get the heap pointer, we get the number of elements, we multiply it by the element size, we then get the address of the heap, we add 10 hex, we mask it off so it's 16 byte aligned, and then we, uh, I guess this is going to return that, right? You're going to return that, right? Right? You're going you're gonna to return that, right? Yeah, you're going to return that. Element size, wait. Um, oh yeah, 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 yep, yep, it's definitely working. Okay, so this is a, um, what? Uh, we'll just say, uh, returns a void pointer. Let's just say this is a size T and this is a size T. Gorgeous, and look at this. This is a heap, uh, Alec address. Woo! I fucking called it. <sighs> easy, dude. What an easy function. How fucking obvious. Yeah, you can see element size is one byte, so it's allocating 370 bytes. Uh, it's checking for an allocation failure. Um, well, there's never going to be an allocation failure. Uh, they probably literally call this malloc. Um, if that is equal to param2, which it is, because it, 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 because it is. Um, otherwise, we're going to set up this. So this is like setting up some fucking parameters, probably for the decompression. I would hazard... That this pvar one, let's just uh, let's have you do your thing, Ghidra. Um, here you go. Okay. Setting up these things. It's just that. It's prime two. That's definitely the decompression, I think. I don't know what this is. 
You can turn off register variable names. Thank fuck, because it's stupid. Uh... Mark up or register. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. Stupid. That's the stupidest fucking thing, dude. Um, okay. I don't know what this is. Uh, something with a structure. Oh, that's a dynamic dispatch. Gross. Gross. I don't know. Like This is definitely some like decompression stuff. This one here. Um, Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um. <sighs> Overlap smaller symbols. Okay, got some warnings. It's hard to say, but this this is definitely decompression here. Um, if it's equal to four, okay, that's not actually an address. So I'm very curious where it gets the addresses that it's using um, for the source and the destination. Um, we can also load it into Kimu and emulate it, but I would prefer not, just because that can be kind of not as fun, in my opinion. Okay. So let's just say this is decompress. So basically, I think what this is doing is this Ivar 3 tells you whether or not it's compressed or not. Um, or maybe it's if there's no errors. If there are no errors, then decompress. If there's an error there, this is probably like report an error. I'm guessing those are error reporting. Um, if otherwise, then go to here. I guess it's doing that uh, regardless. Okay. Anyways, so once this is done, um, so. That's the entry point, right? No. Um, the entry point is here. Okay, so this is, we'll just say this is RAM entry. Um, zero, like, this is what I would expect. Yeah, this is probably, yeah, here it is. This, this is the, this is the compressed data here. This is the uh, destination, maybe. Actually, is this the destination? And then is this the size? Three BF two D four. Yeah, that's like three, three three point nine megs. That seems perfect. Um, 
Yeah, I, I think that's what... Um... This goes into here. Um, while that pure one is this. Yup. Um, oh, it might also be a start and an end. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. Source, start, and finish? Then that's tiny. That's a tiny, tiny, tiny little area. Um... What is this doing? What is that doing? Um, that's getting the length, so clearly that's what that is. It's the start and end and source. And let me call this. That's a cache invalidation. Right? Yeah, that looks like cache invalidation. Store. Um. Store. Load. This is unoptimized code. Um. And that's some like MMIO, so like polling MMIO shit. Um. Fuck. Okay, so that returns out. Pop PC. So that returns out of RAM entry, which then gets to here, and then we jump into this. Okay, yeah, so this is definitely gonna do the decompression shit. So, yep, so it copies stuff to RAM, we then jump to RAM, this is doing, this is like the high level decompression, then this is shit, <laughs> um, this is basically, uh, I don't know if this is like Wi-Fi initialization or something, like, this is basically sending to an I.O. device a payload that you can find. Um, I think it's just writing the contents of this to an MMIO device. Like, these are like... And it copies how many bytes? 2D4 bytes. 
Well, we don't know it copies. These look like reset vectors. Like, those are a bunch of knobs. This is like patch code. Uh, and how big was that? Two two seven C or something? Two D four. So here's two D four. That's the end. Um. It's not encrypted, is it? There's no way. There's no way it's encrypted. The entropy's too low. Um, this is doing something, and I, I don't 100% know what it is, but this is this is the decompression. So we need to basically figure out where uh, it's decompressing things. So storing... to F1025. Load this. Um, I'm guessing there's an alias there, and F0025000. This is also... Yeah, this... I think that's it right there. Um, uh, let's make notes. Okay, we're gonna say uh, probably compressed data starts at OX25000. That is my guess. So my guess is that the F1 range is like maybe an uncached version of flash or mirrored. Um, it's just too, it's too coincidental, in my opinion, that this flash is unused, and then it starts immediately being used exactly at this very clean boundary. Um, I think that is the start of compressed memory. This might be the size. Um, size maybe OX3, C3, 318 bytes, something like that. Uh, and then this is probably the destination. Um, okay. So, um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to add, uh, an alias here. This. And F1. Flash alias. Okay. Done. And then we are going to mark that as non-writable. Then we'll reanalyze. So in, in my opinion, what this is doing is setting up a structure. Um, Probably like a, a source and a length, maybe. So this is getting LDR18, yup. And then it stores that. So there's the same thing twice. So it stores the same thing twice, and then we have a zero. And what's this? Um, we've got this. 360, 3 on 8, and then we subtract off this, which is 0. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a big uh, risk here. It hopefully won't fuck anything up. We're going to say that the, uh, the sum copy is non-writable, even though it is in RAM. Okay, that is a lot better. So uh, basically, 
Um... So we have we have like an address, right? We have an address that's a very clean address and likely likely the start of compressed memory. What? While it's less than four. Like, read volatile for loan that store load. I'm curious if this is actually an MMI, MMIO space. Pair with zero, if it's equal to zero. I mean, yeah, it is sourcing it from there. Store load and well, it's loading this and then an offset. Yeah. Um I'm very scared. I don't like seeing potential MMIO operations happening around decompression. That's really scary to me. Um, hopefully that's unrelated and we can just ignore it. 6C318, we've seen that pop up again. Are these like blocks? Yeah, these are blocks. While it's less than four, and then if it's equal to four, then it's 6318, local 2C. And then that maybe is the address and the end. I feel like what this is doing, we saw a 3C6, a 36C318. And I am very curious if this is going to iterate for the first chunks, right? Uh, yeah, where this is basically 100,000. That will get us technically to 400,000, which is confusing if it goes up to four. But on the fourth one, then it does this remainder. And it feels like the, com the, like the decompression stuff is like literally baked in. What, what, what is this? This actually calls the decompression. Um, what's this? Uh, that is uh, cache invalidation likely. Maybe it's just setting up, oh, maybe this is setting up permissions on like, um, maybe it's not, um, yeah, this is probably setting up a temporary mapping in like an MCU, like a memory controller, not, not, uh, um, or like an MPU, sorry, like a memory protection unit, where maybe you can have like eight ranges, and this might be programming or like activating those ranges. Uh, and like these are probably the permissions and stuff. That would be my guess, but we can probably fudge all of the numbers um, of the addresses because we're just gonna assume like the top couple nibbles of an address are just whatever. Uh, but that is my strongest interpretation of this right now is that this basically is gonna, uh, is gonna decompress, um, like, it's gonna decompress from this location in the flash, and it's going to decompress uh, basically in chunks, and my guess is it is gonna do it in one meg chunks, because that's what these probably map to. Like, these probably map one meg regions, and that's why we see, what is that, 100, uh, is that one meg? Is that 32 megs? No, that's one meg. So we have one meg right here. 
And then here it's probably like waiting for like writes to complete or like this is probably um 24. I would imagine they like unmap it and here they're like waiting for the unmapping to complete or some shit. Like I I don't know. I, I'm reading between the lines, but that would be my strongest guess. I'm just probably doing alignment stuff. And then we finish it off and we book the last 3C318 or 6C318. So maybe it is a 4 6C318 because we do four iterations of one meg. And then we do one iteration of this 6C318. Um, and this is maybe where it's being mapped to. Yeah, look at the 183. And then here we see like 183 being used. Um, I don't know if that's actually where it's being loaded, but I would imagine that is like, there's a 1.8 here. Um, chunk, while true, do, uvar, right? Uh, so let's say uvar gets to four. It must be pre-indexed. If it's not equal to zero, then go to the next one. Like, this is basically at my, my, here's my guess. This is decompressing the memory that is present at local eight, uh, local 18, which is coupled into local 20, which is aligned. So this is just, uh, aligning the size up or some shit. What, what is doing some alignments. And then... 2C, that is the length. So this is like the destination to decompress to. This is a pointer to the length, which probably at the end actually has the true length or something, but they just don't use it. Local 34, this is going to be probably the address where the... Um, this is maybe where it can like read the local 28 zero flat zero local 28 Move that um local 44 local 28 it's equal to p of r3 which is equal to local 20 which is the I think it, I think it is doing 360318. The first iteration of this is like a run iteration where it doesn't do anything uh, because this is zero. So this is zero. It does one iteration. And then after that iteration, it's actually updated P of R3, which is the same as local 20, which is the source of the decompressed data. Um, so I'm pretty sure, like, basically it's going, like, see, this... If uvar4 is not equal to zero, and we know that uvar4 starts off as zero initially until the next iteration, and that would line up with when we saw um, this 36, 36C318. My guess, this is the source of the compressed data. 36C318 is the length of the compressed data, or maybe decompressed, I don't know. Uh, this loops four times, but the first time it doesn't actually do decompression. The second time it comes around, local 28, which is the final arg, is actually the address of the uh, data, and it gets updated every time in like a weird post indexy way. Local 34 is, I don't fucking know, maybe the destination, like scratch memory, where to like fill it in. I, I, don't, I don't know yet. Uh, and then, like, actually, I think this is the destination and this is the length. And then that would make sense because this iterates four times, but the first time it does nothing. So this does three iterations of one meg each. And then we do one iteration of 6C318, which totals 36C318, which lines up with the number that we saw before. That is my hypothesis. So um, basically, with that hypothesis, um, Let's see. Um, it, 
yeah, I, th I think that's it. <laughs> like, I think this is like the uh, com uh, decompress outputs. This is like the maybe uh, compressed length. Yeah, it's definitely the compressed length. This is the unknown. And then this is the uh, like uh, uh, compressed data. Um, yep. If it's equal, so if we're decompressing exactly uh, the compressed length, um, which is weird because we just assign that and then it's always equal. I, um, it's probably due to some looping or something. Or like, honestly, this this compiler does not look, uh, or this output doesn't look optimized. Um, so I'm curious if there's just going to be some weird stuff going on here. Set up unknown uh, compressed data, decompress output. We do that early allocation here of 370 hex bytes. That's clearly some sort of con control structure. It's it's maybe like some custom. Uh, it's maybe just like gzip, where it's like setting up a structure to like a compression algorithm. Not 100% sure. And then we call decompress. We pass our reference to 88 on the stack, which is going to be deeper up on the stack, which means 88, it's going to have unknown compressed data, uh, kind of a bunch of different miscellaneous things. Um, so this is basically passing in that structure. This is maybe doing a free or something, I, I don't know. It's doing something with it. If it's equal to one, otherwise do this. I, I, I would imagine this is just gonna do the decompression and it we don't literally care about like the ramifications of the other shit. Uh, we have a switch going on here. We're gonna read in param one. Um, if it's equal to... Uh, if it's equal to null, then we have a, a problem. Otherwise, get param one seven, a uh, uh, double deref. So that's the seventh argument. Um, if that's equal to zero, then return an error. Um, and that's just like negative two. Um, then we get these other things out of this parameter structure. And let's see if there are any function calls in here. They are. We have a function call here, which is probably doing like an endian swap or... Ooh, is this mem copy? This is mem copy. I'm pretty sure. Uh, let's look at the end. I think this is mem copy. I'm not 100% confident yet, but we'll think about that. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, we should be able, I think. Hmm. Um. Maybe it's not necessarily mem copy. Uh, prim three. If it's equal to one, then we do some oring stuff. Okay. Um. Yeah. This is definitely some like compression helper. It's not mem copy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's fine. Um, is everything in here standalone? If it is, then we can uh, just port this to C and we will be fine. Unknown compression method. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't like the use of like kind of these magical pointers. Um, what's this? It takes a lot more args. Ah, oh, what is this shit, man? Whoa, no, 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 no. No way, dude. The fuck is that? What is this like dynamic dispatch shit?
That's fucking dumb. Um... Literal and lang set, code length. Uh, invalid literal and length code. Um, before it's plain zip. This is honestly like pretty complex. Um, Like, I'm basically trying to figure out if this is intentionally obfuscated or not. Let's see. Let's grab one of these magical constants right here. Let's grab this. Let's Google it. Oh, uh, that's a bit manipulation. Okay. Um... Like, this stuff all makes sense. This looks like standard decompression stuff. It's where there's, like, the fucking dynamic dispatch that is very strange to me. Um, this is basically just hacker's delight here. If case one, if case zero. Maybe we're just case zero. <laughs> um, let's see, where's that coming for? Uh, P of R 33, one, which is coming off param seven. Um, and, hmm, I can't believe it supports, like, multiple di different decompression formats. Th this seems, like, so fucking overkill for a, like, little embedded device. Uh, obviously, they just, like, bought this code and used it. It's, pro it's probably some like RTOS just provides this shit or some like uh, common bootloader. Unless this thing's like running fucking Linux and we're literally reversing grub right now. But param1, uh, let's look at what these dynamic dispatch looks like. Um, let's create a structure here. And we want to see uh, param3. Yeah, param3 is like a function pointer. Let's see. Uh, oops. Let's see if param3 is a function pointer. P of r3. A uh, null. A P of r3. Sometimes it's null. Sometimes it's one. Uh, 370 there. Else this. Um, we can technically hit either of those cases. I of r has to be zero, which means we have to go through this case. Which means P of R is going to actually get set on one of these. It'll get set either to four or to one. And then this param three. Oh, this condition has to happen. Param one, uh, 24 hex. Um, yeah, maybe it is Zlib. I don't know. That would be fun. Uh, 24, 24, Pram one twenty four. I don't think it's Zlib though, to be honest. Um, if it is Zlib, it's in some scuffed ass encoding mode. All right. We want 24 hex off of this. 24 hex. Um, this is currently, we're just going to say this is a size T8. Uh, did I say 24 hex? I think so. Divided by 4 uh, is 9. Let's make this even bigger. Let's go to, uh, let's go to 10. Hopefully that doesn't fuck anything up. Now we're looking at what sets 9 on that, and it is this, early alloc. Wait, no, this. This. Return. It's just an empty return. 
The strings point to inflate. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's just literally gzip, in, in which case we can uh, decompress it pretty easily. Um, but yeah, so we have an early allocator here. So we basically are we're passing in things here. We're passing in an early allocator. We're passing in a function. This is probably the error function. That, that's what this is. This is the error function that's being passed to uh, whatever the compression algorithm is. Um, if you haven't noticed, I'm, I'm trying to pretend like we don't know what this decompression algorithm is. Uh, once we've, if, if we like comprehensively understand what the decompression algo is, then we'll just fucking use deflate or whatever. Um, but I'm approaching this as if this is unknown, right? Did he bin walk it? We did, but w our goal is not to bin walk it, right? That's not really a, a valid, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a good skill, but it's not a hard skill to have, right? But yeah, these are basically, this is just going to dispatch to the error handler function, and then the error handling function just returns out. Um, so, um, searching for constants always helps. Yes, I'm, I'm familiar, but that's not what we're trying to do. We would have had this decompressed like five hours ago, if, if well, four hours ago, if uh, we were just trying to decompress it. But the goal is to uh, basically reverse out a bootloader that is unknown. Um, okay, so this looks good. Valid window size here. And then this will probably, if we see more dynamic dispatch, it is probably to that object. So this probably is taking an extra parameter, uh, one of these ones that like can fail or something. I'm actually, we're gonna do our, uh, we're gonna do our analysis with, um, uh, where is it, uh, decompiler parameter ID. Come on. Okay. Um, there we go. And okay, so now we should have a little bit better uh, setups here for these calls. I don't, is that actually taking all zeros to all args? Yeah, it's literally just passing zero to all args. Interesting. Okay, cool. Um, oh yeah, so this is like probably decompressed window or something like that. Nifty, 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 nifty. PV4. Okay, nine, 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 blah, 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 bunch of pointers. What the fuck are these? Oh, those are curious. Invalid block type. Yeah, these are interesting. Seven, zero, five. Huh, okay. All right, um, well, that, load up a four, deref that. These are basically mem copies. I guess that's a zero, that's fill with Fs. I guess those are mem sets actually. And then this function, seven, seven. Okay, so these have the call to 24, um, which means param1 is going to be like the, basically the, uh, what is that, local 34, that's param1. Yep, that's like the global, like, decompression structure or, or whatever. Um, 
So what we can do is, I'm trying to see how hard it would be to lift this into C. Um, this one looks a little bit rough. This is a pretty complex um, decompression. Definitely not what I was expecting. I was expecting something a lot simpler. Uh, we know that those calls to code are NOPs, but we might need to type some of these things a bit more. Um, yeah, let's, let's make these things a little bit stronger on types. So, undefined, saving the stack. Hmm. What's an undefined two? Is that two bytes? Let's see. When it accesses that, is it a two byte deref? Store half word R zero. Yeah, I think undefined two is just short. Um Let's just set that short. Um, set this to like um, 416 parameters. Those look fine. It's uh, looking at XRFs on another screen. Okay, sweet. Much better. There we go. So there are multiple calls to this function uh, with slightly different like constant flags. So we'll just say decompress internal. We'll just keep naming shit. We're gonna try to, okay, so this is just straight decompress. Um, this is clearly a like decompression structure. All right, uh, undefined P of R4. Basically looking to see where these things are used and how they're being used. Uh, looks like we can just say an undefined, I'm guessing, is just the same as an int. I guess an int pointer. We could probably even use a void pointer here. Okay. Um, three a three. Didn't we mark those as? I guess it's using a reference to that. Three three a four. Hmm. Prem one. What's the deepest we've seen on that structure? Like 10 hex, or uh, I guess we see a C here. I don't know how big to make this structure, or even if I need to make this a structure, to be honest, which will be kind of interesting. Um, And then this is going to go, and this is probably going to do the dynamic dispatch thing to report the error or some shit. Maybe some cleanup stuff. Uh, go to here. Uh, calls this. Hmm. Huh. Basically, there are always a couple options on the table. We can either write this code in C and then just run it and decompress it ourselves. Uh, or we can run the, the binary through an emulator. Um, and that would allow us to just kind of dump the decompressed firmware after it's done being decompressed. And the third option is we can go and basically just you know find whatever like inflate code that this is. Uh, and use that to actually do the decompression as well. So there are kind of a couple different ways that we can go about it. Um, 
I don't know what's interesting to people. Um, the emulator's gonna take a lot of time, to be honest, uh, because we would have to basically knock out all of the device accesses or all the MMIO accesses, which isn't terrible. Um, the C version would be tough. We'd have to really clean up this database to get this to compile. It would probably take like four hours to get that to work, which honestly is not too bad. Um, but we would basically copy and paste this code directly into, uh, uh, like Vim, and we would just start fixing it up, and then we would literally build this decompiled version of code, um, and then use that to actually basically build a decompressor using the exact logic that they're using. Um, and then obviously the last one's really straightforward, just literally use whatever decompressor you, you can find that handles this format. Um, yeah, unfortunately it doesn't look like this is a custom compression format, which I kind of wish it was, because that would be a lot more exciting, because then we would actually be forced to go down the like um, C route, which I think is a uh, really valuable skill to have, but unfortunately this one's like, this one's really fucking complex. Like, usually it takes me like, I don't know, maybe, maybe five to ten minutes to take like a shitty decompression algo and basically fix it up to the point that I can build it and use it in C. Don't rewrite this. It's not too bad. Right? It, it's, it's seriously not too bad. Like... Yeah, so, um, let's see, let me kind of show you what I mean, maybe, maybe on one function, we'll, we'll see if it escalates, so what I'm going to do is I am going to, um, I'm going to delete these RAM regions. Um, and that's gonna m basically make constants a little bit better. We're like now, uh, well, hopefully, um, fucking, come on. I want that to not be a ref to dat oh one. I want it to just be the fucking one that it actually is. Um, and unfortunately, since that was already defined, I'm curious if that will get cleaned up. Because that is pretty much just, like, inaccurate, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Um, Where is this one coming from? It's being sourced from here, and that's... <sighs> like, I... It's kind of annoying, but... This, this is kind of the shit that ends up happening when you have... Um... Can I equate that? Hmm... Yeah, I like uh, so fucking annoying, dude. Like, whenever you have something mapped in as null, uh, Ghidra basically starts fucking marking like everything in the database as a reference to memory when it's not. It's fucking so fucking stupid, dude. Like, come on, come on. Clearly, it's not checking if it's equal to the address one. Like, no. <sighs> um. Okay, let's uh, let's concretize some of these things. Pram two, fuck it. Uh, we'll make pram two. Well, bytes. Does byte deref's? Uh, you want promotion on those? Undefined pointer on a check with param three. Yeah, that makes no sense because that has. I guess uh, commit params in return. Hopefully, 
Yeah, I want that to not be an undefined pointer. Okay, so let's just see if we can get this to build. Um, bam. Okay, um, uh, GCCC decompress. So we're going to have a couple issues, but they're not too bad. Type def on signed int uint. Uh, type def uh, unsigned uh, char uh, bytes. Okay, and then dat. I'm just going to say int star one. 57. I actually don't know if that's a pointer then. Param 3. Yeah, that's not a fucking pointer. Alright, let's clean that up first. Um... There we go. Um, okay. And uh, we have some uint cast going on too, so let's just say uint. There we go. That looks better. Yeah, copy. Well, we'll see basically, uh, whoops. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Okay, undefined. Um, why does it think that's a pointer? Because it's not. Undefined F. Where is that being sourced from? Like some some comparison is clearly happening. Pram three. Um, What's your terminal emulator? I use Xterm. Um, param three, undefined. It's literally a comparison with that being undefined. So something is bubbled, but nothing is marked undefined in here anymore, right? Just those. Fuck off, then. Hmm. Oh, it's because of that? Hmm. Eh? No more undefines? Beautiful. Beautiful. We did it, chat. We made a function that looks reasonable-ish. Uh, joined R0. Label at end of compound statement. Can you not do that? Why can't why can't you do that? Oh. What? Do I Can you Can you not have a go to there? One hundred and 
and 13. Huh, I didn't know there's a limitation there. Let me see. That must, that must be like a real thing. A semicolon after the label? That's so weird. What the fuck is that? But yeah, so look at that. We were able to, literally we were able to just compile that, right? <laughs> right? So now we have that compiled. <laughs> so, like, and that has no function calls, right? Yeah? If I can, you see, you see what we're doing, dude? Um, okay. So now you have to go to whoever calls this. Uh, let's find the call site to 3A. So we've lifted 3A, but all this other shit we haven't lifted yet. So let's find, um, basically I wanna look for function calls. Um, and anything where there are function calls, I want to descend into them. So this one is done, right? Function 3A is done. That is handled and hopefully the arguments are correct, but uh, given it compiles, I think it is good. Um, let's do an analysis. We have, um, switch analysis, or parameter ID on it. Okay, good. Um, okay. So, basically, I'm trying to figure out how much shit in here is going to be a problem. So, once again, clear B, B, B. What is this? Is that a pointer to this? I guess so. Oh, these are mm, some sort of dispatchy table. These ones are going to be fucking hard. Um, what else in here is hard? Oh, decompress internal. How bad is this? Not too bad. Um, let's just set this to a void pointer. Um, we're gonna try and clean up this function. P of our three. Okay, why is that undefined? Uh, R0, we've seen this before when we had things sourcing from a weird location in memory. Hmm. That's getting the stack address of that. Eh, it seems, re seems reasonable-ish. Oh, those code pointers, though. Oh, those are gonna suck! Nobody updates commands here. It's too much work. I mean, just people aren't supposed to be using the command. <laughs> this is ultimately what it comes down to. Um... Oh man, yeah, these these ones with code are just gonna suck. Uh, fucking function pointers, dude. All right, um, I think we're not gonna go the C route. I think if this were a real target, I would go the emulation routes. Oh, I would actually probably go the decompress route. So let's um. Let's go and uh, rip that section out of the binary quick. Um, DDIF is equal to firmware dumps, uh, Canon Pixma, and then we will, uh, where did that data start? 
25,000 hex. So we'll say OF is test, block size is one, uh, skip is equal to whatever 25,000 hex is, which is this, and then count uh, is going to be whatever 36C318 is, which is this, and that's gonna take a long time. Okay, um, so we can just see, yeah, it's just Zlib. Uh, can we gun zip it? Um, yeah, um, Let's have Binwalk try to uh, decompress it. I want it to extract cat test two gzip. Yeah, it's just gonna give the same thing, dude. Yeah. Um, Uh, four. So, I don't know what 4.zlib is. Like, is, is 4 the decompress thing? Because if it is, that feels small. Like, uh, I mean, that looks good. Um, curious how much code this is going to have. Proxy authorization. The fuck is that? What is, what is, what is this? Holy shit, that's a real URL. What? The fuck is that? What is that? CIJ.com. What, what is that? <laughs> I don't know what that is, but that's a real URL with real data. Ooh. Ooh. Um. <laughs> where did we, where did I save that to? I actually don't know. We'll just, uh, did we get it here? I'm, I'm actually really curious. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, the classic, aha, mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> ah, whoo. All right, what else we got here? Um So my guess is that this would be the kernel. Um Ooh. Oh baby. Is that a monolithic kernel with JavaScript? Oh, oh, sweet. Is this where we backdoor it? <laughs> um, HTTPD. Do 
Get job status? Okay, yeah. Um... SSL Rand. Put nice name here. Put DNS name here. <laughs> Dude, they do like finding her place. <laughs> Mac address. Cool, 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 cool. Val label links, unknown format. Task scheduling error. Okay, what RTOS is this? Let's figure that out. Um, I don't know what that is. TTL, blah, blah, blah. Send ARP. <laughs> Why no questions? Chat, why no questions? Master secret label hash. Master secret. So I'm curious if this will have like the web server and all of that stuff in here. I wonder if this is like all the code on the system or if there is like a file system that has other shit. Um, because this is pretty small. Like, let's be honest, it's only one meg. It's really not that big. Um, but there's, okay, so there's more Zlib stuff. They're all, like, one meg in size. I'm actually, like, really curious. Um... This looks like garbage. Oh, it's not garbage. Oh. Itron. Okay, so this is using the Itron operating system. Cool, okay. Uh, we can actually... Meminfo, can we get a shell? IO test. Um, so we can actually get the source code to Itron. Run. Um. Um. Which means that we could basically make flirt, make flirt signatures and stuff. Um, I'm, so I'm really curious why Binwalk is, like, splitting the shit up into multiple pieces. Um, this whole thing, in my opinion, should be one big Zedlib blob. And maybe these just need to be concatenated together. Um... Um, how would I... Let me just, uh, we're just gonna. Um, so basically a test is the like compressed data dot bin, right? Um, and we can make like a decompression thing. Hit it with Python Zlib. Does it handle multi uh, parts? All, all I need to do is make sure it handles multi-part uh, Zlib. 
but let's just try it. Um, uh, decompress. Um, open compressed uh, data dot bin rb dot read. Okay, incorrect header check. Um, let's go rb dot read uh, four colon. Okay, and then let's do len on that. One meg. Ah, so are we looking at the decompress size then? I wonder if it decompresses the three C six. Hmm. Hmm. Um, I'm guessing there are just multiple zlibs, uh, basically joined together. Um, that, that's too perfect, right? That, that number is too perfect. I think it, I think decompressed, we are expecting exactly the, like, th th hex 36C318. Uh, and we basically need to decompress it, uh, kind of in that sequence. Um, and that's what it does here. It kind of decompresses it uh, a couple different times. So I am curious um, if I am off on that compressed data uh, file, compressed data, okay, xxdi, uh, vim dash. Um, do you think these are flags? Yeah, let's take a look at that. Let's leak. Let's see what they do with it. I'm guessing they have some data out front. Um, EA6F0900. Like, I don't know. I mean, this could be a size. Ooh, is that a size? Uh, how big is that? Uh, hex 096FEA. 618K. Mm, maybe that's the... <gasps> maybe that is the decompress... Uh, the compress size. Maybe it's the compress size followed by GZIP data. That's my guess. Mamma Mia Pizzeria. Let's fucking go. Uh... Okay, so we're gonna say this is three, uh, sorry, four plus six one eight four seven four. Okay, no problem. What if we say three? Hey! Hey! Whoa! Whoa! -hoo -hoo -hoo! Get fucked! We can turn the webcam on again so you can see my uh, emote. I was doing this. I was like, woo! Woo! We did it! Woo! Uh huh. Okay, so we definitely reversed out where the start of the compressed data starts. Um, fuck yeah! So reversing it actually was useful because we're gonna get better data than what we got from fucking Binwalk being stupid. Um, okay, so we're gonna do uh, decompress uh, dot pi and then uh, uh, quit. L slash firmware dumps rm firmware dumps dot zero dash swap uh, firmware dumps ram first copy. We don't need those. We just want the firmware dump and the checksum. So we're going to do uh, open this mm, uh, rb dot read uh, firmware is equal to this. So this is uh, read the entire firmware. And then we'll do import zlib. And then uh, start is equal to 25, 1, 2, 3, while, yeah. Um, decompress. Uh, offsets. Oh, can I do this? How do you, how, how do you, do you say int? Is this how you do it? How do you, how do you do typed Python? Um, offset and then data. Is it bytes? 
All right, we'll just do this. Uh, ooh, ooh, should we, should we do, um, how do you, how do you do fucking classes in Python? <laughs> classes in Python. Let's go, let's go, there we go, I had it. Uh, class firmware, and then you make like an under, under a knit, mm-hmm. Shut up, guys. Uh, and then self. Okay. Uh, and then does that take a self? Oh, mama mia. Oh, mama mia. Um, self dot, uh, the, uh, start of decompressed data, uh, Compressed data. Uh, compressed pointer is equal to 25, one, two, three. And then we can say, look at this. Uh, struct. Um, length is equal to a struct dot unpack. Uh, we want to unpack uh, unsigned 32-bit integer at self.firmware at self. Dot, um, compressed pointer colon uh, colon four zero <laughs> print length. <laughs> okay, uh, the uh, firmware is firmware. I don't know, something like that. Is is that how you is that how you do Python? Shut up, chat. I know how to do Python. This needs to take a self. Okay, okay. Um. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Okay. That's looking juicy. Uh, I don't like that. I don't like that. Uh, well, I like this more. Yes. Um, okay. Compressed is equal to uh, self dot firmware self dot compressed pointer plus four colon colon length uh read the length of the compressed payload uh get the compressed data and then we can decompress the data and then we can do gzip decompress compressed sick uh zlib Decompress is equal to this. Print len uh, decompressed. <gasps> okay, and then we can do self dot compressed pointer is equal to self dot compressed pointer plus four plus length. Uh, advance the uh, compress pointer. You're leaking a file descriptor. I don't give a shit. Um, bing 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 bing. Okay, let's just go until it fails. Oh, son of a bitch! I wonder what that is. Is that, is it the, is it the compressed length followed by the payload followed by the decompressed length? Let's take a Hmm. A. Um, oh, fuck off. 
A. Okay. Um. So that is the offset that we need to go to, and let's just hex it. Okay. X X D I on decompress. Uh, X X D I on hardware info. No. Firmware dumps. Uh, this vim dash, and then we need to go to this address. Ugh. Uh, bbfeo colon. F E. E. What? Is that true? Because the next thing is a uh, one meg. Uh, BBFEO. F. E, so that's F, that's E. How is F5020000, how is that a fucking one meg? I'm really confused. What? 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 B B F E E Hello Can I typo something? No Self the firmware What? Um, am I fucking crazy? B B F E E. And then it reads an int there, and it's one of four eight five seven six. Oh, no, 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 that's the, this length. Oh, I'm an idiot. Uh, oh, it reads this. Okay, which is garbanzo beans. Um, so what the fuck is this format then? Basically, that's the end. Okay, uh... The fuck? It's aligned. They align to the next. They align to a s four 16 byte boundary. 16 byte boundary. Let's see. Let's find it. It'll be very obvious. Um, while it's less than three, uh, somewhere there's gonna be like plus three and mod shit. Maybe not in decompress. It's gonna be it's gonna be the function that calls decompress. So let's find that. Um, guess we gotta look at xrefs. She'll call cheese. Um, yep. Fuck 
fuck is it? Is it this getting wrapped? Where is it? Show me the money. Um, where the fuck is it? I know I saw it before. Where is the function that did the loops? Oh, was it even further? Was it this one? Ah, this, maybe. Yes, here's the loops. Okay, there we go. Um, uh, four byte aligned. Four byte aligned up, so plus four minus P of R and three. Is that? If it's not equal, yeah, so it aligns up. So if it's if it's not aligned, then align it up. Four byte alignments. Okay, so we can implement that logic. If self.compressed pointer uh, and three is not equal to zero, then self. Um, honestly, like, I don't know why they're using that style. Because um, this is kind of the logic that they're implementing, but I kind of just prefer to do... Uh, self compressed uh, plus three and not three. Right. That should uh, align it up. So four bytes up align the uh, pointer. Oh, mm, nice. And then the last one is the small one. Oh, oh, baby. Is that meant to be exactly negative one? Um, they like have a hard coded length, but we know that we expect four chunks, right? One, two, three, four. Um, and then, um, I am actually really curious, though, if we can rely on that, uh, basically ending in a negative one. Um, def, uh, uh, next, decompress. It, it just, it's hard to say if that's a coincidence or not. Uh, return decompressed. So, uh, decompressed is equal to uh, bytes decompressed plus equals firmware decompress four times decompressed. All right. Um, next. Beautiful. Okay, and that is, my friends, 36C318, which is what we have been looking for this whole time. It's negative one because the data after the compressed data was all Fs. Yeah, that's that's what I'm concerned of. So I'm just gonna hard code it here. Um, there we go. That definitely decompressed all the data. Um, I don't know why they do it in one meg chunks. That's kind of interesting, but um, this is this is it. So uh, 3.5 megs. How big was our flash again? Looking at the board, it's not on the board. I guess I can literally just do this. 16 megs. So I'm curious if they're just not using all of it. Um, or they have other stuff, maybe like a file system or something. Um, but this is probably the kernel, the code, the everything. So, uh, okay. You happy, chat?
You happy? You happy now, chat? Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. All right. Um Can I sort these by, how do I sort these by fucking length? Let's just say like N, let's say N10, Vim Dash. Let's just look for the juicy ones. Should I enable BTTV? Only those two, only the best ones. Too bad. <laughs> yeah, man's involved. This is good, this is good. Oh yeah. Ooh, JavaScript. Oh CGI firmware update.cgi. Um okay. Um <laughs> yeah, I think there's probably a file system. I don't know. It's hard to say. Like, that CGI file, right? Send XML HTTP. Let's, uh, um, bin lock from our dumps. But yeah, they use a slight, you can see the four different uh, Zlib payloads that just get concatenated. Um, but we actually parse them, in my opinion, correctly. And, and the reason I say that we parse them correctly uh, is because we obviously are parsing the file format that they have a custom file format where the length is encoded as a four byte little ending value before the payload. And we know that if we subtract one from that length, that it gets fucked. So I'm like super confident all the numbers line up. And that's what I'm always looking for. Uh, like, yeah, if I literally just had Binwalk extract these and I concatenated them, then I'd be like, yes, I, I technically have the data, but I wouldn't be as confident it is correct because I am basically mimicking I am mimicking the exact behavior that actually is occurring in the firmware, whereas this would be kind of guessing at maybe what happens. And that's why I like to really get deep into the weeds of the code. So, um, there is stuff in here, and I don't know how it's encoded, to be honest. Um... Yeah, there's nothing in here that's super obvious, squash a fest or something like that. Um, now, since these are... I'm curious if we can find the CGI files in here. Um, is there like a header common thing that you'd see in a CGI file? Um... Yeah, I don't know, this stuff. XML. Yeah, and all of this. My, hmm. it's hard to say if this would be compressed in here. I, I mean, it definitely looks compressed. This almost looks like a run length encoding. The, the reason I say that this is a shitty compression, you can clearly see, like, that's dir, number, right? You can see that it's really shitty compression, and I don't think you would get that out of Zlib. And, in fact, if we look at the, um, if we look at the, um, 
Entropy? Ah, oh, fuck me. Um, uh, what is entropy? Dash E, biggie. Um, my guess is that uh, this is the gzip data, and then there's some other fucking format here. So this is like this is the gzip shit. If you yeah, you can see my cursor. Um, this is gzip, and that is what offset 0.25 meg. Uh, so like 0.25, oops, uh, 0.25 times 1024, 1024, eh, 200k. Um, no, that's 27 times 10, uh, 2.6 megs, right? So, um, and if we look at how much we consumed, print... Uh, let's just do compressed, uh, len compressed. So, uh, okay, so basically 618 plus 587 plus 647 plus 411, which is 2.263, and then if we divide that by the fucking whatever stupid thing this is using, um, that would be offset, uh, I'm guessing that's in bytes, so, uh, yeah, 2.3 megabytes, and then if you, yeah, so right, this here, this super high entropy, that's the gzip data, so that is what we've decompressed, right? So that is what we've decompressed. And then there's clearly some very shitty compression algorithm here, right? There's some, maybe it's a file system that has like a really fluffy compression algorithm that's meant for like flash where it's compressed in storage, but it's also cheap enough to dynamically access because this right here, this is decompressed once into RAM, and it is permanently kept in RAM. Um, yeah. Yeah, you can see the good shit, and it matches up. We, we would expect that if we go by the 1E7, that 0 0.2317, 0 0.2317 is where the, where the juicy data should end. And if we look at this, if we can, like, do fucking anything in this graph, uh, zoom... Yeah, so to be nice if I could like see where my fucking cursor was or any anything. Jeez, this sucks. Uh, but yeah, two, two, three, one, seven is the end of the gzip data, and that is the end of that high entropy. It then goes down to effectively zero. I would expect that it probably is f's. It's probably unused data, and then here is who knows what, and then it goes to their like file systemy sort of thing. Um, that's basically my guess. And then maybe the maybe this part of firmware is just unused. So where's this at? This is at like, um, God, I wish I could see. Oh, my cursor is in the top right. Okay, I can. Uh, so my cursor is. Let's just go in the middle here. This is uh one point one eight one, e o seven. So this would be. Let's take a look at that. XXDI or XXD on this, uh, vim dash, and then a hex or hex one one eight ten one two three is this. So B four three four D zero. It's all Fs. Okay. So basically, this is just unused shit, and it's probably a lot of it. So basically, it's a bunch of unused shit, um, and that makes sense. Okay. But yeah, so we've gotten through that, and that is probably the code, the kernel, whatever. And then this is probably file system, you know, other shit. So I don't actually really know what that would look like yet. So where do we think this is getting decompressed to? Um, I am guessing once it is decompressed, it no longer touches the... Uh, like flash bootloadery area, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, 183. Oh, that's at the very end. 180. 
Oh, there it is, right there, right? So it is loading to 180, and then 183, this is for the last uh, part of it. So let's see, this is probably the load address. Now, the question is, is this an alias load address? Is this a temporary address that they set up with mappings? I don't fucking know. Um, so what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, add to program. Um, decompressed. We're gonna add this at 1800-1234. And this is decompressed. Um, question is, do we want to treat that as writable memory? I mean, it technically is writable memory. Like, we, we understand that that is true, but the question is, is that treated as writable memory, um, an actual, it probably is. It probably is. Okay, um, let's just analyze. Okay, um, where's the entry point? Let's find the entry point. It returns all the way up, we know that. Um, RAM entry, RAM entry, this. So that calls RAM entry, and then that eventually returns up to here, which then jumps to 1363AC. Uh, which I would imagine is the, actually this is 181363AC, would be my guess. Uh, seeing coprocessor stuff right away looks really good, I like to see that, and we have a stack uh, getting set up. Um, and then this one... Uh, there's a 1F, so clearly there's an alias there. Uh, and this one is literally referencing that address. So this is basically the entry point, right? So right here. Um, so let's go analyze. Hopefully it can go from there. Do your thing. Oh, yeah, it's disassembling now. Can't see the code. That's fine. We'll turn off the cam now. Hell yeah. This might take a while. How much code is this? Three megs? So clearly, well, I want to see that it's actually run at 1.8. It jumps. It does not jump to 1.8. I'm curious if 18 is maybe the uncached variant. So the question is, should we actually store this at 18 or not? Um, let's actually see if we see dupes of our code. So uh, RAM entry. So this is RAM entry, 3A302E. So let's go to um, 183A302E. And let's see if we see a push R4LR. Oh, no, we don't. One eight. Am I stupid? Oh, that's not in range. Oh. Yeah, so there is no overlap there. Because uh, 3A, this is after in RAM. So RAM is definitely at zero. Um, it is after uh, RAM where it loads this like bootloadery thunk, right? Um, so, the question is, does it, does it actually stay in 1.8? So we actually jumped to not 1.8. Even though it shows we're at 1.8, we, we did that ourselves. Um, the question is, does it branch? Here it loads this. Um, whoops. Load that. The branches to this here. Oh my god, is this decompression? Please be shitty decompression. Oh my god, I, oh my god. 
Oh my god, is this like the rest? Do the rest? Oh, that would be so sick! Um, oh yes, we also know that this is at zero. Um, let's, uh, let's set that up to... Can you do aliases easily in Ghidra? Um... So, okay. Bite mapped. Um, I guess we can just say that, even though it's kind of the other way around, but we'll just say this is, um, uh, ram. I'll just say it's ram or some shit. And then the length for this is uh, 36C318, right? RWX. Bam. Um, right? There we go. So we should have at 18, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have the same bytes. So now it knows that those are alias, byte mapped. Uh, aliasing there, which is good. Um, so then these are probably reset vectors now. Uh, I don't know if these are code. It's code! It's code! There we go. Uh, load PC RAM 20, and then this... Wait a minute. Okay, that one's just not used. Um, beautiful. Yeah, 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 yes! Let's fucking go! Finally found the exception vectors. Yeah. I'm curious what Ghidra does when there's mapped memory like that. It's kind of interesting to me. Like, if it can reuse some of the, like, I, I guess that, hmm. I, I'm wonder I wonder what the ramifications of that are. L luckily, I am being accurate in, in saying that, but it's, it's actually really cool. Okay, we have parameter ID on, nice. 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 But this is, the reset vector is not actually the entry point. We know the entry point of this program. Um, everything lines up. Everything fucking lines up. So I'm pretty confident that we're actually looking at how this looks. Um, I feel like we're making decent progress. I mean, we fucked around looking at how the actual internal stuff worked, uh, which I think is important, right? Like, I, I don't I don't know how much people are annoyed by the fact that we didn't just gun zip it right away, um, but I think it's really important to be comfortable, you know, looking at stuff like that. So... Okay, so this is the reset vector, and the reset vector uh, loads an address uh, here, which is a pointer, and it just jumps to itself. So it infinitely loops, right? It, it derefs 20, which is address 0, so it infinitely loops on a reset. Makes sense. Um, then on an undefined instruction, it loads uh, this, um, and then branches. That branches to here, uh, which is infinite loop. Okay, so it infinite loops on that. Supervisor call here. Um, okay, so PC RAM. Um, three eight. Yeah, so like this is code, right? Maybe not. No, this is a pointer. That's a pointer. Yep, and then this is code here. Uh, let's see if I say this is code, if it figures that out. Well, whatever. Doesn't matter too much. I, I don't give a shit too much about these reset vectors. Um, okay. So the entry point is this. 
right? So this is the like technically not that. The entry point is three six uh one three six three AC. And we can verify that by looking at the uh this. Um go. Go to this thing. Um here. So this jumps after we do all of the decompression and shit. Uh we jump into, this is like a decompressed kernel, right? So this jumps into the decompressed kernel, and that is done by loading an address, uh, which can be found here. And this address is 1363ac. This is the code that is present there. And if we mark this as a function, we are in a, a good place. And we can see this is setting up a new stack and all of that sort of good stuff. Once again, coprocessor shit, we don't care about it. It's probably the exact same code that we saw before, maybe invalidating caches. And then here we jump into a where. Uh, this, okay, concat. We load, this is an address. We jump to here. That's kind of weird, but whatever. So basically, um, we jump here, which goes here, which then goes here. Um, and this does something. And this does something with uh, 26 OD4. And this is, hmm. Literal pulls fuck up Ghidra. Yeah, of course, because uh, we have everything marked as writable right now. So um, that makes sense to me, and it's not confusing or concerning. Um, OK, so I'm curious if this is decompression. Uh, 1845. So this is basically after. Is it writing to this? This is doing something. Uh, and this looks like maybe run length encoding. Um, while it's less than 18506. Okay, let's take a look at this. Hex 18506C0, starting from this. How big is that? Uh, 202K. Not that big. But this does look like run length encoding. Um, uvar5, uvar7, p, uh, plus one, plus one. It starts here. While it's less than this. Um. I'm not 100% sure what that's doing, to be honest. And then we branch and link to 418. And then this has a uh, dynamic dispatch to 148. Uh, and then this is code here. Uh, this is loading, like, this is the stack address 1f, 1f, 9f. This is like top of stack. Loading some parameters to the kernel 1f, 90c000. This basically libc start main is what I think that is. And then this is like main. And it takes those four parameters. Yeah. So basically, this is like populating, uh, probably populating like the four parameters to main. Uh, Bix R12. This is like probably get the fuck out, maybe, or like shit's fucked. Uh, oh, this is an address. Sorry. Um, jump here. BL to this, funk, funk, software interrupt. Uh, so we have a SWE here. Um, I'm curious if that's like the end or like shut down. Uh, like my hypothesis right now is basically um, Uh, my hypothesis is that this is like uh, set up main args uh, and stack, and then this is like main, right? And that blixes into here, and then 
I'm guessing this is just gonna explode. This is like, there's gonna be a lot of shit in here. This is probably the the operating system now. That's that's my hypothesis. Um, so I would be very curious uh, if there are some copying sort of things that go on. Um, that gets some just RAM address. Uh, this is some shit. Ooh. Oh. Um. Once again, kind of looks like compression-y sort of things. Uh, do we have a source and a dust here? IRAM plus that. Prim two. Prim two is zero. So both are zero. If that's not equal to zero, it is zero. So that's just returning a value. Um, this is the same function. Um, I'm just curious. I, I do think the file system is just stored in Flash in that like semi-compressed way. So I don't think we're actually gonna see all of that just get decompressed in one fell swoop to be to be H, um, what I suspect is, what are these, these like allocations or something, maybe, okay, hmm, maybe this isn't main, turn concat those, unless one of these Wow, look at this. While this is not equal to that, just f Okay, so this is literally just calling every function until it gets to E0. While it's not equal to that. Um, so we load A90 to B4C, and it just fucking blasts these functions. No, uh, no. Uh, I'm reading that a uh, DRF wrong, aren't I? This isn't code, is it? No, no. Um. Oh, it also might update some of these things. Two, three, seven. These are things that maybe might get overwritten. It's hard to say. Um, I don't DRF that. So load this. So load this address. And then... I'm so fucking confused. Oh, that's an offset. 23780 is an offset. Add that to PC, uh, which is rel from here. Branch and then load and then blix. Um, so I guess, uh, no. Pointer that. Oh, is it this? It's this address plus that. Okay. One, three, four, seven, C eight. So does this exist? Three six C two. And this is like right at the end of the decompress shit. Um, C940A5.
Are these like encrypted or something? Um, cause we saw. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Um. Incoming references. We should have incoming references to this, shouldn't we? Let's analyze again. We should have incoming refs to this now. Um, the other thing we can do is we could look at the, um, the I, I, John, whatever, <laughs> whatever the firmware, uh, the kernel is. Do, do, do. Come on. I think it's just, it keeps finding a lot of code, which is good. I want it to find a lot of code. Okay. We assume that this is the main entry point, which I kind of agree. Jump to decompress kernel. Those shouldn't matter too much. This is doing a copy. Okay. This is doing a mem copy. 3A. Yeah, so that's setting up that, it's copying into RAM. That is flushing caches. Then we have the actual entry to RAM. Uh, high level decompression. Yep, and that's all that's doing. It's literally decompression. Uh, then we're loading some things. And then we, okay, and then we, we actually return out. Okay, these are, these are scary to me. Uh, BF right here. 3BF, oh, what's going on here? What's this supposed to be? Mm, is that just like a command buffer? Or is it trying to copy? Because that's a length. It seems like it's programming something on a device. Whatever. Don't give a shit. Okay, um, then that rets, and then that rets. So, um, so this is like a uh, uh, copy decompression code to RAM and decompress, right? Um, it was like, I don't know, IDK flush iCache. Okay, so copy all that shit, and then the RAM entry, that does the actual decompression. And then once the decompression is done, then we go into here, and this is, I don't know, some stuff. Validate entire instruction, data synchronization, I don't know, some more coproc stuff. Because we just decompressed. Um, and then this is 
set up to set up some device. Okay, and then this is uh, more coproc shit. Uh, other coproc shit. Okay, and then decompressed kernel, and let's look at the actual assembly there. That is done by branching to here, which loads an address, which is here. This is in the decompressed kernel. We then jump to there. We, um, let's bookmark this. Okay. How do I fucking bookmark it? Oh, there you go. Um, uh, entry point of the decompressed kernel. Okay. Is this bootloader code? Yes, right now it is. Um, some shit we don't care about. And then this, I don't know, like flush cache, maybe flush caches. I don't really give a shit. It's not actually doing anything. And then this is like some more caches. Um, that actually looks like that is a uh, translation table. Whoa. I, I don't know. Maybe they're disabling that. I, I'm not 100% sure. Then we load a, uh, we load an address. And, oh, yeah, we load this. And then we bix to it. Uh, so basically, we end up branching to that. And that is, that checks out. So we branch to here. So nothing, nothing can happen. Basically, we set up a new stack, and then this is like, I don't know, uh, uh, enter after a new stack uh, decompress. Uh, like, basically, uh, we decompress the kernel, and then we jump into here. And then we branch and link to here. And this is doing something. Uh, and it's like decompressing something at the 45 area, uh, which seems to be kind of open space. And, um, it looks like some form of a copy. Now, the address of this, it deref's this. Uvar 5. Okay, so this is some thing. This is like some form of decompression. Uvar 7. So what do we do? We, we basically read some value, we end it with three, and then depending on that value, it determines like, it looks like run length encoding, to be honest. Um, and this is at the 260D range, which is basically after, uh, 26D4. What I'm curious about is this, the data, 6a, I don't see a pointer there. Get the address. We So we have this. We have an address to this. Let me deref it. And then that should give us uh, d4. So now d4 is in uvar5. Is it the contents there? or um, No. It, OK, so that, yeah, it read a byte at that address. OK. So basically, it read this 10. And then this is running until this D5 turns into this. 45. And that was like 200K, 200 kilobytes. Let's see what's in that region here. Um, is that 2602D4? Um, 
Um, it was okay. So this is the data at got a bunch of Fs, and then clearly this is like a new region, a new thing. I keep doing like air quotes and hand gestures. Um, my interpretation of this is this is decompressing something until this address, um, which just seems pretty low. It just seems pretty small. So I'm curious. Hmm. It's like, it's so curious. Um, what is what is this? Uh, two six o d, uh, two six o d uh, two d o, uh, two point four megs. So let's see the entropy on that. Two five. It's like this. The f fuck. Um, I just feel like this is small. It's basically de decompressing like 200K in, in this area, um, which is actually interesting to me. Well, we are actually at 249.1088. Two, four, nine, this. This is what we're, this is what we're decompressing right here. Right? So, um, two, six, zero, two, D, zero, um, is two, four, nine, ten, eighty eight. And two, four, nine, ten, eighty eight, this is two, four, nine, here's two, four, nine, ten, right here. Um, and then this is like, I don't know, this is maybe 100K or 50K or something. So this decompresses to approximately 200K. So let's do it. Let's decompress it. Sweet. We get to do a little bit of everything, chat. Uh, we, can, we can do what I was talking about. We're going to uh, basically decompress this by um, copying the C code. Okay. Fuck yeah, chat. We get to do a little bit of everything. All right. Um, I'm tr I'm changing up my music right now. Sorry. Uh, I want something pretty dank right now. Okay. Um. Turn this on temporarily. Uh, Canon. Notes.md. Uh, okay. So there seem to be multiple compressed regions. Uh, the uh, flash seems to be mapped to OXF123, 1234. Um, and uh, the entry point seems to be uh, OXFF, uh, oops. Um, is it, uh, it's like to this. Yeah, it's like main and uh, like initial entry. Um, the flash quickly copies, uh, flash contents from OX251232 
to, oops. What's this? Copies. Uh, quickly copies. It was this. Uh, F0. Yeah. Uh, copies. Oh, fucking, where is that? Uh, f flash contents directly from this to RAM at address, um, this, uh, for OX. Um, this minus this. Four bytes. This contains decompression code for the uh, next stage and is simply a uh, gzip uh, decompression. This uh, decompresses multiple gzip payloads, I guess uh, gzip zlib uh, g. Um, this decompresses multiple uh, payloads. Okay, so, oh. And that is the branch. Oh, here. Um, once the uh, copy, once the copy is complete, we branch into this new uh, copied memory in RAM uh, to address this. Okay, this decompresses multiple uh, Zlib payloads. Um, Which, um, which start at offset OX25 in the uh, flash, um, right? Um, is that right? This one is. Yes. Um. Okay, the, uh, this has a special file, uh, special format, uh, which is quite simple. It is simply um, size of compressed payload, U32, and then compressed payload. Payload. Uh, uh, this sequence repeats multiple times. In our case, only uh, four times. In our case, four times. Um, this uh, data is decompressed to uh, OX18, right? This. Uh, which it seems to be another alias for uh, RAM, as we uh, also can access this same memory at zero. Okay. Um, all right. That looks pretty good. So basically, we have flash mapped here. Um, it seems the flash may also be aliased, aliased at uh, OX F1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, the flash quickly copies the flash contents. Um, the bootstrap code, maybe, I don't know, set text width is 79. The bootstrap code quickly copies flash contents directly from uh, this. Yep. 
F0002 DE9 uh, to RAM address here for 14,000 bytes. Okay. This contains the decompression code for the next stage and is simply a zlib decompression. Once the copy is complete, we branch into this new copied memory in RAM at this address. Checks out. This decompresses multiple zlib payloads, which have uh, which start at offset um, this uh, in the flash. This has a special format, which is quite simple. It is simply uh, uh, size of decompressed payload U32. Uh, Compressed payload. This sequence repeats multiple times, or in our case, four times. Uh, there was a, um, the decompressed size of the entire blob for us was uh, 36C318 bytes. Uh, this data is decompressed to there, which seems to be another alias for RAM, uh, as we can also access the same memory at here, at zero. Okay. All right, then uh, once that is done, uh, we then return out to the entry point, and we can go to the entry point, which is here. Scuffed? Oh, that's where it's copied to. Copied from, sorry. Um, all right, uh, let's say uh, flash seems to be mapped to there. Entry point seems to be, oh, it's this, sorry. Sweet, I did have it documented at least. And then that jumps to the decompressed kernel. Uh, at this point, we return back to flash um, and branch to a uh, branch indirectly to uh, OX. Oh, decompressed kernel. So this, this is the uh, entry point to the decompressed payload. Uh, the payload we just decompressed with uh, Zlib, right? Um, this seems to be a majority of the kernel code and uh, is accurately reflected with the high entropy region uh, shown with binwalk-e uh, on the firmware uh, between um, okay. Uh, bink. What is this? Um, 120K and uh, uh, 2.4 meg. I don't know. OK. Um, and then there's some unused regions. Slow down enough to read chat. Every once in a while I read chat. Not too much though. I'm I'm pretty neglectful of chat. Okay. So, um Entropy. Uh the entropy of the uh firmware seems to follow uh basically uh, uh low entropy um And what's 20,000? 130K. And it seems like, like nothing is used, really, until then. Um, let's look at this. So this is like the entry point, and then that shit is basically unused. Bunch of zeros, bunch of Fs. Um, yeah, and this is where I've seen like passwords and like settings. And I think basically, um, I suspect, right, uh, until about OX20 this. OK, we'll say this. 
Uh, low entropy seems to be used for um, persistent storage. I see some SSIDs and uh, Wi-Fi passwords in here. Um, okay, and then lots of this flash is unused. Okay, and then uh, we'll say, oops, medium entropy. And this is uh, initial uh, bootstrap entry points code. Okay, um, and that explains, so basically we have pretty low entropy there. We have like a couple like blips of data and then entropy goes, uh, I guess, Let's zoom into here. So we know that uh, 131, which is right here. So that entropy goes high. Basically, yeah. 131, which is like right about here. Okay. So, and that makes sense. Um, I guess that's not all the, okay, let's look at this. Is it this blip? No. 131, it goes pretty high and then it drops down again and that's like the initial bootstrapping code. Um, and that seems to end. Uh, the entropy seems to drop very briefly, which is here. Uh, let's go to here. Okay, and then we know that that lines up. Okay, sweet. We're making like really good progress right now. Um, this is then um, high entropy, and this is actually the compressed data, um, right? And this extends until, um, I don't know how to zoom out, and that's why I keep restarting this. Uh, it looks like uh, 240 something next. 2.46. Oops. Int. Okay, uh, so I'm just going to jump to 249 FOO. And then there is kind of the end. Bunch of padding space. Okay, and then once again, very clean delineation there. And this is um, high entropy. And this is the uh, Zlib compressed uh, kernel payload. And that's pretty large, right? OX this, bam. So that has been accounted for. So, so far, like basically we're kind of going through the firmware and we're trying to identify like all of the things that actually make sense in here. And then we have another entropy spike. So um, that 261234, that is 2.49. So 249, which is right here. And then we have another spike that then drops again. So we have another spike, and that is now what we are figuring out. So this is the data here. But we're basically trying to account for all of the shit in this uh, kernel. So let's see where this. Entropy drops again. I'm guessing we'll see the same pattern. Bunch of Fs, and then probably at 28, it starts again. Um, yeah, bunch of Fs, and then we start here. So this is a uh, high entropy unknown payload, right? And this is what we're figuring out now. Uh, decomp at, uh, let's say, Uh, this jumps to, I guess, that decompression, the Zlib decompression happens basically here, right? We can be more specific and we can say here, bink, okay. So the decompression happens here and then here we can say decompression at this address, and this is now the new thing that we're trying to figure out, which should be really easy. 
Uh, this one we should be able to figure out. Um, uh, use decompress.py, right? So decompress.py, um, uh, canon. So decompress.py is responsible for decompressing that, this payload here, right? And that checks out. So we have a script, we have associated that, we've documented that that is the script that you're supposed to use for that stage and that payload. Um, and then the next decompression payload that we have, I'm going to turn off this because I think it's time to do reversing. We're going to go into our entry point, go into decompress kernel, and then this uh, calls into this, which jumps into here, which does this. So this 2C right here. I think that's the code. Let's double check. We should have a reference to... 260d4, 26, yeah. So it's not exactly at 26 flat, um, but we don't necessarily know why there's like a header there. Um, let's go to let's go to 260 flat. Do you think that's the reset vectors? Hmm. Looks like reset vectors. I kind of agree with that, right? Um, we still have never found the initial reset vectors, right? Um, one more zero. Yeah. Mm, the Bixler's not right there. Um, it is kind of just like a knob sled, but yeah, not 100% sure what's going on there. Bunch of knobs. Whatever, not a big deal. But then we have some zeros, and basically the uh, data starts there. Okay. All right, so let's just uh, let's implement this. Let's grab this. Um, this should be really fucking easy. Um, decompress.py, decompress zlib.py, and then we can say uh, decompression, decompress zlib.py to decompression. Uh, we can remove decompressed.py, and then we'll go into decompression, and then we can do uh, vim decompress, um, I don't know, maybe this is like kind of RLE, RLE.c. Just paste this in here. Um, okay, decompression, gccc, decompress RLE, and then we need to define a bunch of the shit. Uh, type def, un, uh, we'll do this. Uh, type def unsigned char um, bytes. Type def unsigned ints, u ints. Sick. Okay, so then we have, um, we'll just say these are bytes pointers. Uh, bytes pointer this is equal to null, and byte pointer this. Okay. And then we'll do, uh, nice. We'll split that. We'll go down here. We'll say int main. Void, return zero, and then what we'll do is we'll load up that file. Um, um, absolute madman using compiling decompiled C. Fuck yeah, dude, I ain't scared. I ain't a bitch. Uh, this is malloc. Uh, RAM output buffer, right? If uh, this is, sorry, if not this, then uh, pair malloc error. Okay, beautiful. 
So that is the RAM buffer. And then here, we're just going to say, um, if it's equal to this <laughs> uh, plus that minus this. Basically, we're doing the math ourselves. We're saying if or while we are less than this. So we're basically, this is the real RAM address, but we are not using the real RAM address, of course. Um, and thus, we basically just do the math ourselves. We figure out that delta, and then we compute that address, such that we can use our pointer in pbvar4, and then we can kind of go through and, and you know, do that decompression or whatever. Uh, we don't necessarily, well, we actually can compute how large this is supposed to be, but we'll just over allocate it. We don't give a shit. Um, okay. Then, uh, next, we need to actually allocate this, which is the firmware. Um, so, uh, um, uh, yeah, we can just do this equals malloc, uh, mm, you know, and then, uh, this, this code kind of sucks, but it's not meant to really be the highest quality code. It's just like fucking quick and dirty shit. Um, 79. It's mad about something. Um, that's what I thought. Basically, virtual to physical translation? Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to do uh, file fd is fopen um, lsl firmware dumps. Uh, dot dot slash firmware dumps. Um, This dot flash bin dot bin uh, rb if not fd uh, pair fopen and we leak shit but that's fine we're about to return anyway so it doesn't fucking matter um, then we're gonna do an f seek to um, we're gonna f seek to on fd to offset um, this. Right, this is the flash offset, uh, and then seek set, and then if this is, I think, less than zero, maybe negative one specifically, uh, otherwise negative one is returned. If this is equal to negative one, then pair fseek error uh, return negative one, and then we're going to fread of, uh, I guess we're going to read into dat. Um, we're going to read one, and the size that we're going to read is unknown, currently. Say meg, um, and then fd, and then if this is not equal to one meg, then we will, uh, freed error here. Okay. Okay, so um, GCC decompress RLE, uh, seek sets, and mm, standard lib.h includes standard io.h. Okay, beautiful. And then we should it out, out. That looks good. And then what we should be able to do is a. Um, FD is fopen, uh, decompressed, rle.bin, uh, write binary, if not this. Okay, and then we should be able to uh, fright uh, the decompressed payload. Um, one. Uh, 32 megs, which is over allocated, which is fine. And then we'll FD that. Let's change these to calyx just to zero stuff out a little bit more, just so we see more zeros. Okay, it out, out. And we should have decompressed rle.bin. 
It's massive. It's way bigger than it needs to be. The actual size of that is um, much different, and that looks scuffed because we did the... What the fuck am I doing? Raid. Huh. Um, is that right? No, there's nothing in there. Um, thank you for the raid. Hell yeah. Uh, let's see this. Um, I don't want to trap. What dumb shit am I doing? Am I wrong? Is this PB VAR 2? Deref that. Byte pointer. That derefs it. That gets a 10 hex, right? It should start with a, a 10 hex. I don't call the fucking function. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Good. Progress. Um... Um, uh, um, 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 Oh, ooh, I am curious if I am curious. I'm just very curious, to be honest. Um, let's go and take a look at uh, firmware dumps. Here's what we're going to do. This is going to be uh, char firmware is here, and then we'll say firmware. And then we're going to read that. We're actually not going to seek. And we're going to read the whole firmware, which is 16 megs. All right, so we're going to read the entire 16 megs of the firmware into RAM. I'm just moving around code to be uh, more linear. So we're going to read. So this is going to crash on NullDRF, which is great. Um, GDB. Uh, okay, uh, maybe just a null check. F read error success. Uh, up. Null deref. Uh, IR racks. Perfect. Exactly what I wanted to see. Okay, so now what we want to do is set up a pointer because I think this reads negative. I mean, I, I could have looked at the code for like two seconds, but this is my hypothesis. Um, and we read into the wrong buffer. Uh, firmware. Um, this is equal to firmware plus hex this. That is the offset. Nah, fuck me. 
No DRF. No ED. No ED. And that is on a 40. PB VAR 4. Um, PB VAR 4 looks like it's getting incremented. Here it's getting incremented. Um, I do think this is actually Hoffman. I think this is like... Uh, maybe looking for the table index or some shit. Anyways, uh, PBVAR4, we have a problem where that is going null. Uh, do we not set... Oh, do we set the wrong thing? Whoa. Whoop. So this is RAM. This is allocate RAM. Okay, yeah, I had that ass backwards. Okay, and then this is allocate room for firmware, open firmware, uh, read entire firmware. Uh, this is uh, set up uh, global pointer to offset in firmware with uh, payload from the decompression. Okay. Uh, okay, so we still are crashing. This one's not a null ED anymore. Um, oh! M32. Dunzo! Needs to be M32. Um, let's say, uh, okay. Uh, printer, if, uh, size of... Hey, uh, void star is not equal to four. Uh, yo, uh, 32 bit, your shit. Uh, M32 or, or something, y you know? Uh, return negative one. Okay, sick. Get it out. Good. Okay, decompress. RLE. Woo! Canon inkjet printer. Oh my god, there is data in. How much? How much data is in here? Because it should be zero for most of the way. Oh, is that the, is that the user and password? Oh, sick! Inkjet printer, probably serial numbers. Oh, baby. Client finished, server finished. What the fuck is this? Are these like, um, they look, are these like file records? Like, I, I would be very curious if these, like, the, due to the even spacing, although, okay, that makes no sense for a file record, okay. Um, I'm curious why those are evenly spaced. Uh, some weird table -y thing, and I think that's the end. Uh, let's see. What size do we expect this to be? This size. Uh, 317C0 should be the end. And it is! I mean, it's not exactly the end, but that seems to check out. So I don't know what the fuck that is. Um... I don't know what this area is, to be honest. Uh, but I do think we can safely say um, we can allocate strictly. This is the RAM. And then we can write this out. This is right out of the RAM. If this is not equal to this, then pair f rights. Okay. Okay, so now decompressed rle.bin is the exact size that we expect. Fantastic. Um, let's see how much that actually consumed. 
I would hazard that uh, PBVAR2 is probably the pointer to compressed data. It's consuming that shit. Let's see. Uh, print F red percent uh, X bytes uh, compressed bytes. Okay, and then PBVAR2 minus, I guess, the original PBVAR2, which is that. Um, is that copied to another buffer? It is not. So P, oh, uh, this. But that's a DREF. Okay, so PBVAR2 should, I think, adequately indicate the uh, compression, the size of the compressed input data, which is this. And we'll hex this, just so it's obvious. Okay. Oh yeah, does this yell at us? I mean, that does. Okay, sweet. But it yells at us. It yells us at us in multiple ways, but awesome. So the size of the compressed region is 86 uh, kilobytes, 86,513 bytes. And then if I were to take, um, so that's done. Um, notes, let's take this and add that. Yeah, so that should get us to um, 2751F1. Okay, so if we take a look in our uh, binary, let's look at 2751F1, uh, 1F0. So this is allegedly like the end of that data that is consumed. Eh, there's still a little bit of extra shit, but it worked. We're in a good ballpark here. 2751F1. Oh, because we don't start exactly at uh, 26. We start at 26. <sighs> Fuck. Uh, we start. Uh, decompress. This should also work on Windows. Um, there's nothing about this that's, that is OS specific, which was intended for people following along, even though I haven't uploaded anything. We start at this, two sec, two six, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then I'll add our one F one. And this gives me an address of two seven five four C. And then a five. One, two, three, four, five. This is the, that's not consumed, and it lines up. Uh, there's just some, they probably just padded it out to the nearest four byte boundary with zeros. Fan fucking tastic. Okay, so now that has been, um, okay. Unknown payload decomp at that. Um, then this is. Uh, use decompress rle dot c. So now we have a way to decompress that. All right, uh, rma dot out. Uh, git ignore slash a dot out. Git status. Oh yeah, and we have to find. We have to fix decompress dot pi. Um, Uh, zlib.py Okay, and then we'll just say a dot dot slash here Python decompress uh, Zlib and that should work just fine still Okay, um vim Git ignore and then we can say uh, star dot bin git status Get add dot, get status. Beautiful. Get add notes, get status, get commits, and uh, decompress tools and info, get push. Okay. So those are up on the GitHub. If you want to play along with those, I didn't upload the decompressed binaries because I just. I. I actually like not shipping the decompressed binaries so people like rerun and uh, make sure that those scripts and these documentations are maintained, if that makes sense. But 
Oh, slash um, firmware dumps. Okay, so the firmware dumps just has that, and then decompression has that shit, uh, but we only checked in uh, the C file, the Python file, and the git ignore. Does he ever do an easier to follow noob stream? This is the noob stream. Just have to ask questions. What's the compression factor? Um, uh, you do the math. Uh, LSL decompression. Well, I mean, I'll do the math because I can paste it. Uh, 202688 divided by um, uh, 86513. So 2.34x, uh, or if you want to go the uh, other way, which most people go with uh, ratios, 42.68%. Uh, okay, that's not bad. And that is that uh, that hump, right? So we have figured out what this start is, what this blob is, this small, like this peak in here that is hard to see, that's what we just did is this tiny little peak in here. And then we don't know what the rest of this is, but it's clearly some file system-y shit. Um, but what we can do is we can load our decompressed shit. Where does it load it to? Here, okay. So we can load our new payload, add the program, decompression, decompressed RLE here, this, and RLE block, bam. Okay. So now this should be valid memory, and it is. Um, and then we're also going to alias that. So we're going to add a memory region. Um, so this is going to be RLE block alias. Uh, length is equal to 317C0 executable byte mapped uh, source address. Oh, start address is at uh, 4D5123. Source address is 184D5123. One to one ratio executable memory. Okay. So we have an RLE block alias. So what you should be able to do is this 18, um, this 1845 should have the same data that we have at uh, 4D5123. 246A5018, 246A5018. Perfect. Okay. We can run that analysis again. <sighs> hey Rift Tracks, how's it going? Wasn't there something about a MySQL, my uh, ISAM blob? Yeah, I don't know. That's like it. I I don't know. <laughs> uh, at four a zero. Mm, what did we just do? No, we just did a four sixty. So what we just did is, um, we did something like in this ballpark, four sixty ish in here. Um, okay. Okay. Um, let's take a look at that payload. Um, let's strings, uh, decompressed. Decompression, decompressed, uh, Arlie. Take a look at this. Open SSL certified certificate, some user's pass or something referencing gzip. Server and client finished. And then like these like weird blobs, which seem to make no sense. 
These honestly, these look like v like variables, right? The these due to the like even spacing between them, um, to me they they almost look like they're some variables, right? It's 420, and then we have a 570. Are these evenly spaced? Like three five a seven nine one. Yeah. Hmm. <sighs> Nothing looks super Cody in here. So I'm just not 100% sure what this payload is. There are a couple strings and then like this stuff. Client finished, server finished. Client, SVR, like, client finish, server finish. Since that's repeated, is this like a log file? Is this just generic compressed storage? Like, is this where they just store variables compressed or something like that? Like, super basic? Like, that's kind of what I'm feeling right now. Because I, I, I'm just, nothing in here feels super... There's just so much zeroing in here, and like it's obvious why they are elite it, and you can see why the compression ratio is so good. Um, this looks like some sort of a table. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I guess we can bin walk that itself. Uh. Uh, fucking yeah yeah nothing nothing crazy there um i think that is i mean this code literally just decompresses it to that location and then uh we return up from here so um so this was called from here what was this was it this no that's some mm, some coproc Okay, and then this is uh, decompress um, RLE stuff. And that's, no, wait, fuck. Um, ah, more uh, co-proc shit. I think we probably already named something that. Now this, so here we have code. We pass it in arg, maybe? No, we don't. R1? We never said an R1. I think this just takes no parameters. It's just confused, and that's fine. Um, so we load this. We blicks to here. And then is this meant to fall through? Enter after new stack decompress. Okay, so this is the... Um, this is a decompress RLE, right? So decompress RLE, that's what we just did. And then that returns, I'm really confused. So that does a BX. So it's like fucking gone after it does this. Um, wait, does it set a specific LR? No. So LR would be here, and then we jump to here. We do a decompress RLE. That doesn't branch anywhere. We copy pasta that whole thing, and then we go into this. Okay. Um, so load 148 into PC. So just branch to 148. Okay. Bring it. So this is like enter after RLE decompress. Um,
Have you run into a dilemma like this before in your years of coding? Um, I mean, this is just like standard stuff that I do. Like, I, I'm just used to doing stuff like this. This is just standard kind of reverse engineering. Okay, so this sets up these arguments. 136F7D. What did we just load? Um, okay. Then, um, we seem to decompress via some form of RLE uh, the data present at um, 26 this. Um, the data present at this. This uh, decompressed, uh, this can be decompressed with the code in uh, decompress uh, rle.c and the decompressed payload is placed at uh, ox18451233. Uh, in our case, the decompressed size was uh, 2268 bytes. Um, and the compressed size was uh, 86513 bytes. Right? Okay. Um, uh, the decompression code can be found at this. Right? So uh, we decompress via RLE, can be decompressed with this. It's placed here. In our case, uh, decompress size is this, and the compressed size is that. Decompression code can be found there. Looks fantastic. OK. Um, all right, and then once that is done being decompressed, we uh, basically load up these arguments, which is really interesting. Um, this is very strange. Obviously, this, this code was written in assembly, right? You know it's written in assembly because this is a very weird calling convention uh, where basically we're loading a stack. So this is um, this is the, like, so that is uh, argument 0. This is the stack, argument 1. And then I'm guessing this is right after it, but OK. So this is, like, arg 0, stack arg1, arg2. Arg oh, what is this? Um, how do I expand this? Yeah, whatever. There's got to be a way to do that, right? Expand, 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 expand. Data, data, expand, 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 expand. Maybe you can't. Um, all right. So this is basically setting up our new stack. Um, and that's fine. That's at high RAM. How much RAM do we have? So this is at 18000000. So this is our alias. And then we have 8123123 uh, for RAM. Um, yeah, so this is like very close to the end of RAM, which makes sense for a stack. And then we have a couple arguments, which I'm not 100% sure. So set up main args and stack. We don't know if it's actually main. I just called it that because it sounded cool. Then we're going to copy uh, R2 into R1. So R2 goes into R1. So basically, it passes this thing three times in. OK. So then we go into main. And this takes four parameters. And that lines up with what we expect. Uh, it basically takes uh, this and then this four uh, this three times. So this argument, this DC, and then this F4 three times is what we are actually getting. Um, where are these loaded from? RAM? OK. Nordy is the OS? I don't know. Is that a re I've never heard of that, if it is. Uh, OK, and then we load this address. It's clearly a, a pointer. And then we bix to R12. And I think that's like blurp, gone. OK, so let's see what this does. 
Ooh, I bet I know what this is. I bet this is like Libsy in it. And this is probably, um, I bet this is initializing globals. Like relocations and globals, question mark? Uh, relocations, globals, CTORs, that sort of stuff is my guess. Heap memory corrupted? Oh, wow, this is creating a heap. Is this Malik? Service AB. Okay, that's like fucking panic. Uh, is that like a cert? That's some sort of an assertion. If it's equal to one, heap memory corrupted. Okay. Um, like, this is like report heap error, right? If it's one, it does that. Otherwise it sets that to zero and it re returns out of memory. So this is like report heap error. Uh, and then this is like fucking raise or something, right? Like that, that looks like raise to me, an unconditional service call. And then if param one is not equal to zero, um, and then this is like raise if non-zero. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, this is like uh, um, assert keep something. Okay, so then this is Malik then, <laughs> or something. This is something, something Alec. Something allocation related, right? Because if the result of that is null, then we assert heap, right? Which is going to report corruption shit or raise. Um, and this is going to raise a zero, which is an out of memory condition. So yeah, so this is, uh, <laughs> yeah, literally this is raise out of memory, right? Okay, cool. So this is, let's see what their allocator is then. Um, this must be the heap, param four. So then param three, like all these parameters, these things are not used anywhere, are they? Nope, only param four. Uh, fantastic, because it repeats them four times. This is a heap pointer, right? So we know that that is the heap. This is like the heap pool or whatever. Um, this is the size of the allocation. And then the zero is the, that's not a requested address, is it? Um, oh, um, doesn't use it. Um, param2 is ivar4. What is that? It returns param1. Um, I'm pretty sure this is just malloc. I, I just don't know what that zero is. Uh, standard call. So let's find... It sets param2 here, and it serves that at r1, and then param1 is not used, right? Param1, like down here, it's just... Um, this is, this is just fucking Alec. I, I don't know what that Alec is. Um, unknown. Uh, this is the, uh, heap. Well, why would it be overwriting that? Wait a minute. Is this create heap? This might be create heap. And it's returning the heap pointer. But then what the fuck is it returning? I guess just a status code? Um, pvar, let's see, pram three. Ivar four. This is this is the heap. That's the heap right there. Um, so you got like a heap, deref the heap, 
We add param three. If it is less, wait. If it's less than the address of something on the stack? The fuck is this? If if the contents of this global and AU stack, I'm confused. Where is the Sub compare. It's saving off R5, and then it's subtracting R6, which is just a big number. Um, add that. Is that going to mask it? I wonder if this is finding the base of the stack. I wonder if this is like get TLS. Like, this isn't getting TLS, but I, I'm curious if this is... I wonder if the heap is just... Um, like, is this trying to find the start of the stack? And the heap ends at the start of the stack? I guess this is maybe the... This, to me, looks like it's maybe updating the heap. And then unknown... If it's less than or equal to, this happens. Dude, I, I don't I don't know what that is. Uh, I'm really confused. Uh something heapy. Um I do feel like this is probably initializing the heap and like setting up the heap chain free lists and that's what it really feels like to me is this like get heap or some shit this is the heap yeah i'm not 100 percent sure on that but whatever i'm just gonna assume that this is like maybe initialize heap or some shit um let's see where this is used Yeah, that is like the last fucking thing in memory. Hmm. Show references. Something heapy. Okay. Oops. Not what I wanted. I want this. Uh, show references. Okay. Plus 1,000 hex. The 1,000 hex is really interesting here. Um, is this a... I don't know if the... Maybe it's a... The plus 1,000. Is this a page allocator? Maybe? I don't know. Maybe it's the list of uh, free pages or some shit. I don't know if this thing has an MMU, to be honest. But we're just going to say this is like, I don't know. IDK, initialize heaps. Or maybe uh, P, uh, PMM allocator. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wasn't that this? Okay. So then we go into here. Uh, what is this doing? Um, we're not writing to any memory. We're just... Oh, we are writing to memory. We're writing to this. Uh, times four. Uvar. Shift. Plus Uvar two. Uh, I don't know what that's doing. Don't really care. Uh, what's this? I don't know. Just get, just get, it. just return a pointer. Cool, cool. Um, 
if it's not equal to, if prim2 is non-zero and, so that's a string, a sum string. Um, is this like print? Any C0 references? The fuck is this? This isn't Sterlin, is it? Is this Sterlin? Is this Stir compare? If it's not equal to zero, return zero. Is this stir compare? Um, we're only reading stuff. We're not writing stuff. Uvar two is the ret. Mm. I don't know. Is equal to one. Because here's that subtraction, right? It looks kind of stir compare y. Evar to. I don't know. Is this stir compare? Is this fucking stir compare? It takes two, two things that are likely null terminated strings. It's checking, it's reading things from them. It's then checking for equality. It's not equal to zero, then do the comparison while B var nine. While and three equals zero. Um, yeah, while it's four byte aligned and not, I think this is stir compare. Yeah, these masks are sauce. The shifting into the correct position is sauce. Yeah, these multiple, um, yeah, I think this is stir compare. It's definitely very gut feely, but it, it definitely feels pretty stir compare like. Because we're comparing this with some other thing. And what the fuck is that? Uh, null, okay. Are these like boot arguments or some shit? Are these setting up like different, you know, boot flags and shit? Yeah, let's see. Let's let's see if we can resolve one of these. Um Okay. We got a pointer here. Uh that's probably a pointer too. Okay. Uh, let's take this. Let's add one three nine oh forty. C. Technically on all terminated string. Okay. Cool. Um. And what's this one? Uh, one three nine zero. Oops, one three nine zero eight C, C. Okay, and then what happens if that is the case? If it does, if it, if it is a C. One three nine eight eight. Oops, zero eight. Um, it returns a uh, hex C. And then a pointer to those. Okay, not 100% sure. 
What was this? Ju this was just like, ooh. Um, is that the like main execution loop? Let's see here. Zero a lot of shit out. Is this shutdown init? A R W plus B. This is fucking P open. Uh, this is Fopen. What the fuck? I was not expecting to see a Fopen in here. Wow. Um. What? So this is going to be a... A file name? Colon TT. Technically an all terminated string. Oh my God. This is, are these, are these opening like standard in, standard out, standard error? If it's equal to zero, what is this? Cannot open. Fuck yeah. Wow. Um, this is like raise opener. And then this data. Um,. I don't know what this last argument is, to be honest. So that is R, this is W, and that's W. And what would you need a read, write, and write of? Standard in, standard out, standard error. 100 fucking percent what these are. Um, now, I don't know if this is... Um... What do these store? Prim three. Get some shit. And cat prim one and prim three. Um, I think this is Fopen. And I think this is file name. And that would make it a, a char pointer. And then I think this is the mode. And I think this is the output FD. Um, and yeah, this is like initialized file descriptor or something, right? It's gonna, it's gonna, yeah, B0 some shit in here. Uh-huh. Yeah, if that failed, then it's gonna do some shit. What, what was that? Is this software interrupt? Is that a syscall? R0, R6, R0, service. Maybe this literally syscalls. Maybe this is like a real kernel. Huh, okay. Uh, we'll just say like initialize FD, some shit. Eh, good enough for me. Nah, what is this? Is this Fopen? That's Sterlin? Ah, uh, some string thing. Might be Sterlin. Okay, and then what are these? F seek. This is F seek. I octal. Yeah, uh, let's just say this is standard. Uh, standard in. 
Um, fucking let me name it. Holy shit. What? Uh, standard out and standard error. Final. Yeah, and then it's doing some shit. Oh, is this, um, uh, is this setting the buffers? Um, how do you do that? Uh, oh, it's just, just uh, maybe set vbuff. So that would be a stream buffer mode and a size. And that seems reasonable-ish. R W W. That seems pretty fucking reasonable to me that this is maybe set vbuff. Um if param two If that's the buffer, I don't know. That looks pretty set v buffy to me. It seems like something you would do very early on. Is set v buff? I'm not 100 percent sure. This is like uh, set up um, standard in, standard out, standard error. Sick. Not bad. Not bad. Might be time to do some leaps, to be honest. Uh, there's really no reason to like read through this deeply, in my opinion, for this code. But let's just uh, refs call trees. Okay. Oh, that's fucking main, dude. Or something. So we looked at these before and they were very confusing. Um, oh, these are, are these CTORs? Cause it's basically like fucking invoke these things in a loop. And I'm really confused what this is. Um, C8 is PC afterwards. Um, yeah, like, I just don't know what these are. But that, that to me looks like, uh, like C tours or, uh, basically this to me, th this looks like, um, initialized globals, All right? That's what it feels like, right? Um, yeah, I, I've and then return some shit. So that like is libc init main, uh, libc init. One of these is gonna be like fucking main. Oh, yeah, um, this is, like, fucking arg v environment. Like, basically, while the pointer of pointers is not null terminated, go through. Is this, like, setting up np or arg v? Uh, that really looks like init args or environment variables or auxiliary vectors. Uh, initialize those things. Uh, it doesn't look like that's going anywhere. That really looks like set up args and shit. The fuck did I go? Have to leave. Yeah, see you around. Thank you so much for stopping by. 400. Oh, man. Is this... Um do while true uh, service call oh boy is that exit is this exit you think this is syscall fucking exit
Is that why it's in a loop? And then what's this? This teardown shit? Yeah, halt. Is this main? Uh, initialize FD. Unless that's just like a nit kernel or some shit. Um. Ooh. Um, this is interesting. Um, we're actually doing dynamic dispatch, and then we're passing it things. Um, hmm, unknown address. Yeah, not not a hundred percent sure. Don't really care to be honest. I think we are done with looking at the um, entry point. I I think we've decompressed everything. There's obviously going to be like files and shit. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do is, um, hmm. I'm trying to figure out if I want to implant this device. Um, or look for an exploit. Um, an implant wouldn't be trivial. Um, what would we do for that? Um, So basically, if there's anything in, f well, obviously we can just overwrite the fucking like entry. Um, how could we get persistence with that? Um. Problem is, I really don't want to, um, I really don't want to plug in the, uh, flash chip again, right? I don't want to have to desolder it again. Um, so what I'm thinking is basically how do I, how do I get arbitrary code execution on this device guaranteed? Um, oh, fuck, dude. I get execution in the flash after things have been decompressed, so I can patch, basically I can arbitrarily patch the code. So what I need to do is, I need to find like somewhere that I can get data in. Um, problem is I didn't look at any network services, so I don't know any network services. Let's see if we can find something obvious. Um, look for strings. Wow, we could, wow. There's a lot of fucking strings. Um, we could actually do a lot, <laughs> holy shit. Um, get adder info, and where's this xref? Do we have an xref? Yeah, so this is get adder info, right? Wow. Wow, okay. Um. K 
Chat wireless info fail. Netmanager.c. I'm mainly just looking for like. Admin. I'm trying to look for like where I would want code execution. So there's HTTP. What's this? Let's see if we can find code for this. Mm, that doesn't seem right. No. Um, HTTPC. HTTPC make header, connect. Okay, here we go. Here's a verb. That should be good. Connect, xref, xref. Oh yeah, here we go. This is the core HTTP server. Oh Jesus, what is this? This is stern compare. Param three, length. Um, minus one. This is stern compare. That looks like stern compare. Um, so I'm tempted to do a really YOLO thing. Uh, we're just gonna do this. We're gonna mark nothing as writable. Okay. All right. Now that nothing is writable, let's see if we can get some analysis going. Wow, is that a scanf? Oh no. Oh no, that's not a scanf, is it? No. No. I wonder if this is making a request. Um. That might be making a request, to be honest. Things are going to get really clean now that we made everything non-writable. But that's fine. I don't think there's really anything that we're writing to anymore. Um, I think this is going to be fine. But yeah, I think this is creating a request. Oh, look at that. INET TV printer 1.0. Yeah, yeah. User agent. This is basically making a request. That's pretty nifty. All right. Um, huh. Accept language, JA. So this is like basically make connect request. It's kind of cool. Um, proxy authenticate. HTTP client connect.c. I'm very curious. Who the f like, there's no way they made their own fucking server, right? Um, can I do file name? Damn. There's just, uh, yeah. Content link transfer encoding. It's like largely an HTTP server, although I would actually like to find an easier server to compromise. Um, <laughs> there's those. Curious where it uses these. This is like fetch. Huh. Um. 
Unlink, open, close, read, write. Cool. System call. Get bilk error occurred. Cool. So there's a get get blk. Um, USB on, hit enter key, current priority, resource count, left time, state machine. <sighs> okay, we got some stuff in here. On message. Script. JavaScript. Um, HTTPD. I don't know. We can we can go for an exploit. Yeah, get job status. Where's that ref? Uh, no, no, not sure. This is all Rand. Itron. Put nice name here. WLAN, DNS name here. Huh. I'm like I'm trying to look for the like the super easy fucking land. It's just hard because I'm until I put this chip back in this device, um, it's going to be very difficult for me to uh, determine what surface exists on this device, right? Um, memory statistics, CPU statistics, heap memory corrupted, debug. Yeah, I, I've got like a lot of info that I need here though. I'm pretty happy with this info. I think, what's this? Look at this, uh, release test. Release test command menu. Join network, leave network. Wake up from host sleep loop test. Loop mode, set country. Event flood attack. Yeah, what is this? What is this testing code? Oh, this looks fun. Refs, refs, refs. The fuck is this used? Uh-huh. Hmm. Input passphrase. Is this for like actually using it on this screen? Cause all of these are numbered. I'm curious if this is like the, I wonder if this is like the menuing system on the actual device. Interesting. I think we just have to put the chip back in. I think we have to try, uh, just put the chip back in, try and find an exploit. So I think that's what we're gonna do. Um, let me uh, let me make some food. Be right back.
Okay, uh, let's go back to this setup. All right, let me know. Oh, I am clipping. All right, um, still clipping. Shit. Ah, ah, ah. Okay. So, we'll get you set up again. Um, I guess I'm really just going to uh, solder that chip back on. So we'll maybe just put you on the microscope, to be honest. Um, yeah, unless I'm not going to use the microscope for this. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I probably will. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Um, let's do this. Do, 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 do. Um. Okay. All right. Get that zoomed out. Hopefully we can get a, a decent view of the board. Um, I'm gonna take the chip out of the programmer. So, we'll pop this out. It's not focused, I know. Um, all right, so, basically, that is what we are going to back in. So let me uh, make sure I can focus on everything here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, so wherever the board went, here it is. Uh, we just need to put that chip back on. So basically, uh, it was right here. Um, so well, let me, uh, honestly, I feel like I am almost like too zoomed in, but I can't zoom out anymore. Um, okay, so those are the pads, and that should look pretty good. Uh, so that's basically where we have to solder it. And the first thing that we're going to do is just, um, we're going to heat up our soldering iron and just start getting that warmed up. Uh, we're gonna try and get this as uh, cold as we can. We, we don't want this to be too hot. So hopefully we can do it at like a, let's see, like a 300 or something. What solder do I have? I have, I've got 62362. Um, and I don't necessarily know what the melting point is on that, but we want to first uh, clean this up a little bit. So let's see if my flex pen is behaving today. And, hmm, that looks out of focus for y'all. I'm sorry. Uh, don't know why. Hmm. Hmm. I feel like I have a completely different uh, focus that I'm seeing now. And I had that set up before. I have no idea. Why it's completely different now. That's fucking frustrating. Um, that looks pretty focused. That's good enough. All right, so uh, let's, uh, let's see what we can do here. I'm gonna flux this up a bit. I don't know if I'm going to uh, put this on right away or not. Hopefully this flux pen actually puts out some flux. Should be a little bit on there. It's honestly not too much, but whatever. Um, let's see if my desoldering wick decides to work today. I have the worst luck with desoldering wick not doing shit, but I really want to clean up those pads. Um, try to get that old solder off of there. So let's see what we can do here. 
Um, and hopefully that's hard enough. It looks like it is. I have a bad habit of just, oh jeez, I was melting a fucking connector. Whoops. That's what I get for uh, looking through the microscope. All right. Okay, it looks like the wick's doing a good job. Hopefully I didn't ruin that connector. Heh, <laughs> whoops. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And that's good. Uh, oh, fuck me. Did I lift the pad? No. Maybe? No, I don't think so. That's one reason you have to be careful with heat. So you don't want to lift pads. If you lift a pad, you're kind of fucked. Um... Okay. Bink. Bink. Okay, those pads look pretty clean. I'm gonna do a quick inspection of them. My solder wick seemed to behave quite well today, so I'm really happy about that. Um... I might have lifted one pad. We'll see here. Oh, did I move this? Ha! <laughs> Y'all didn't even see shit. Pretty sure you lifted a pad. Yeah, I think I did. It's probably not that big of a deal. We can, uh... We can prevail. Yeah, the one... That I... So... Those pads look fine, they're cleaned up. And then these ones, oh yeah. Did I? Jesus Christ. Yeah, I think I took that one out pretty good. Um, that might be a problem. Well, uh, we actually have a pretty close point that we can uh, solder another lead, so uh, we can we can fix that pretty easily. Yeah, I definitely mashed that a little harder than I thought I was going to. All the other pads look fine. So I might, um... Yeah, that looks, that looks pretty fucking donezo to me. Um, that's not too big of a deal, to be honest. I don't really give that many shits. Should be an easy fix. Yeah, that's when I had the, uh, I kind of jerked the soldering iron because I had it on a, on a connector, which I might have fucked that connector up, too. Ha <laughs> ha, woo! Going a little ham here. But, yeah, I'm not sure how bad that's going to be there. It looks like it took the trace up, too, a little bit. So, um... Ah, what a... That was a very delicate pad. The other ones look fine. Everything else looks fine. So, huh. I mean, there's a chance the pad was already fucked from the last time this chip was soldered on there. Um, so yeah, I think we will just, uh... Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I guess I'll just run a wire. I mean, so the other option... Uh, which is actually a pretty interesting option, is I could... I could socket this chip on a dip. And then basically have a... throw a dip on this board. And then that would allow me to, uh, basically take the chip on and off. Basically socket it. Um... And that's something I've actually been thinking about before, because then I can take the chip off and we can reflash it or fuck with it. Um, and that's one option. So I don't know. What do you mean the previous soldering job was flawless? It wasn't, wasn't the most amazing thing. Yeah, I don't know if it was like too hot before or what, but. All right. Um, so uh, what we need to do is. Uh, throw a piece in the oven. Be right back. <laughs> Fuck you guys. I'm getting, I'm getting some food.
find where my uh, random dip package things are. Uh, I think I might know. I'll be right back. Question is, do I have my thin wire too? I know I saw it a while ago, and I was like, I should put that in a spot where I won't lose it, and I probably did. Yikes. had it out recently. I don't think so. Well, that's going to make this tough. Um... It's been a long time since I've needed wire. Oh, let me see. Let me get Twitch on my phone so I can interact with chat while I look for shit. fucking deep in storage. I remember seeing it relatively recently. And I guess I probably didn't end up putting it in a place where I could actually fucking find it. Which might be a bit of a problem. Hmm. All right, bear back.
need to figure out. I wasn't able to find wire, but I have enough, like, random wire that I can probably make it work. Um... Okay. So... God, I wish I fucking knew where my wire was. I know I saw it, like, recently. And I remember thinking I should move that out of storage and like into my electronic stuff. And I probably fucking did. Uh, but then that mm, kind of, you know, made it hard. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that we do a little bit of a build. Um, so... I think, I think I can make something really fucking cool. Um, here's what I'm thinking, chat. So, I have the, I guess I need to switch the fucking camera. Um, Ripper Rooney. Uh, okay. Bink. Bink. Okay. Here's what I'm thinking. So, um, there's a board. We, we've all seen the board here. Um, and basically, the board sits in the printer like this. Uh, I'll turn this off so it's not so fucky of a glare. So the board sits in the printer kind of like this towards the back. And basically that gets socketed. Um, so this is the back of the printer, right? So like here is, if that's in fucking screen and it's not. Um, so on the back of the printer, you have like all of your connectors and then this board sits right in there. So like this hole right here is actually where the USB port goes, um, which, is, which is pretty nifty. So what's really cool is that this is actually really close. Um, it's really close to the edge. So what I'm thinking is I've got, a, I've got a shit ton of like eight pin dip, like riser, you know, sort of things. So what I'm thinking is what I could do is I could, um, I could potentially like drill out a uh, part of this plastic and then put in one of these uh, sockets, right? One of these dip sockets and then effectively <laughs> have a place that I can literally like take the firmware on and off of the printer externally with everything like hooked up and plugged in. I could just like turn the printer off and take the chip off, flash it and then plug it back in. <laughs> right? Wouldn't that be kind of, wouldn't that be kind of nifty? Um, how hard would it be to solder to these fucking things? So basically what I would need to do is, is run eight wires, right? So uh, run eight wires to those pins and then solder, well, just have this fucking floating and then just pin it somewhere in the case. Um, that also means I would have to uh, basically turn the chip into a dip. Um, and that, uh, I've done it before. It's not the easiest fucking thing in the world. Um, it kind of depends. This chip might be hard to do that with, to be honest. I would basically have to solder like bridge wires between them, which would be kind of hard. Uh, doable, but not easy. Yeah, I would have to like, hmm. 
I would have to like hot glue or isolate somehow these pins because otherwise I'm going to make contact with the chip as is. But yeah, I don't know. Hmm. I kind of just like, I really just need a flash chip that just has the same fucking properties um, as that one does. Uh, and then uh, in a dip format already. So, I don't know. I think I'm just going to probably just put this chip back in. But I would like to probably order some supplies and then do uh, all of this stuff that I kind of want to do. So, we'll go in here and we're just going to throw this chip in here basically as shittily as we possibly can. So... That pad is definitely gone, though, so we will have to uh, have to bridge over to the resistor, but that's not too bad. Uh, but I need to get some more wire and stuff uh, if I want to do more electronic-y things, which I would like to. So let's make sure that I get this in there in the right direction. Okay. Um, so I like to sometimes use flux as something to kind of stick the chip down so depending on the uh depending on the flux it sometimes is pretty sticky and this flux is not it's actually gonna make it really fucking hard um and looks like some of the legs on that chip are a little bent as well uh, i'm gonna have to Look at this. It's hard to keep going from the microscope to the camera, so you're just going to get this view for a while. Um, I don't know which... Uh, so that zoomed in more. Okay. Let me switch to these optics. Oh, that's so much better. I can zoom out so much further. Holy shit. Okay, um, just want to get that lined up and then we'll uh, attack it with some solder quick. Let's just get the corners in there. So I'm going to just get the corners first by kind of tinning the tip of my soldering iron and just going in there. So, um, where the fuck am I? Actually, where am I? Oh, there I am. Okay, hold the chip stable, and then don't burn myself. Shit. Come on. Come on. Okay. That solder is not flowing well. It is very old solder, to be honest. So, I don't know uh, what I'm going to do about that. Let's see. I might just need more flux, but this is, it's like whiskering up like a, it's fucking terrible. Oh, uh, let's see. <laughs> let's see, hopefully more flux fixes this problem. Because it's fucking, that's disgusting. What the shit. And that's my food done, so I gotta, I guess my food's more important. Beer back.
Alright, so let's see. Uh, God damn it, dude. What the fuck is up with this solder? I guess, like, maybe I just didn't have enough flux on it. I, I don't fucking know. This flux pen is a little bit dried. It's actually starting to put out a lot of flux now. Okay. I think this flux pen was just kind of fucking crispy. Let's see if we can patch that up now. Much better. Okay, uh, it's a little crooked, but um, let's see if we can fix that. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go to the other corner. It's not a little crooked, but it's actually on the pad, so I'm not gonna worry too much about it. I'm not. This is not the most important soldering job in the world. Um. hit all the other pins so we'll see how much solder we have on the tip good good and we just need a little bit more now I don't know why I keep touching them, because they get worse every time I touch them. Those look fine. Not the best, but they're fine. Alright, alright, and then we'll come down and finish it off. So. Okay. should be good except obviously for the one pin that we lifted um now unfortunately i have to find where that trace goes because now the chip is covering it but i'm pretty sure it was that second resistor so hopefully i can get a, a squiz underneath Kind of see. But I think, um. Uh, one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. So those are all of the pins on the outside. Okay, let's uh, double check them. is my multimeter. Did I use it for something recently? Dude, I do not know where I put my multimeter. Uh, that's not good. <sighs> hmm. 
I know it used it recently when I was troubleshooting my generator, and I'm curious if I put it in a really weird spot. Which I probably did. Alright, um, we can use a different multimeter, I guess. God damn it. Oh, there it is. And it was literally where I left it. Okay. Okay. And the leaves are quite angry. Question is, will we get this first try? Um, so unfortunately, I can't actually tell um, which pins are supposed to be where. But what I can do is uh, tell which pins do go where. OK, where's my continuity? There we go. All right. Okay. What? What? Uh, maybe that resistor's just got crusty shit on it. Okay. Can't maybe here. Oh, jeez. Bombs are making a mess. All right, so yep. And is that ground? I think that is ground. Okay. God damn. These are like, these tips are way too big for this. But, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's just grown there. These, I think, are similar. Okay. 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 That leaves that one. All right, so let's just uh, clean this area up a bit. And then we'll just throw in a bodge wire. Problem solved. Problem solved. All right, so let's just grab some random wire. I don't know how much wire we're gonna need. I guess we're going, oh, we're fucking almost no wire. I'll probably do extra wire just so I don't have like, have to worry about the flexibility. And then hopefully these can cut this. They definitely cannot. This wire is very, very, very thin. So, I'm going to try to manually strip it, which is fucking hard. Oh, that was close. Hey, we did it. Mm, what length do I want to do here? Do I really care about the length? Yeah, I don't think so. I think we're just gonna, um, we're just gonna go with whatever there. So, flux that shit up. Alright. Let's get this soldered on there. It's gonna be too much solder on the tip, but that's fine. Whatever. Uh, what angle do I want to use on 
bonus. Okay. See, this wire is so fucking thin. It's so hard to work with. But it's so good. Come on. Uh, whoa. Yeah, that's in there. Okay. And now we just have to uh, bring that around and into that resistor. Easy! Fucking easy, chat. It's gonna be a massively long wire for this, uh, but uh, whatever. This wire is so fucking hard to strip. Just, uh, maybe we just pliers it up. Okay. I don't know if the pliers is going to help or hurt us here. And we have no solder on the tip, so we got to fix that. Honestly, I think I might have too much wire exposed there, but we're just gonna fucking do it. Okay. Alright, that should be done. It's not, it's not the, not the best. Not the best job I've ever done, uh, but uh, it'll work. Okay, <laughs> got a little loop, little loopsy, -do little loop on there now. I don't, I don't know if that's in focus. It's definitely not. There you go. There's the loop. That is the that is gonna solve all of our problems. All right, that is off. This can go off. And then this can get moved out of the way. Actually, all of this stuff can. And we'll cap our flux. All right. And now, what we get to do is see if it fucking works. Chat, what do you think? Did we get it first try? That is, uh... We also uh, it did definitely touch that other connector. That is a wireless LAN, so we might have gotten some plastic in there when we melted that connector, but whatever. It should be fine. Okay. So, I just gotta figure out how the board went in here. Looks like it stood on all of those pegs, and everything looks good. And then, uh, machine screws. Easy, chat. Easy. But yeah, I definitely need to get some, uh, I don't have any spare, um, I don't have any spare, uh, flash chips. And I really wish I did. Just like various flash chips of different sizes and specs. Because I would like to... I've done this before where I've replaced flash chips uh, with more temporary ones. 
Okay. A little bit off center on that. Let's loosen these. Tap that over. Problem solved. Doop, doop, doop. Good. 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 Okay. So there's a chance that we killed wireless LAN just due to that connector getting a little bit fucking toasty. I mean, it's still in there. The question is basically if the wires uh, are making contact. It's pretty hard to say, to be honest. So I'm just putting in all the ribbon connectors right now, which there are many. And I'm hoping that we will be able to run this without actually um, putting the lid on. I expect it will give us an error or get mad at us. But hopefully it will at least, you know, do something that makes it obvious that the brains of this still work. Since if the flash works at all, it'll be pretty obvious because it will probably move the heads and stuff or do random tests. Okay. Honestly, this board isn't too bad. It's a pretty like simple design, which makes sense. You'd want the design to be as cheap and simple as possible. Um, yeah, and then that connector is good. And then we just have three connectors that go to the display, and that's it. So let's see what happens when we plug this in. So we just have to find uh, the board is right here. So hopefully it does something that indicates <laughs> Yikes. Uh. Alright, so uh, not a great sign because it's doing nothing. Um unless it literally doesn't work if those connectors aren't plugged in, which I think would be unlikely, but we can uh, we can throw that on quick. We'll see. Maybe one of those pads is fucked, or isn't making the correct connection. Alright. I'm surprised how many connectors they use, though. It just feels like it's so much labor uh, to plug all of these connectors in. At least, like, for this, where you have three connectors that are going to and from the same place. Kind of goofy, in my opinion, but I don't know. I feel like there's a chance that we have to resolder that, because, yeah, we're getting nothing. Nothing! Um, unless it literally needs to be powered on. No. Fucking rip! Um... Yikes. <laughs> Woo! All right, I gotta slice up my pizza beer back. I'm curious if I just need to touch up those pads or some shit. 
I don't I don't actually know. Like I don't have a good idea of what uh, what went wrong there. Because all of the pads looked like they had fine connections, to be honest. So, um, well. hmm. Hard to say. Like, the Wi Fi stuff shouldn't really matter, in my opinion. Um,. Yeah, I guess maybe one of those, uh, one of those connectors is just, oh. One of those pins is kind of bent up. I am curious if, like, it's not making contact. So what we're going to do is just touch up all the pins. Make sure that all of them have connection. Unless I, unless I uh, put the jumper wire to the wrong resistor, but uh, I don't think so. All right. Dude, what the fuck? Um. Let me see if it's getting power. <laughs> And before I literally just have the wrong wire like plugged in. Okay. I'm just seeing no power to that. Uh, like, that's really confusing. Oh, there we go. 8.5 volts. Eight point five volts. Interesting. All right. Um, across the chip. Yeah, I got three point four volts to the chip. So, um, I wonder if we like fucking cleared it when we had it in uh, on software. All right. I'm going to eat this pizza in peace. Be back in a bit.
All right. And the fuck is going on here? Um. Let's see. Yeah. So the Wi-Fi connector is a little bit fucky, but I don't think that would cause it. Um. It's kind of fucking hard to tell. Like, it just seems like maybe one leg just isn't fucking connecting. So I got 8 volts, which I'm guessing is fine. I can't imagine that, like, something on this board failed, other than what we fucked with. Um, so really, the, like, the only thing I could think of is that wire, like, Maybe somehow it's hitting a, a, a ground via? I feel like that's really fucking unlikely. Um, but all of those look like they have contact. Let me, uh, I guess I can probe as many as I can. I don't know where the 3.3 volt rail is, but what I can do is just go through and probe all of these for continuity. Definitely continuity there. Definitely continuity there. Um, good. Okay, and then that one, I don't know what pin that is. Let me look the pin up quick. <sighs> One of them I haven't found, but I th it's probably VCC or ground. Um, and I just don't know uh, which one it is. Uh, Canon, hardware info, flash, this. And then all I care about is the pin out. And it looks like we have a VCC. So the pin, the pin that got smoked uh, is the clock pin. So VCC, I actually don't know uh, where the like three volt plane would be. Um, it's gonna be, there we go. Oh, it's pretty good. I just, I just probed something on the, uh, huh, on like the power supply, and yeah, I have continuity there, and that looks good. Then ground. Is that ground? No, that's chip select. Chip select. Mm. Okay, I'm not sure. That might just be going to a pull up. And then that is ground, so let's see. What is something grounded? Actually, just the screw. Yeah. Um, good. 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 I guess that's chip select. And then we can check for shorts by just probing all of these. Whoa. All right. Looks like our bodge wire is shorted to ground. Uh, which either is due to it being shorted to ground ground intentionally it is the clock wire so that would be very strange or uh i hit like a via or something so let's see that's gonna take a second to heat up but yeah that um yeah that is the only pin that seems to be uh grounded what shouldn't be um ground yep 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 that makes sense. That pin seems fucked. 
So I'm guessing I like am touching a, a ground via or something. So disconnected the barge wire, and then we'll see if that persists. And if it doesn't, then we know exactly what the problem was. And it doesn't persist. Okay. So we basically shorted out the clock pin, uh, which would make sense as why that would be a problem. So what we need to do is just trim down that wire. And I think I even talked about that potentially being an issue when we first put that in. Okay, so this time, yeah, I, there's a, a ground via right there. I mean, unless, let me double check that, uh, let me double check. That pin's no longer grounded. And that resistor is not. But that via is. Yeah, it looks like I just tipped the, uh, the wire into the uh, via. Makes sense. Makes sense. Not too surprising or scary. Beautiful. And that should be good. Clean this up. I like to store my soldering iron clean. And now we shouldn't have... Uh, Shouldn't have a connection with ground anymore there. Good. No ground. All right. Let's see. All right. All right. Nothing's happening, but we don't know if that's an issue. But all of those uh, look to be good. Connection there seems fine. Not hitting a via. Um, cool. So, let's see. Uh, VCC. Let's check. Uh, VCC. 3.4 volts. Chip select. 3.4 volts. That ground good. Okay. Oops. Okay, what is that? Hold or reset, and that is high. Okay, um, chip looks fine. So you can disconnect that. We'll do one more continuity test on everything, and then we'll just uh, plug in wires and might just be that. So, ground, chip select. I wonder if chip select is hardware to uh, three volts. It is not. Come on. Yeah, chip select is actually dynamic. Interesting. I'm curious if they actually change chip select or if they need to as the initialization routine. But, uh, oh yeah, let's check some of these quick. Good. I'm going to check neighbors, make sure I don't have neighbors grounded. That's good. Good. Um, which one was that? VCC. Chip select. Okay, ground. Yeah, all of those look good now, and let's check on grounding. Yeah, only ground is grounded. So I think maybe we just need to have shit plugged in now. So 
It's kind of hard to say. To be honest. If something is borked or not. Uh, but we'll see. And maybe we need to hit the power button. So there's like a... I know that we, uh, we shut this down. Uh, before we turn it off, we did shut it down. So... That could also be a factor, but my guess is it's probably fine, and it's just a matter of hitting the power button or having all these things plugged in. But none of these were delivering power, so a lot of these systems will typically work without having all peripheral peripherals plugged in. Okay. And yeah, it's off. Okay, sweet. So it literally just needed the power button to be hit. Yep. Cover is open. All right, so it makes sense. Now we're gonna try to shut it down. Ending, please wait, okay. Nice, now we'll just put it all back together. Come on. Come on, there we go. All right, so, um, so technically there are, there's like that, um, this is like plasticky holder. So we're gonna go and get that in there. So I'll disconnect this screen. I'm actually really surprised that they can deliver enough power through those ribbons to drive the motors on the uh, scanner. It's like actually really impressive to me, to be honest. So, all right. Um, everything on there is good. The bodge is a good fix. And how does this go on here? I think that looks right. So what we're gonna do is just disconnect everything. And then, uh, See how everything behaves. Let me plug it in. I guess those ones might not need it. Um, actually, is that the right way? Is it this way? Um, what would make the most sense here? So we never, we never remove that screw. feel like Man. I remember having to uh, pull a thing back which I think was that one is it in there am I am I holding it upside down <laughs> so I know that's like these get looped around some shit maybe that is upside down Math, um, this would make sense then. Uh, not really. <laughs> I don't know which fucking way this goes in. <laughs> Holy shit. I guess I should unplug these things so I can actually see. <laughs> how this thing sits on here when things are in the fucking way. Come on, dude. Oh, these connectors are stiff. I think. There we go. All right, good. Everything out of the way. And then this one and that one. Okay. It's like putting together a computer. All right, um, so I have no idea which way these things go, and I don't think there was another screw, and that screw seems a bit how you doing, but uh, I think there was only one screw that was connecting this in, and I can't remember which one it was. Um, like, I remember having to flip uh, this, like, one of these tabs was kind of keeping it held under the board. This is actually a really 
bizarre part. I guess it's just, uh, just to hold things in. Like, that makes sense. Yeah, that definitely makes sense like that. But... Maybe there was... Yeah, I think there was one extra screw. I guess that's what's throwing me off here. One additional screw. Um... Okay. That goes in there. And that... And that would make sense, I guess. Okay. 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 Okay, chat. Okay, we'll stick that in there. So we should have one extra machine screw. Yeah, that's confusing because we don't have one. Unless that's... A fucking self-tapper. Um, like all of those things index quite well. And yeah, this is, yeah, this is definitely right. I just don't know uh, what screw I'm supposed to have here. I don't think that's a, it doesn't look like a self-tapper because it goes into metal, but uh, I think they might have just used one. Yeah, they definitely did. Wow, that's weird. Why would you use that? That they literally use a self-tapping screw into uh, machined metal. What the fuck? Okay, makes sense. All right, so then these wires uh, that goes into there, that goes into there. I know you can't see shit because it's kind of hard. Okay, wrap that around. We're going above and beyond here. We're even wrapping the wires around to make sure they're nice and retained. I actually really love putting together electronic -y things like this. Really fucking fun. Okay, the big connector there. Get in there. Nice. In. That one is in. Okay. These wires tuck under there. Um, I think these ones, yeah, there we go. Right there, and then this one. And then hopefully we can tuck those under as well. And we can, so we have all of those nicely wrapped around there. And I think that leaves us with just one of these coming through to this like magnetic choke, which is kind of weird. But uh, I don't know. ADF. I wonder what uh, I wonder what that is. That it needs the the bait or not the choke. But it is this one, so we'll put it on. Fuck it. And uh, I just I wonder what happened in testing that they decided. That that was a required piece. Cause that is quite bizarre in my opinion. So I'll put that in there. Nice. All right. There we go. And then a big connector in the middle. And then we have just a, one more connector. It's just this one. And okay. Alright. One last check. Everything's plugged in. Everything's good. We did it. We did it, chat. We plugged in a fucking printer. Alright. So, um. And then, and then. That will just set in there. Not bad. And then the only things we really have to figure out is the one spring that went flying. But everything else is pretty easy. So, honestly not the hardest printer to work with build-wise. I feel like that was actually pretty easy. Obviously we fucked up the soldering, but that was our fault. That wasn't a, that wasn't really a design thing. 
All right. Um, so we have a piece of plastic and a spring. Let me close this bag up quick. Make sure that's in there. Okay, move that plate. Um, and then there's one more piece of plastic. Okay, so let's see how that would make sense. So, got a spring. And that clearly goes into there because there's a cutout. And so what, what is the function of this part? So there is there's basically space for the screw. So I'm going to basically imagine that there's a need for that screw and then this Um, I, huh, all right, well, they reinforce it there, so clearly the spring is supposed to engage against that, and then I just have to fucking load up the spring to get this part in there, and I did, I got it, okay, so... Now we need that to not spring off when we go to put it in. Which goes in this direction. Yeah, so it looks like that might be, huh, looks like it's the detent for that. That feels like a really overly complicated design, to be honest. Um, even though it's just a spring, I feel like they could have just used like a I feel like they don't need a spring. They could just use like a piece of plastic, like a nub and a socket. But, so oh, whatever. Um, that, in there. And hopefully this lifts up. There we go, and it does. One more screw. And other than Wi-Fi, because that one connector getting fucked, maybe broke Wi-Fi. I'm not too worried about it. Um, and that screw gets in there. And there we go. Okay. I don't know what that tape is, but we will... Uh, Remove it. It's been on there this whole time I've owned this device. Okay. Done. Look at that. That is one good looking printer. The question is will it power on? We all know the answer. The answer is yes, of course. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, it's in copy mode. Load a letter. All right. So that was a fun little excursion. Honestly, it wasn't too bad. Um, easy. Fucking easy. But will it blend? All right. Um. Let's see. Okay. Now, let's try and get everything back how it was. Um, decent. Okay. There we go. That. Then we gotta get our flute. There we go. And we should be good. All right. Um, so now, what we want to do is, uh, I guess, play around with the printer. I might need to 
plug it into the network. Let me see. Let me see what that takes. Um, all right, one second. All right. trying to get the IP of this printer and then it just like fucks off <laughs> I know you can't hear me well come on oh my god why are printers the worst Open the tray. I see. Oh my god, fuck off. All right, um, I think we should be good. Let's see, uh, hmm. I'm trying to figure out if wireless LAN is working. It wanted to print a uh, a sheet basically telling me the wireless LAN info, but of course it's not actually going to tell me on the fucking screen. All right. Oh. Uh... Good morning.
das Ah, there we go. I trying to figure out what my fucking password was for my, uh... Okay. Let's see if one of these IPs is a printer. Ah? Uh, I don't know what this is. I actually have no idea what that device is. Okay. There's one device that I don't know what it is. What about this one? Uh, okay. There's one device. And I have no idea if this is actually the one or not. It wants like a login. The fuck is this? What is this device on my network? <laughs> I have no idea. It wants a it wants a login, but I don't know what it is. Uh, and map. Uh... All right, we'll do an end map scan. Now we're hacking. Selva updates firmware. God, that would be tragic. Um. I think there's a chance that it's just not on the not on the network or Wi-Fi is borked. Sadly, there's no indicator for, like, Wi-Fi and shit. Fuck. Um... Do I have to fucking enter a passphrase? Let me see. Ripperino! It's gonna take so long to enter a password on this. I guess I changed my Wi-Fi. That would make sense. Um, the fuck? Sorry, just trying to get this fucking hooked up. It's not an easy. I have to enter all of the fucking digits on this number pad. And every time I do like a number or a capital letter, it's absolute hell. Okay, let's see. Oh my god, this is going to be awful. <laughs> this is so bad. Holy shit. Um, how do you fucking delete a character? There we go. I did it.
Oh, I think I did it. God, I hope I didn't fucking type something wrong. <laughs> Connecting? Connecting? Ah, connected! Woo! We did it! Holy shit, what a terrible fucking interface. What a fucking awful interface! We did it, chat. We did it. I'm so proud of us. All right.